Cart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Cart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel.
the RGR Road Haulage Raceway here by Midwest Kart Club for the Patient Sandland 2020 WA Kart Championship Day 2. It's the finals day. We get set to crown some West Australian state champions. We've had a fantastic weekend of racing so far. Even thrown in with a teeny tiny little bit of rain yesterday afternoon. The second round of the West Australian KZ Series is in full swing as well. We are smack bang between the odds and even heat finals before we set our 28 kart starting grid for their 28 lap feature race to round out the weekend. Big thank you to all of our series sponsors and state championship sponsors. The Avalon Group presenting the KZ Series for their second round, but a big thank you to Patient Sandland for the title sponsorship of the 2020 WA Kart Championship. And great thank you to Great Southern Fuels, the Kart Centre, Napa Parts, Acri Equipment, Digital Quarter, Vulcan Paddle and Paint, Super Cool Air Conditioning, Mechanical Piping Services, and Central's Earth Moving. We are set for a huge day of racing action with the resumption of Heat 3. Starting us off this morning with KA3 Senior Heavy, brought to you by Stardy Group. And then we'll continue onwards in the 23 lap Heat 3 events, and then onwards to the 28 lap final. It's much cooler this morning, and plenty overcast as well, but I do have great hope that we won't have any inclement weather affecting us today. And we should be dry track and clean racing all throughout for the remainder of the day to crown some West Australian state champions. So if you're joining us live online with the broadcast brought to you by Four Style Media, sit back, relax and enjoy the show as we get ready to crown some West Australian state champions. As we look out to the west, this is the order of the format we'll be racing today. KA3 Senior Heavy will start us off for the morning proceedings. 23 laps to get through their third heat of racing today. We'll run through all of these groups before we get stuck into the 28 lap finals. And that's where it all counts. You only have to lead one lap this weekend and really only have to lead the last portion. And if the one you want to lead is the last lap of the 28 lap final, so carry the blue plate to be the 2020 WA champ. The Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel. Well, the first category out on track to start us off this morning, KA3 Senior Heavy, brought to you by the starting group of companies proudly presenting these fantastic drivers. And we picked up the inside line from some of our competitors in KA3 Senior Heavy this morning. We'll bring more information to you as it becomes available to us. But we follow along. Aaron Chivers has been the man to beat so far. The fastest qualifier yesterday morning. 
He claimed a Heat 1 win, and he starts on pole here for Heat 3, alongside Lachlan Harvey, who didn't have the stellar start to his Heat racing campaign, but came back in the second Heat, and he'll start on the outside front row. Jake Maisie, local hometown hero, will start from P3 on board the number 90 FA cart, alongside Craig Ryan, who has a popped rib and is carrying the pain of that throughout the heat races on the 34 Formula K cart. He will start from P4. Glenn McDougall will start from P5 as they roll down the back straight towards the bus stop corner alongside Rodney Jameson on P6. David Mackey will start from P7 on the grid alongside Trevor Beck on P8. Then we go back to John Orish on the 98 machine starting P9 with Jason Allen. And the number seven cart starting P10. Nathan Jack and Jake Salamone will round out your back row and our 12 cart starting grid. The Heat 3 of KA3 Heavy, 23 laps with a broken rib. I could not think of anything more excruciating to get through. So we'll keep an eye on the 34 Formula K cart of Craig Ryan as he continues on. Out of the bowl as they get set to switch the lights off and send us racing for 23 laps on the board. KA3 Senior Heavy is go. Lachlan Harvey with a great start, drives all the way around the outside. Varen Chivers all the way up to turn one. They go side by side and Jake Maisie sliding his way through turn one. Maisie trying to hang it all the way around the outside and he gets it done as well on Craig Ryan. And hangs on to the third spot here. It's Harvey, your leader, down into the bus stop for the first time. Aaron Chivers in second, Jake Maisie in third. We've got one straight off. Exit stage left down at the bus stop. One of our competitors at is a wild ride and our cameraman caught it right in front of him. As the driver steered away from his mantle post down at the bottom of the hill, but it's Lachlan Harvey leading the way on lap one. Aaron Chivers in the second, eight and a half tenths of a second, the gap on lap one. Jake Macy back there in third. And the 23 card of David Mackey was the unfortunate recipient of that one down at the bottom of the bus stop. He finds himself a long way back off the back of the pack, making his way around turn two. As we follow the field coming out of the bottom of the hill, we follow Craig Ryan leading the 62 of Nathan Jack down to the bottom section. But up the hill, they come onto the RGR main straightaway. Ryan holding on to P4, just trying to chase Jake Maisie in these early stages. Lachlan Harvey setting the fastest lap of the race to a 36-3.48. We follow along the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth now. Ryan, Jack, and McDougal down the back straight into the Aftery bus stop. And out through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl once again. Ryan managing to open up a little bit of a gap from the guys behind him, but he's not been able to close down the gap to Jake Maisie a little bit further up the road. Now the fastest on track is Aaron Chivers in second at the moment, just flashing in and out of your frame. A 36.16 for Chivers. Last time by for Lachlan Harvey, your race leader, a 36.192. As they lead out by a second over between the first two, and then another 2.3 back to Maisie, just ahead of this pack. We follow now with Jack and McDougall into the bottom. You can see Maisie there running in third in the number 90 Formula 8 cart. Fernando, sorry, Fernando Alonso cart. As they climb the hill on the RGR straight, the Iona KA100 engine providing the power for our KA3 categories. Electric start, 100cc, air-cooled power plants, and very tightly controlled on tolerances to provide even racing and very even power delivery between different units. One of the days of the old Yamaha Jays and the S motors, the square head motors that reigned supreme in Australian karting for many, many years through the Clubman and Formula Australia and Formula 100 categories. As Craig Ryan has fallen back into the clutches of Nathan Jack as we grab Lachlan Harvey leading the way in the 76 flat out cart century. The youngster from the Hurricane Go Kart Club. Leading the way, but he's being hunted at the moment by Aaron Chivers to the tune of three tenths of a second, the last lap across. We'll check the gap as they come up the end of the main straightaway. The gap now down to half a second. Harvey and Chivers. 
are starting to close right up and you have to ask the question whether it's a factor of Harvey just with a hot setup to start the morning off or is he cruising and it's going to let Chivers come to him. Aaron Chivers in the epoxy groundworks flat out carts and ARC racing entry. The Arrow X5 chassis doing the work out front. Last time across, 5.7 tenths of a second between them. Harvey dropped into a 35.9 a moment ago. It was a 35.8 this time across, but a 35.7 for Chivers. Closing the gap right up again, 4.4 tenths of a second. We go back to this battle as Craig Ryan has been dropped off to P5 by Nathan Jack, moving himself into the four spot. But it's Aaron Chivers in second, your fastest man on track right now, 35-7. The start off his morning campaign in second, he really fell asleep at the start. Lachlan Harvey sprung into action to claim the lead. But as your leaders cross the line, we check on the gaps, it's down to 3.3 tenths of a second. We continue following on. Craig Ryan struggling it a little bit. You can see he's taking a hand off the wheel and just trying to relax when he can. It's like the old homage to motocross races. Stand when you can, sit when you have to. Watching this battle for the race lead now, 2.8 tenths of a second. Chivers is closing down slowly on Lachlan Harvey for the race lead. They're coming up onto the back of Jason Allen. Travelling all the way up from Esperance Kart Club, hosts of last year's West Australian Kart Championship. They head into the bottom of the track and now the battle is on. Less than two and a half tenths between them by eyeball as they head into the bottom end through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl and start to make their long climb up the RGR Main Straight all the way up the hill here at Midwest Kart Club. The RGR Road Haulage Raceway. The gap now, 1.8 tenths. Chivers is within striking distance and he's looking for a way around. This is when he starts to suss out his competition and look for a way to pick on the weaknesses of Lachlan Harvey in the 76 flat out carts entry. Coming out of the Napa Parts dropper, down into the bottom end of the racetrack once again. Harvey opening up the turns, trying to carry as much momentum as he can. He's actually managed to open up a cart length extra on Chivers this lap by. Who's got the stronger motor up the hill? And Chivers with the aerodynamic toe as they climb the hill, opens the gap, goes to 1.9 tenths of a second. So only a hundredth of a second between them or so on their lap speed. A 35.788. Lachlan Harvey's personal best lap of the race that time across. Chivers with a 35.804. Gave away a tiny bit to him as it looks like Craig Ryan has called it a day and he parks himself up on the in grid. As we're across the halfway point. 11 and a half laps down. 11 and a half to go. It will be 11 this time by for Harvey. Chivers now trying to size him up. He slots into the side draft up the hill. Going to go follow Jake Maisie up the hill. And then we go Nathan Jack. Jason Allen, the odd one out there is... Glenn McDougall in the 27, defending from Jake Salamone in the 19, back there behind him. Now Allen jumping out of the way for the lap in carts coming through. Salamone in a very well presented BRM chassis and all the BRM guys putting on a great show showing off the great looking carts that they display. You can go find their tent over the backside of the pits here at Midwest Kart Club. See McDougall checking over his shoulder. We find Salamone still chasing him. 10 laps to go for these guys. As we go back to your race leaders, it's still on out front.
Coming out of the bus stop into the Napa Pass dropper, Harvey countering the challenge from Aaron Chivers at the moment, the defending West Australian state champ. Trying to do it back to back this weekend, but the youngster standing in his way here in heat three, trying to show him that I've got something to say about this. That's nice and close, just about a foot and a half between the bumpers as they come out of the patient sand land sweeper up through the cart center switchbacks, back down the hill towards the Afri bus stop. turn of seven laps to go in this long 23 lapper it gets even longer for the final dance down the hill again it's the youngster and the defending champ going at it as they go down the hill once again Harvey maintaining a 1.1 tenth of a second advantage last time across the line but Chivers has given him a couple of cart lengths here as they head down to the Great Southern Fuels Bowl leaders climb the RGR main straight away six laps to go for Lachlan Harvey Aaron Chivers looks like he's getting a little bit tired you can see him adjusting his posture as he comes up the straight lets the cart do the steering Jake Maisie having a very lonely drive in third no challenge from behind at the 62 of Nathan Jack and the arrow machine we're well, back there fifth and sixth at Glenn McDougall and Jake Salomone we follow them as they head through the patient Sandland sweeper still fighting it out but this KA3 senior heavy category Providing big gaps and large spreads of our field around the racetrack. 700 metres on eight turns of racing surface here at Midwest Kart Club for the RGR Road Haulage Raceway. And you'll grab McDougall and Salomone coming through the Great Southern Fields Bowl. Salomone just a little bit wide coming out of the left hander there. Dropped the wheel and gave up a bit of pace. But he finds himself now driving up into the toe of McDougall as they head up the RGR main straightaway. Grab the race leaders again. Aaron Chivers just putting in a new hot lap of the race right at the end. He's got this cart set up absolutely on point. Here they come up the RGR main straightaway. Chivers pulls out. He goes for a look, but Harvey covers him. One tenth of a second with an 08 to carry. It was between them as they came across the start finish line. Out of the cart center switchbacks. KA3 Heavy presented by starting group of companies. Down into the Afri bus stop. And the Napa Pass dropper dipping off in the off-camber section. Harvey and Chivers fighting it out. As they come up the line, it's going to be three laps to go for these two. 2.1 kilometres to fight it out. Just a run to the shops almost. Between Harvey and Chivers fighting it out for the third heat of racing. To decide who's going to take the points haul from this one and put themselves in prime spot on the starting grid for the final. Chivers might actually be trying to just fox a little bit and set himself up for a start on the front row anyway because I think he took the win in both the first two heats. So two first and a second will give him prime spot to start on pole in the 28 lap final. This could be a great battle. We see for 28 laps later today. Chivers pulls to the inside on the main straightaway. Harvey can't cover him though. He's going to slot back in behind. There's no chance of an over and under here to respond as they head into the cart center switchbacks down at turns two and three. Chivers bouncing his way across the racetrack. They are coming up onto the back of some lap traffic as they come out of the Napa parts dropper. You can see there the 11 and 23 of Beck and Mackey. Might throw a spanner in the works for this race out front as they come out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl onto the RGR main straightaway one more time. One to go. Last lap board out for your leaders. And they are going to play a part in this one. They're going to be too close to just sit behind and let it happen. So this could be a real make or break lap here for Shivers and Harvey. See if our lap traffic is going to play ball and let the guys through. The 11 of Trevor Beck opens the door and lets Shivers and Harvey go through. They're now splitting the lappers. David Mackey the next in line, but it looks like they're not going to be close enough to get him before they get the finish. 
if Chivers has to lift here, he's going to hand it to Harvey. He's going to push Mackey all the way up the straight. The checkered flag flies. Aaron Chivers claims the win here in Heat 3. Lachlan Harvey home in second. And KA3 heavy. Heat 3 is in the books. Chivers with a clean sweep of the Heat so far. Jake Maisie coming up the hill a long way further back. He will claim third in the number 94 FA cart. The 62 of Nathan Jack claims P4. The 27 of Glenn McDougall goes P5. Jake Salamone in the 19 BRM chassis goes P6. Rodney Jamison makes it P7. As we wait for John Orish and David Mackey to come around and finish up. The Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel. On track with KA3 Senior Medium for Heat 3, 23 laps on the board, brought to you by OJG Engineering. And the Senior Mediums being led by Zach Needham on the pole spot, alongside Brandon Duncombe on the outside of the front row. These two having great battles so far. They've been given the one lap signal, and there's still one car trying to leave the out grid. So sent around for another lap. We go back to Jason Betts in the 77 defending West Australian champion he will start on the three spot seeing if he can carry the blue plate for just one more year Royce Knott will start from P4 Troy Stones Clark out of P5 Mason Patience on the six spot Matt Davis local hometown hero will start from P7 with Marty King on the eight spot Riley Smith on P9 Evan McCulloch starts from P10 and it looks like it was Evan who was struggling to leave the outgrid here as we go to Toby Hobson on the 11 and Taylor Campbell rounding out your 12 cart starting grid. As we watch the field bring them around and watch the red lights to extinguish, they send us racing 23 laps on the board as Needham sneaks on through Duncan just close the door. On to Royce Knott, I believe, in the 30 arrow machine. Down to third, we got three off at turn two. The 12 of Marty King involved in that one, and Marty's gonna pull it off into the cut through, I believe. 
as Marty just goes rolling into the grass. But it's Zach Needham leading the way. Duncombe in second. Royce not in third. He's got a rear bumper full of the 77 of Betts. As they bring it around onto the RGR Haulage main straight away. Betts already pulling to the inside. A challenge for third here. He steps the back end out under brakes just to pull it up for the corner. Not goes down to the four spot now. As we follow Jason Betts under the main straightaway. There's your leaders flashing across the screen right now. Needham and Duncombe. But Betts is the fastest on track in this early stage. Royce not backing his way through the field at the moment. He's backing up to the front of Troy Stones Clark and Matt Davis. Going to start putting some pressure on him. As we follow your leaders. Out of the Napa parts dropper. Needham has built himself 3.2 tenths of a second over Duncombe. As Betts finds himself in a bit of a no man's land situation at the moment. He's the fastest on track, but only lapping a tenth of a second quicker. He's got to make up a nine and a half tenth of a second deficit. A tenth of lap is only 10 laps worth of chasing, but you've got to be on the ball for 10 laps solid to make up that deficit as Needham and Duncombe start to gap out the field. Duncombe that time by with a 35.09. He's quicker than Needham in these early stages. The number 28 Arrow X1E racing his way out front. As we follow him out of the patient Sandland sweeper, Duncombe shadowing the movements of Needham at the moment as they head through the cart centre switchbacks. Down into the Afri bus stop. Needham opened up a little bit on this part of the lap, but the gap got brought down to two tenths of a second by Duncombe last time by. 35.06, new hot lap of the race. Needham was on a 35.08. Starting to come to life here, the number 28 Arrow X1E chassis. The cart force trying to open up the gaps. Now Needham, new hot lap of the race. The 35.046, we go back and watch this battle. It's not and Davis on like Donkey Kong once again for these two. Out of the cart centre switchbacks. Davis rocking the 26 cart centre presented livery. The new colours garnishing some of the carts. Rocking the Formula K cart is shadowing the movements of Royce Knott, trying to put pressure on for the four spot. The battle for fourth and fifth as they come out onto the RGR main straightaway. Davis in the toe, pulls out very late and not squeezes him down the curb. But Matt Davis makes it happen. A great move. He was working the wheel all the way through the corner. Putting some of the dirt oval sprint car experience to good use there to make that inside move on Royce Knott as he now claims the four spot. Jason Betts. Quietly achieving the fastest lap of the race at 34.9. The only driver to go sub 35 in this race so far. As you can see, he is closing on your leaders. Down to 7.2 tenths of a second. The gap from the leaders back to Betts. We follow Needham and Duncombe. There's Betts in the background trying to close the gap now. For the defending West Australian state champ. Trying to peak at the right point in the weekend is the name of the game here. You don't want to show your hand too early to the rest of the field. Down the hill towards the Afri bus stop. Needham leads Duncombe. We're, we're coming up to the halfway point sometime soon. Last time across the line. Made 16 laps to go as Needham brings it out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl one more time.
Following Zach Needham as he brings it out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl onto the RGR. Road haulage main straight. Duncombe still shadowing him. Two tenths of a second the gap. But Jason Betts continues to shorten the lap speed down to a 34 881 last time across the line for Betts. It closes the gap up to half a second off the back of the leaders. He gave away so much time at the start. He's really just slowly ticking off these laps. As they head down towards the Great Southern Fuels Bowl once again, Needham, Duncombe and Betts are defending West Australian state champ. Zach Needham has been the pointy end of the field many times in West Australian racing in this class. But now finds his rear bumper filled with Brandon Duncombe at the moment. Duncombe for Aloe Steel, Welding Superstore and Prize Pets coming down from the Caratha Club. One of the furthest travelling drivers in attendance this weekend here at the WA Car Championship. Brought to you by Patience Sandland. It continues to chip away. So come out of the bowl. Almost even Stevens across your top three now. Onto the RGR main straight. It's one thing to have a close pack, but track position is very important to hold on to around a track like this. Only 700 metres in distance and only eight opportunities to slip one up the inside and have a spec later on. Jason Betts again setting a new hot lap of the race. 34.85, he's got that 77 Cosmic Cart well and truly singing the right tune this morning. Need him that time across the personal best at 34.90. Duncombe, the slowest of the three with a 35.03. He's matching pace with Matt Davis back there in P4, who's 3.1 seconds further back at the moment. And a race not rounding out your top five. And here's your lead trio. Need him. Duncombe and Betts onto the back straight, down towards the Afri bus stop. Six and a half laps left to go. Five to go as they come across the line. Brandon Duncombe still pouring the pressure onto the back of Zach Needham. He's going to start feeling the pressure himself up the inside at turn two. Into the cart centre switchbacks and Jason Betts seizes the opportunity. A very late move there from Duncombe. Open the door for Jason Betts. Now Betts sees his chance. Closing the gap to the back of the 29. The man coming down from Karatha in the lead. Out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Half a cart between them as they come on to the RGR main straightaway. Four to go. Betts closing right up onto the back of Duncombe already as they head into the cart centre switchbacks. Onto the RGR main straight, three laps to go. As we start to draw to a close, Zach Needham sitting back there in third, wondering how it all unfolded just a moment ago. Jason Betts checks on him over his shoulder. Knows he's still there, knows he can't relax just yet. Last time across the line, Needham. A personal best lap, 34 triple eight. The red mist has descended for Needham. But he's too far back to make anything happen. Two to go as they come up the RGR main straightaway. Duncombe looking at picking up a win here in heat three to put him in prime position for our 28 lap final. But nobody can count out Jason Betts at any point in the weekend. The 77 Cosmic Cart 
We'll always turn it on and make it happen. Down into the bus stop. Out across the Napa parts dropper. Needham has really dropped off by an extra car length or so off the battle for these two. But watch this final lap out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl for the second to final time. The last lap bot is out. One to go for Brandon Duncombe. Leading the way in KA3 Medium. Betsy has a look. He pushes him wide. Side by side and wheel to wheel. Jason Betts makes it happen. Into the patient Sandland sweeper. Brutal. Jason Betts making it happen as he leads Duncombe. There's only one lap you have to lead. And if Betsy wants it this bad, imagine what a 28 lapper will bring. The 77 of Jason Betts charges up the straight for the final time and takes the flag. Heat three of KA3 senior medium goes to Jason Betts. Brandon Duncombe home for second. Zach Needham wondering what on earth happened at turn two. He goes to third. Matt Davis picks up the fourth spot. Royce Knott running out your top five. Tag 125 Heavy taking themselves out on the track here. Proudly presented by RGR Road Haulage. Naming sponsors of the Midwest Car Club circuit as we get to go racing. 23 laps on the board and it's Bailey Mickler starting on the pole spot with a pair of wins in yesterday's heats. Even though fastest qualifying went to Simon Quillon. He'll start further down in the field. No start this time by. We'll send the field around once again. It's Mickler on pole. Ryan Barron. On the outside of the front row, then we go back to Simon Gwillem, yesterday's fastest qualifier on the number 12 KF cart back there on P3. Adrian Fogliani starting out of P4 with Nathan Davis, the hometown hero. Nipper starts from P5. Daniel Stewart out of the sixth spot. Nicholas Pasco on P7. Shane McPherson starting out of the eighth spot. And J10 Brooker rounding out your nine cart starting field for Tag 125 Heavy, brought to you by RGR Road Haulage.
The lights go out this time by Nikla moves over to cover off the line, but he's going to get forced out. Quillam on the inside, Fogliani gives an old hip and shoulder to Barron. Now Davis and Fogliani off the road at turn one. That puts them both to the back of the pack and they drag on a whole bunch of bulldust with them. But it's Bailey Mickler getting out front. Simon Gwilliam into the second spot. Shane McPherson in the Esprit cart into third. The seven of Nicholas Pasco goes all the way from P7 to P4 on the opening lap as they come out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl and charge up the RGR main straightaway. Bailey Mickler leads away in the Amani Bar Parallel cart. Out of the cart center switchbacks. So we're watching this battle pack for four, five, six, then seventh and eighth on the road. With Nathan Davis just a little bit further behind in P9 as they come down into the Afri bus stop. Bit of a shamoz will start to start us off here for our 23 lapper in tag one, two, five, heavy heat three. Our leaders breaking away from the pack already. Mickler and Gwilliam trying to get it done in style out front, then McPherson. Now Ryan Barron forcing the issue and Daniel Stewart wants to start clawing his way back up through the field. We grab a hold of our leaders though, Mickler leading Gwilym down the hill who has a big look at the bus stop. Gwilym slide jobbing his way to the inside, Mickler tries to counter back and they're going to go side by side through the dropper. Got a little antsy through the inside there. Gwilym threading the needle in the number 12 KF cart. The Redline Oils and KF cart presented machine charging up the hill. Little pat of the air box up into the patient Sandland sweeper, get a little bit of liquid cooling through the carb of the motor. As they come into the cart center switchbacks, the fight's going on behind them as well for fourth and fifth. Shane McPherson all by his, himself behind as we follow your leaders coming out of the bus stop. Into the dropper, much better that time around. Bailey Mickler trying to stay in there. The fight behind them though, look at this, fourth, fifth and sixth fighting it out as they bring it around. The seven of Nicholas Pasco now going to get railroaded by Baron and Fogliani. Fogliani forces it through. Pasco off into the dirt. He voices his discomfort at that one as well. front, Mickler wants to have a piece of Simon Grillam at the pointy end. Mickler had the fast lap that time across, a 34-4-1 his personal best. Grillam was slower, 35-5, sorry, 34-5. Shane McPherson putting in the 34-3s behind him though. Now Mickler, big late send up the inside of the Afri bus stop. These two slowing each other down is bringing Shane McPherson into their fight. The number 92 is free card just behind them on the road. You can see him flashing across your frame. As they come out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl onto the RGR main straight. McPherson checks on the daylight that looms behind him. All the way back to Ryan Barron who's mounting a comeback drive. Trying to work his way through the field. But at the moment with 16 and a half laps left to go, it's Mickler, Willem and McPherson out front in tag 125 heavy presented by RGR Road Haulage. the back, Ryan Barron and Adrian Fogliani. The two arrow carts. Back there in fourth and fifth. Barron for Perth Mobile Physiotherapy. Started on the front row and got absolutely shafted on the opening lap, trying to work his way back through Fogliani for the Valcata Bitumen paving entry. The arrow X5 chassis doing work for him in P5. And now Bailey Mickler in the 97 Amani Bar Parallel cart. Pushes forward to the pointy end and sets a new hot lap of the race at 34-2. Last time across for the 97 entry into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl once again. It'll be 15 laps to go onto the RGR main straightaway this time by.
Working our way across the halfway point just a moment ago for our Tag 125 heavy field through the RGR Road Haulers presented class. Bailey Mickler leading the way, opening up the gaps over Simon Gwillem to half a second the distance now. Shaman Thurston back there in the three spot, just putting in his personal best lap of the race of 34.1 a moment ago. So he's peaking right at the right time in the race. And he's starting to ask the question whether Mickler and Gwillem have any more pace underneath them or if they're just lifting off to conserve rubber. He needs them to slow each other down again if he wants to buy his way into this fight. Is there even gaps across the top three? Back behind them though, the battle looming between Ryan Barron and Adrian Fogliani. Last time across Fogliani, about four hundredths of a second faster. Two arrow machines as Barron leads him through the patient Sandland Sleeper down into the cart centre switchbacks. Down towards the Afri bus stop. Out of the Napa parts drop up. Barron leads Fogliani last time across 2.1 tenths of a second. Fogliani chewed out eight thousandths of a second on Barron. Was only the difference between them last time they came across. As they're eight to go as they come up the RGR Road Haulage Main Straight. Barron moving across very early to cover off the line. Much of a KZ2 line, slowing it right up at the peak of the patient Sandland Sweeper. As your leaders making their way out of the Napa parts dropper. Last time across, McPherson was the slowest of the three. Mickler, 34-1-4. William, 34-1-45, his personal best lap of the race. Still got plenty of pace in the number 12 KF car. The Red Line Oils presented entry. Of Simon Gwillem this time by 34.196, McPherson 34.094, his personal best lap of the race. And only about a tenth of a second, or sorry, a hundredth of a second off the fastest lap of the race set by Bailey Mickler, who was the slowest of the top three last time across at 34.199 for Mickler. Tiny gaps between these guys each lap. It sits at half a second from first to second, four tenths of a second back to third of McPherson. As they come out from the bottom of the hill, out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Six to go for Bailey Mickler, who in the tag 125 heavy. Heat three, McPherson closing right up onto the back of Gwillem under brakes into the patient Sandland Sweeper that time by. Now going to start to put some pressure on for second as the sun comes out and drowns us all here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. McPherson's new hot lap of the race. Last time across a 34.06. 
William with a 34-2, one was the slowest of the crew that time across as the number seven entry of Nicholas Pasco ran himself off the road at the bottom of the hill and rejoins just behind the leaders as they come on through McPherson trying to pour some pressure under the back of Gwilliam. Last time across, he was only four hundredths faster. The gap down to two tenths of a second for second and third. As Bailey Mickler opening it up to six tenths of a second out front. the leaders coming out of the Great Southern Fields Bowl. Last time across the gap opened up again between Gwilym and McPherson. 3.1 tenths of a second. Super close between these three on their individual lap speed. Just getting out front and controlling the race as Bailey Mickler at the moment. The gap comes down slightly low. 4.6 tenths of a second between Mickler and Gwilym. It's still hot. Back to Shane McPherson though. Last time across a 34.085. He was the fastest of the top three. It was a 34.2 for Mickler, 34.1 for Gwilliam. Playing this cat and mouse game all the way through the heat races. Trying not to show the full hand just yet. You want to bring it all out and see what you got on the table for the final. 28 laps to crown the West Australian state champion this afternoon. Here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. That time across, McPherson was the fastest of the top three. Ryan Barron, a personal best lap of the race for him, back there in P4 at 34-2-1. He really wishes he could be part of this fight right now, but he knows there's only one lap he wants to lead, and that's the final lap of the 28 lap and later today. One and a bit laps left to go through the bottom end of the racetrack. Nickler, William and McPherson, out of the bowl for the second and final time. The last lap board is out. One to go for Bailey Nickler. In heat three of one, two, five heavy to make it a clean sweep of the heat so far. All well and good, but the only race you really want to win is the final. Onto the back straight for the final time, down towards the Afri bus stop. Stepping into the off camber of the Napa Parts dropper. Affectionately known by many others as the ski jump. As they come out of the Great Southern Fields Bowl for the final time, the checkered flag out and waiting. Bailey Mickler claims the win here in 125 Heavy Heat 3. Son and Gwilym home in second. And Shane McPherson rounds out your top three. Ryan Barron home in P4. Adrian Fogliani rounds out your top five. Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel.
Great shots there of Geraldton Airport. Main entry point into the town if you don't fancy the four and a half hour drive up from Perth. I'm sure a few of our competitors would have flown in for the weekend. As we get set to go for tag, one, two, five, restricted masters brought to you by CJD Equipment and TRP Truck and Trailer Parts. Simon Minton has been the man to beat so far in this class. Got the word up for a couple of competitors to watch further back in the field though. We'll see if they can come true to their promises made last night with a couple of beverages in hand. Mark Redman starts second on the grid here for Heat. Three of 125 Restricted Masters. Bradley Stewart from P4 and Peter Tenbrooker rounds out your first five starters as we get going and rolling. Minton side by side with Redman all the way into the patient sand land sweeper. Stewart trying to force his way through. He'll slot back into second, maybe third. Redman up the inside. Making it happen. We go side by side through the cart centre switchbacks. Mark Redman claims second. Brad Stewart trying to get around him. Redman drops a wheel and bogs it down, though. Whoa, it's all happening. Big slide jobs at the bottom of the hill. Brad Stewart getting slowed down. Johnny Ray getting through. Who's that in the 65 KF cart? Bryce Watson sneaking through there, taking full advantage of the carnage behind him. Simon Minton looks behind him and goes, what the hell are you guys doing? Mark Redman goes second. Watson third. Johnny Ray into the fourth spot here. The hot word here is he made a switch to the Cosmic cart from a 32 mil chassis to a 30 mil to get the cart to free up and get drive off the corners on the higher grip surface here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway compared to his usual chassis here, he campaigns all around Western Australia. So we'll see if the gamble on a different cart pays off for Johnny Ray this weekend. He finds the number two Cosmic cart into the fourth spot. Peter Tenbrooker in P5, Paul Hughes in six, Bradley Stewart in the seventh spot. From third on the grid, he's dropping a wheel again coming out of the bowl. Stewart having a shocking opening couple of laps this morning here as Mark Redman is the fastest man on track with a 35.680 that time by. That's miles quicker than Simon Minton out front. 36.05 for Minton. Redman with a 35.6, still two tenths of a second quicker than the next fastest driver on track with a 35.8 of Bryce Watson behind him in the 65KF cart. So the boys are moving quickly behind Minton trying to put pressure on. So we follow along. Redmond, Watson and Ray through the cart center switchbacks onto the back straightaway. Fastest of that group was Watson again. 35-5 that time across. Minton now pulls out a 35-6 out front. Redmond with a 35-7 that lap across. Johnny Ray with a 35-6. Peter Tenbrooker to a 35-6. They're all starting to pick up the pace here. Towards the pointy end, Bryce Watson forces one up the inside of Johnny Ray, the patient Sandland sweeper. Bryce Watson Ray that time across, puts himself up into the third spot now. Trying to counter back into that one as this pack comes snarling on through Brad Stewart. In the 15 machine is the fastest of that pack. In the battle for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth on the road as they come up the RGR Haulage Main Straight. Down onto the back straight, Watson is a sitting duck though. Johnny Ray trying to size him up for a move up the inside into the Apri bus stop. come out into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Making their way around. Simon Minton is out front and just doing his thing at the moment. Stretching the lead from Redmond into second. 
checking on the laps so though. They're try starting to catch up to Redmond as Minton's starting to stretch out a little bit. Minton that time by with a 35-3-2 fast lap of his race so far. Mark Redmond with a 35-5-4. Fastest on track, still Brad Stewart with that 35-2. But that time across, Stewart only managing a 35-4. Putting pressure on Johnny Ray and Peter Tenbrooker just in front of him. Oh, Watson drops a wheel coming into the bowl. Oh, Peter Tenbrooker into Johnny Ray. They're hooked up and they are stuck. Brad Stewart stuck there as well. Trying to get the carts unhooked, but that is their race practically over. So that leaves Bryce Watson into third, well and truly clear. Paul Hughes into P4, Ian Shaw P5, John Hill in six. The big shake up from some of our main contenders in the field here of 125 Restricted Masters. Legitimately hooked up together, they can't find a way to get the carts unhooked. Simon Minton having a nice Sunday morning cruise in the Rotax Evo powered number 21 Ricardo Kart siding his way through the Kart Centre switchbacks as they come onto the back straight Peter Tenbrooker looks like the Kart's actually bound up he's struggling to get it pushed off the racetrack and out of harm's way. As Simon Minton charges up the RGR Road Haulage Main Straight ahead of Mark Redman, who we follow on camera. The number 11 epoxy grout works. Arrow chassis. With the Rotax Evo power for Redman. Bryce Watson further back in the third spot. Two seconds adrift at the moment. As we follow Redmond down into the bottom of the racetrack. Our top three well and truly spread out as we approach the halfway point. 12 to go for Simon Minton. This time across, we follow Bryce Watson as he charges up the RGR Haulage Road Main Straight. Follow along with Simon Minton for a little while here in the CJD equipment and TRP truck and trailer parts presented 125 Restricted Masters. Minton 
leads by 4.2 seconds. Nobody is stopping this man sweeping to another blue plate this weekend, it seems. Mark Redman back there in second. 2.9 seconds clear of Bryce Watson in third. Paul Hughes, another 2.9 seconds adrift in P4. 1.5 back to John Hill in P5. Half a second further back to Ian Shaw, the closest gap we have inside our top six and seven between Shaw and Vaughan Elliott, 1.3 tenths of a second. Simon May back there in P9. We did lose John Ray, Peter Tenbrooker, Andrew Freeman. And I don't think we saw Alan Beard take the start, so we lost one before we even got started. And another four, another three over the first few laps. As we follow Mark Redman out of the Great Southern Fields Bowl. Up the hill under the RGR Haulage Main Straight. He comes across six laps to go for Mark Redman in second. As your leader, Simon Minton, continues to stretch the legs. 5.2 seconds a gap now. Boring. <laughs> Nothing like boring racing. Troy, what's the gossip from our KZ2 idiots? Final few corners into the bottom end of the racetrack. Minton on his way to cleaning up the heats and putting himself in prime spot for the final. Minton down the line as the checkered flag flies. Takes the win here in 125 Restricted Masters. Mark Redman home in second. Bryce Watson cleans up for third.
Card Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Card Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel. Card Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Card Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel.
KA3 Senior Light getting underway for their 23 lapper. Hugh McGuire from the pole spot. Whoa, we've got a wild ride at turn one. The 46, Eli Tunstall. That guy walked under a ladder this morning or something. He is having an absolute shocker of a weekend. He's caught up on the back of one of the KF carts at the back of the pack as well. And that would be Liam Kane, I believe. Kane out of contention. Trenton Mann off to the sidelines as well. It's a rough start for some of our contenders in KA3 Senior Light, presented by Bunbury Cartworks. But it's Hugh Maguire, Jake Sawyer, and Michael Jones survive in the opening lap. Holly Patrizzi in the P4, Tyler Smith in the P5. Luca Nietzsche, Force in the 55 Ricardo Kart, up the inside of Brandon Duncombe at the Patient Sandland Sweeper. Nietzsche trying to rock it and push his way forward in this field. The T. Maguire leading the way from Jake Sawyer, the number 96 Sarah Cart. Trying to peak at the right point of the weekend here. Trying to stretch things out onto the RGR main straight away they go. 21 laps left to go. Maguire leading the way. Fast lap of the race from Luca Nietzsche that time by. Back in P6 at 34.6. He's two tenths quicker than your race leaders at the moment. It's Maguire, Sawyer and Jones. Out of the bus stop, across the Napa Parts dropper. Down into the bottom end of the racetrack. Maguire bringing it around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Trying to stretch things out already. Holly Patrizzi now the next target in line for Luca Nietzsche. Makes it easy for him. Up the inside, Nietzsche now, up into P5. Into the patient Sandland Sweeper, the 55 Ricardo Kart. Pushing forward here with young Nietzsche, 15 years of old, running double duties. His first senior state championship. But it's Hugh Maguire out front, leading the way at the moment from Sawyer in second. Michael Jones in third, the oldest of the top three at the moment. Sandland sweeper into the cart center switchbacks. Maguire and Sawyer. Michael Jones just a little bit further back there in the third spot as we come down to the after bus stop. Keeping tabs on Luca Nietzsche into P4. He flapped last time across a 34-49. Marginally quicker than Jones. And a little bit slower than Maguire and Sawyer. and the number 15 digital quarter. Tony Kart entry making his way through the Kart Center switchback, still trying to hold on to the lead. Now Luca Nietzsche comes to life a little bit more. 34-3 that time by a fastest man on track right now. Trying to close the gap, he's 1.1 seconds off the back of Michael Jones in third. As Maguire brings it down into the bottom end of the racetrack, out of the Napa pass dropper, down to the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Sawyer can't really hang with him at the moment. The gap out to two and a half tenths of a second. As they climb the RGR main straightaway, Jonesy looks behind him and sees this young, looming 55 Ricardo Kart trying to hunt him down. We'll follow along as we grab the 22 of Tyler Smith, leading from Brandon Duncombe as they come through the Kart Center switchbacks. This is a fight for sixth and seventh at the moment. Smith and Duncombe out of the bus stop through the Napa Parts dropper. They were closing up a moment ago. Their gaps out at 2.8 tenths of a second last time. They came across the line. One eye on Nietzsche, though, bringing that gap down for third. Trying to push his way forward in this long 23 lapper. Just a bit of a preamble to the 28 lap final today. Smith and Duncombe getting close, though. They're starting to go at it through the cart center switchbacks. And it's on as they come down the hill towards the Apri bus stop. It's the 41 of Aiden Passmore, just behind him as well. He's been a hot contender in this class throughout the year, but finding himself a little further back in the field than he would like to be. Luca Nietzsche, another hot lap of the race. 34-2-3. As Nietzsche grabbed the three spot a moment ago, just ahead of this pack, we follow Nicholson, trying to work his way through the field, up the inside of the 25 of Lucas Gaelic. That's the fight for ninth and 10th. 
pull back and grab this field as they come through the bus stop. Smith has managed to drop off Duncombe for just a moment. Back into the clutches of Passmore. We grab Hugh Maguire and Jake Sawyer duking it out. Luca Nietzsche just there in the background. The 55 Ricardo car still doing work and closing the gap of 34-35 last time by. He's quicker than both the leaders. Oh, we got Duncombe and Gaelic caught up on each other at turn one. It was a KF cart going the wrong way all the way around the outside. Ryan Nicholson caught up in that incident too. Looks like he's got a rear bumper bar issue. Looking out the window from the timing tower. Good RGR Road Haulage Raceway. Watching your leaders, Luca Nietzsche is a young man on a mission here. Working his way through. The 55 Ricardo car down to a 34.1 hot lap of the race. Closing the gap nine tenths of a second off the back of Jake Sawyer, who's half a second off the back of Hugh McGuire out front. The digital quarter number 15, Tony Cart. Follow the 55 Ricardo of Nietzsche as he continues to reel in your leaders. Six and a half tenths of a second the gap ahead to Sawyer as they come down the back straight towards the Acri bus stop. Nietzsche working hard at the wheel, trying to gather up the cart and keep it in the right direction. Last time by 34.2, three tenths of a second clear of your leaders on lap time. As Nietzsche makes his way onto the RGR main straight away. As they go sailing past Lucas Gaelic, crawling his way down the main straight. Sawyer and Nietzsche getting very close for second now. Two tenths of a second, the gap. Nietzsche trying to size him up as they come out of the bus stop. Into the Napa parts dropper. Young Luca coming to life. The 2017 Cadet 12 West Australian State Champion. And last year's KA4 Junior Light state champion down in Esperance. He pulls to the inside on Sawyer at the patient Sandland sweeper. Clinical move. Nietzsche keeps his eyes forward. He's got his mum and brother hanging off the fence on the main straight here, watching on as he checks over his shoulder on Sawyer behind. Now in the second. The KA3 Senior Light brought to you by Bunbury Cartworks. Your one-stop shop for energy course here in Western Australia. Brought the truck all the way up to Geraldton to help people out with carts and parts. We've got Mick and Raylene in the truck helping out this weekend. Go further back. The 40 of Michael, Jonesy Jones, languishing back there in the four spot. Doesn't seem to have the same pace as the leaders that he did yesterday in the earlier heats. Holly Patrizzi out there in P5 with Aiden Passmore making his way into the P6 spot. Tyler Smith in P7, Eli Tunstall. Working his way back to P8 after that first corner incident that brought him unstuck. He'll be looking to charge forward in the 28 lap, a big dance later today. Josh Healy back there in P9. Ryan Nicholson, a fellow KF Kart teammate, rounding out your top 10. We follow Michael Jones up the straight. Has a little peek over his shoulder on Holly Patrizzi. Trying to chase him around in her Ricardo Kart. Back to the race lead though, Hugh Maguire is being hunted by young Luca Nietzsche through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. The gap last time across 3.6 tenths of a second. Nietzsche with a 34.2, Maguire with a 34.4. He's two tenths of a second, a lap faster. So he's gonna start putting pressure on Maguire this lap by. 
We'll see what Nietzsche can really do here on Maguire as they come out of the cart center switchbacks. Down towards the Acri bus stop. Nietzsche pouring the pressure on with the Ricardo cart. Two of the youngest competitors in this class leading the way for KA3 Senior Light. Nietzsche, a little lick at the curb of the left-hander down into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Trying to put the pressure on. Maguire hopping in the seat, trying to generate momentum. Pick up the revs on the exit of the hip, and Nietzsche has a little sneak up the inside, just peeks up the inside of Maguire, shows him a wheel. Young Hugh Maguire out front will know Nietzsche's arrival is imminent. Watch for a move at the bottom of the hill. He's close enough, but can he be brave enough under brakes? He's going to stay in behind this time by Luca Nietzsche. Stays in second. Maguire, your leader. Just over four laps left to go. Into the great Southern Fields Bowl. Maguire and Nietzsche. Onto the RGR. Haulage main straightaway. Head down. Elbows out. Nietzsche's going to show a big wheel here. Maguire sees him late. Moves out of the way. Nicely done from Luca Nietzsche. It was late, but it was clean. And Maguire didn't really put up too much of a fight. Yet the young hard charger go through. Luca Nietzsche claims the lead with a little over three laps left to go here. In KA3 Senior Light, brought to you by Bunbury Cartworks. The fastest young man on track, a 34.1 hot lap of the race. And Maguire's really dropped off that time by a 34.7 for Hugh. Could be the loss of momentum. Through the patient Sandland sweeper a moment ago, letting Nietzsche sneak on through for the lead. So talk about peaking at the right time of the weekend. This could be the perfect opportunity for Luke and Nietzsche to flex the muscle and show these boys what he's got coming into the 28th lap of today as we bring it around onto the RGR Road Haulage Main Straight. Two laps to go as we follow along with Jake Sawyer back there in third. What does he have that he's not shown yet? You'd have to think with the number 96 Transcode Engineering. And j &A Cart Tuning Sarah Cart will have something left in the can for the 28 lap final today. They're a smart bunch and they will surely have something to bust out and see what they can put on for the 28 lapper. But the last lap board is out. One to go for Luca Nietzsche as he comes down the line up the RGR Haulage Main Straight. Last lap is upon us for Heat 3 of KA3 Senior Light. Onto the back straight for the final time. Nietzsche checks over his shoulder. Maguire has actually pulled out some pace in these last couple of laps and found himself on a 34-3-7. Last time a 34-3-8 for Nietzsche. The gap stays at three and a half tenths. But he won't be close enough to challenge as Luca Nietzsche storms to a Heat 3 win. Onto the RGR main straight for the final time. Nietzsche wins Heat 3 of KA3 Senior Light. Hugh Maguire home in second. Jake Sawyer home in third. Got a long way back to Michael Jones in P4, Holly Patrizzi P5, Aiden Passmore P6. Eli Tunstall, a great recovery from him, back to P7. Tyler Smith in P8, Josh Healy P9, Ryan Nicholson rounds out your top 10. For KA3 Senior Light, brought to you by Bunbury Cartworks. Bit of replay action from the last race here. This was the wild start for Eli Tunstall. And to think, he made a recovery from that back to seventh in that race. This was Lucas Gaelic and Duncombe getting caught up on each other early on. And then Nietzsche charging his way through the field to clean up Hugh Maguire. He poured the pressure on and this move at the end of the main straightaway. Look how late he left it. Maguire saw him coming from a mile back though. Gave him enough room on the inside. 
That's a story written for KA3 Senior Light. Heat 3 sets the stage for a thriller. Final 28 laps to decide the West Australian state champion here this weekend at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. All the action brought to you by Patience Sandland. We'll take a moment. We'll be back with Cadet 9's Heat 3. 23 laps on the board coming up next. Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel.
By Ceiling Works Australia. Campbell Thompson getting away early here. Seven tenths of a second a gap. Back to Chase Webb in second. William Kalig Chen in the third. From Lucas in the fourth spot, we follow along the battle between Xander Edgington and Joel Blackman. Fifth and sixth. These two kids going at it time and time again throughout the heat so far. Leroy Toon further back there. In the 37 Ricardo Kart in P7, but it's Campbell Thompson, fastest of the race. 39.04 he puts in in the early stages. This time by Chase Webb down to a 38.95. Trying to close the gap, but we keep following along with Xander and Joel at the moment. Fighting it out, we go back to your leaders now. Campbell Thompson in the 51 KF cart. Here's Campbell down through the Acre bus stop. The young star. Stretching the legs here from the 33 West Coast Civil and Flat Out Carts entry of Chase Webb. The new fastest driver on track here in second. Trying to chase him down. Six tenths of a second, the gap between Campbell and Chase. Up onto the RGR main straight. I remember my days of Cadet 9 like it was only 20 years ago. Starting off my karting career. And some of the best memories these kids will carry into their adolescent and adult lives. Racing here in Cadets. As they run down towards the Afri bus stop. Thompson leads Webb. 6.4 tenths of a second a gap. Seventeen laps to go for Campbell Thompson, this time across the line. As he continues to stretch a lead, 8.7 tenths of a second he has over Chase Webb. Young Chase in the West Coast Civil Flat Out Carts machine, trying to chase him down. We go back to William Kalik Chen in the 20, being chased by his brother Lucas on screen at the moment. The number 97 Arrow X4 chassis for the youngsters in matching Red Bull racing, racing suits. As they run through the bottom end of the circuit. Lucas on screen working his way out out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl as we continue to charge forward here in Cadet 9's Heat 3. It's a long one for the Cadet 9's here. 23 laps here in Heat 3. It'll be 24 for their, 28 for their final. The 97 machine continues to charge through the cart center switchbacks. Currently in P4. 4.2 seconds off the back of his brother William. In the third spot is Campbell Thompson resets a new hot lap of the race of 38.96 out front to pull the gap for the lead to 1.1 seconds. We follow Xander Edgington in the number 10 arrow machine. Holding on to P5 right now behind Lucas in the four. Just working his way ahead of Joel Blackman. Moments ago in the P6 and 64 machine. Leroy Toon. 37 Ricardo car back there in P7.
Just about to hit the halfway point here in Cadet 9's Heat 3, brought to you by Ceiling Works Australia. We follow along with William Kalik Chan holding on to third at the moment. Back to Campbell Thompson out front, the 51 KF cart. Stretching things out through the Southern Great, Great Southern Fuels Bowl, out onto the RGR Road Haulage Main Straight. Up the hill, Campbell stretches out two seconds a gap over Chase Webb here in Heat 3 of Racing. Opening things right out over Chase Webb back there in the West Coast Civil Flat Out Carts Machine, number two on the road at the moment, the 33 car. Down to a 39 one last time across. There's a 39 0 for Campbell Thompson out front. William Kalik Chan in third in the number 20 machine with a 39 5. Last time through hot lap of a 39 2. And Lucas back there in P4. Xander Edgington in P5 from Joel Blackman and Leroy Toon rounding out your seven cart field of Cadet 9's Heat 3. Following along with Xander Edgington, up the RGR haulage main straight into the patient Sandland Sweeper. Currently holding on to the fifth spot here with eight laps to go as we go back to Campbell Thompson. Leading the way here. The 51 KF cart onto the RGR haulage main straight. Seven laps remaining for young Campbell. Be happy to be the checkered flag, I'm sure. They continue rolling on. Campbell working at the wheel. Stretching out three seconds over Chase Webb on track now. Absolutely running away with the win here. So far in Heat 3 of Cadet 9's brought to you by Ceiling Works Australia. Chase Webb back to second here. The 33 West Coast Civil Entry. Sliding his way across the left-hand hairpin down at the bottom of the race circuit. Through the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Kart Club. For the Patient Sandland 2020 WA Kart Championship. The first time in WA karting history, we've live streamed the weekend of racing, bring you all the action thanks to Four Style Media, providing live streaming there. Streaming partners, the Kart Center, Napa Parts and Afri Equipment, helping provide the coverage of Western Australia's best and brightest. And 200 entries taken to the track this weekend, also serving as round two of the West Australian KZ Series, brought to you by the Avalon Group. We follow Campbell out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl onto the RGR Haulage Main Straight. Five laps to go in Cadet 9 Heat 3, brought to you by Ceiling Works Australia.
One and a half laps left to go for Campbell Thompson. Sliding his way onto the back straight down towards the Afkri bus stop. As you grab Leroy Toon and Joel Blackman chasing each other around the circuit. We follow Campbell down into the bottom of the race circuit. As the last lap board comes on out to grab Campbell this time across onto the RGR Road Haulage Main Straight comes Campbell. Stretching out 3.6 seconds a gap. And a storming race for young Campbell this morning. Chase Webb back there in second. William Kalik Chen down the line in third. Another six seconds further adrift. Campbell Thompson making his way out to the final corners. Check and flag out and waiting for him here. Thompson storms to the heat three win at a clean sweep of the heat races for your fastest qualifier. Thompson wins heat three. Chase Webb home in second. William Kalik Chen coming up the hill to run third in heat three of Cadet Nines brought to you by Ceiling Works Australia. Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel.
Well, a bit of an awkward start for proceedings here in Heat 3 of KA3 Junior, brought to you by B-Sport. Thomas Lawton, the number 30 Tony Cart, parked up on the side of the road at the bottom of the racetrack, will not take the start and will have a mammoth job in the 28 lapper later today. The same can be said for young Tyson Sadler. His weekend continues on to degrade for young Tyson. The 36 KF Cart won't make the start here. But it's Noah Lyle and Caleb Sumic on the front row. Aiden Deckers back there in the third spot. As we bring the field around onto the RGR Haulage Main Straight. The centre bracing for 23 laps. Lights out. And we are racing Noah Lyle from the pole spot. Whoa, it's a bit wild there at the start. Oh, Bree Rhodes, another hard luck story for the weekend. Gets turned around on the way into turn one. An absolute shocker. The 21. Getting caught up there as well of Tristan Gray off into the cut through and taking no further part in this one, but it's Noah Lyle leading the way. The three of Donny Davis coming from absolutely nowhere. I think it was meant to be on the third row of the grid at the start. He goes into second as they come around. It's the 33 of Dakers into P3. Joshua Byrne into four. Luke Sawyer, P5. Caleb Sumich getting shuffled down to P6. They're fighting over up behind. Robert West getting involved there. As Alex Stefanovic puts a move on him, we follow the field coming out of the cart center switchbacks. It's Lyle, Davis, Deckers, Bird, Sawyer, and Sumich. Your top six drivers as they head down into the bottom end of the racetrack towards the Great Southern Fields Bowl. Lyle already trying to break away a little bit, build a bit of a buffer here. As Noah Lyle climbs the RGR, Haulage Main Straight. Deckers finds himself shuffled back to P3. Burn into four. Sumich muscling past Sawyer at the Patient Sandland Sweeper. As we grab Davis in second, Deckers in third. Burn in the four spot. KA3 Junior. One last year by Liam Kane, who's moved his way into the senior ranks for 2020. We look forward to crowning a new champion this weekend at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway. Donny Davis back there in second at the moment, heading down the hill the number three, Cook's Heavy Diesel, Sarah Cart. From the youngster coming all the way down from Carafa this weekend. The old school Sarah as well dark green suit to boot. Noah Lyle, fastest on track at 34.5. Quick lap down the straight. Deckers pulls out to have a little look on the inside of Davis, but he's not close enough there for second. Burn is getting monstered by Caleb Sumich, who'd be driving like an angry young man right now after getting shuffled back at the start. We'll want to be pushing forward in the field here. We chase him all the way down towards the Acri bus stop. Davis getting shuffled around by Deckers. They're gonna go side by side in the off-camera. Davis back to the inside. They're gonna get close and dicey. Oh, they touch on Deckers to the outside. And Deckers gonna get dropped off by three, four, maybe more, as Robert West sneaks through. Joshua Byrne capitalizes on that. He goes to second, Davis in third. Here comes Caleb Sumich up the inside of Davis, who doesn't make it too hard. Oh, Sawyer! Oh. Sawyer up the inside, cleans up through the NASA panel of Donnie Davis. And that puts them both off the side of the racetrack. The big winner out of this one, Alex Stefanovic moving up a couple of spots. He's picked up two spots, he's gone up to P4. Joshua Byrne into the second spot. Caleb Sumich in third, then Stefanovic, Robin West and Aiden Deckers. Up the RGR Haulage Main Straight. It's all happening in KA3 Junior. The boys are anxious to get out there and fight it out in this 23 lapper for Heat 3. Sumich pouring the pressure onto the back of the 86 to burn. At this stage, no one is on the level of Noah Lyle in this class. But they are stomping around, trying to fight it out for the remaining places. Burn on the defensive, sliding the 86 Tony Cart. 
around the corner to defend from Sumich for the mechanical piping services presented Young Machine. Alex Stefanovic and the OJG Engineering number 22. Sarah Kart, OJ and Bunbury and Bunbury Kart Works, Melbourne Kart Centre. Back there in the four spot. Robert West has been dropped off. In P5, Aiden Decker's now going back a little further. Follow along, Sumich got it done on Byrne. Now goes through to second. Burn back to P3, Stefanovic all by his lonesome in P4. Robert West really got dropped off there. He's gone way back. The number nine KF cart was fifth at the turn of the last lap. We'll see where he slots in now. He's at the back of that train behind Sawyer. So West goes all the way down to P10. Jack Kaulo in the mix here. The 47 of Billy Duncombe. But they're monstering Gabriel Belanca at the moment. Aiden Deck is putting the pressure on. Belanca's going to lose two, maybe three spots down at the bottom of the hill. Duncombe getting in there. Sawyer's in there at the inside of Duncombe. Ah, oh, Duncombe sideways. Gathers it up. They're going left and right trying to get around him. My goodness. Absolute pandemonium happening in KA3 Junior. Brought to you by B-Sport. Race coach and engineer. Doing a fair bit of coaching. For many drivers in this field as well this weekend. Don't know where to look at the moment. Gabriel Belanca getting absolutely monstered by a snarling pack of drivers behind him. We are watching the battle for 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 on the road. Davis up the inside of Belanca. A pair of FA carts trying to find their way through as Belanca goes two spots down at the run to the off-campus section. He's getting monstered by Lincoln Drew. No, the 15 behind him. O'Connor Gray putting pressure on him. Nicholas Smith trying to work his way through. He loses a spot to Billy Dunco. The 41 of James McCucci Allen. We're watching the fights to be inside the top 15 at this rate. KA3 Junior. What a wild. First half of Heat 3 we've had so far. 12 laps to go for Noah Lyle. He's two and a half seconds clear of the rest of the field. Caleb Sumich securely in the second. Josh Byrne having a bit of a lonely one in third. The same for Alex Stefanovic in P4. We follow along at the moment with Luke Sawyer who's running P7 behind Deckers and Kaulo. Great move from young Kaulo to move his way up into P6. He was outside the top 10 I believe at the start. just merely surviving the opening few laps of racing here. But it's Sawyer and West at the moment fighting it out for sixth and seventh on the road. Sorry, no, seventh and eighth on the road. As they come out of the car center switchbacks, we follow Gabriel Belanca defending the 12th spot for number 12 Tony Kart Machine for discount leasing. Got the FA of the 62 of Mason Fraser. Behind him now, the 15 of Connor Gray. The next one behind in the energy course chassis, putting pressure on as they head down into the gate of the Roman Fields Bowl. Oh, there's problems. Caleb Sumich on the side of the road.
College Main straight. Oh, Lyle straight off at the bottom of the hill. Noah Lyle has gone straight on at the bus stop and is going to rejoin at the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. What is going on in KA3 Junior here? Lyle rejoins back to the race lead, but he's going to move aside on the main straight. Completely dropped off the edge of the trace track at the bottom of the hill into the Afri bus stop. Aiden Deckers in the third, Alex Stefanovic in four, Robert West in P5, Sawyer P6, Donnie Davis in the seventh spot. Aiden Deckers has reset the fast lap of the race to a 34.158 and finds himself in second. Now putting the pressure on Lyle. Lyle and Deckers go side by side through the bowl. On the run towards the RGR hold in straight. Deckers holds on to second. Three to go this time by an absolute pandemonium here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club at the 2020 WA Car Championship. We're in the midst of KA3 Junior Heat 3. Joshua Byrne leading the way in the 86. Mechanical Piping Services, Tony Cart Machine, Noah Lyle, your previous leader, just went straight on at the Afri bus stop a moment ago, completely missed the corner, went through the gravel and rejoined at the bottom of the hill. Burn leads the way with two laps to go. Aiden Deck is in the second, Noah Lyle in third, now getting hassled by Alex Stefanovic. Back there for third. He's rejoined and falling through the order. That elevates Alex Stefanovic into third. Joshua Byrne, your race leader, as the last lap board comes out. One to go for young Byrne. Dak is in the second. Alex Stefanovic in third. Check and flag flies. Josh Byrne claims to win here in KA3 Junior Heat 3. Aiden Deckers home in second. Alex Stefanovic comes home for third in a frantic race to the line. Robert West claims P4. Luke Sawyer goes P5. Donnie Davis P6. Lincoln Drew in the seven. Noah Lyle. There'll be some questions asked around the flat out and the rise racing tent. P8 here in Heat 3. Gabriel Belanca, P9. Connor Gray rounds out your top 10 from Mason Fraser and James McCoochie Allen. Nicholas Smith, Jack Kaulo, and Bree Rhodes rounding out your 15.
Welcome back to racing action here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Kart Club with the Patient Sandland 2020 WA Kart Championship. Tag 125 Light brought to you by Flat Out Karts on track. Unfortunately, we did lose the live stream for just a moment during that KA3 Junior races. Amongst all the pandemonium, we actually had a minor power outage here at Midwest Kart Club. So we do apologise for the loss of the stream. We are back up and running and getting set for Flat Out Karts Tag 125 Lights. Kip Foster and Sam Dicker on the front row getting ready to do battle again for 23 laps. And they lead a 25 kart field. No start this time by though. They will roll around once again. Let's continue checking out your starting grid here. Aiden Passmore and Ashley Morrissey line up on the second row from Hugh McGuire and Lewis Reed on row three. Stephen Scoville and Dylan Favola will be a couple of ones to watch on the fourth row here from Luca Nietzsche and Shay Thompson on row five. Ryan Nicholson and Kieran Passmore lining up on row six. With Bevan Stone and Thomas Shue on row seven. Christopher Smith will line up P15 and a 25 cart field. Some big ones to watch here. Keeping an eye on the 39 of Kieran Ellis, who's got to do it from the back again. After yesterday's heat to endeavor, lights are going. We are out and racing 23 laps on the board. Kip Foster from the pole spot. One is off, there's Ash Morrissey off to the outside and he's getting shuffled all the way further back as well as we go pouring into turns two and three. The second largest field in attendance this weekend at the 2020 WA Kart Championship. Out of the kart center switchbacks, whoa, big one! Down to the bottom of the hill, Stephen Scoble trying to go the wrong way off the camera tower down at the bottom of the hill. And only a couple of inches to spare from cleaning up the camera tower down at the bus stop. Scoville is going to keep an eye out and try and slot back into where he was. Oh, Dicker and Foster, Maguire, Favola, all in there. Nietzsche's in there as well. Scoville's in there. We've got carts over the top. It's all coming. Boiling over to a head here in tag 125 flight. Can you believe it? Absolute pandemonium. Who's our leader again, folks? Would you believe? It's Lewis Reed, the 91 Flat Out Carts Arrow Machine. Leads away. Passmore is not happy about it. Lewis Reed leads away. Shay Thompson in the second. Hugh McGuire in third. Kit Foster. P4. Oh, no! Off the track in turn one. Kieran. No, Stephen Scoble into the wall. The 88 of Hall, off in the dirt as well. My goodness. One, two, five, light. Take us back to 2015, folks. In the heyday of when one, two, five, light was absolute pandemonium on track. Lewis Reed leads away. Shay Thompson in second. Hugh McGuire third, Kip Foster four, Sam Dicker P5, Luca Nietzsche, the 55 Ricardo Kart, the 15 year old surviving the knife fight on track. He stays to P6, Dylan Favola in seven, Liam Kane in eight, Cody Lunin defending West Australian champ P9, Ash Morrissey P10, Kieran Passmore and Kieran Ellis 11 and 12, Tommy Shu P13 from Thompson, Smith, Fraser, McLean, Betts, Blaine and Nicholson. We follow Lewis Reed off the end of the RGR Road Haulage Australia main straightaway. The WA Kart Championship lives up to its name, providing absolute insane racing action out on track. Maguire is closing up the gap to the back of Reed and Thompson. We follow Reed out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. There's going to be much more discussion about this race at the end of this one, and that could really shake up the starting grid for the final. It's going to be a thriller here at Midwest Kart Club for the Patient Sandland 2020 WA Kart Championship. 125 Light brought to you by Flat Out Karts, and it's a Flat Out Arrow X5 number 91. Lewis Reed out front, Shay Thompson tucking in there as well. Thompson, number 95, snap on tools, North Perth entry, just ahead of Hugh Maguire into the three spot. And Foster, Dicker, Nietzsche, 
Foster and Decker are starting to climb their way back up towards the front three. We could see a five-way fight for the lead here in heat three of 125 light. Luke and Ichi sitting back there in P6, just watching it all unfold. The black and white flag got hung out for Dylan for Vola. The number four energy course chassis down in P7. Liam Kane in eight. We follow Foster and Dicker. After putting on a stellar race between these two at the pointy end of the field yesterday in heat two, they find themselves having to work together in fifth, fourth and fifth on the road to catch the leaders. And here we go. It's a five-way fight for the lead in one, two, five light. Brought to you by Flat Out Carts. Reed, Thompson, Maguire, Foster and Dicker going at it. No one's going to pull any punches here. It's going to be all on in heat three of 125 light as they come out of the bus stop through the dropper down towards the Great Southern Fuels Bowl at the bottom end of the racetrack before they climb the hill on the RGR Haulage Main Straight. It's because it settles in here. You've got to like put, put, mop it all up regularly. It's, not, it's just what happens. It happens all the time at work too. Heading down the hill towards the Afgri bus stop. They stay where they are at the moment. Luca Nietzsche having a very lonely drive there. Last time across the 33.5. He's a bit slower than the leaders. But he's surviving so far. As we follow the leaders up the RGR main straight. Foster has a little look on Hugh Maguire. Jumps on the anchors and stays in behind. Reed has managed to build a couple of cart lengths of a gap to Shay Thompson. The 2019 125 heavy West Australian champ, Lewis Reed, leads away here in heat three of 125 light after putting in the work over the last six months or so to get down to the weight to race the lights class. His teammate behind him, Shay Thompson, and the flat out snap on tools, North Perth entry. The number 95 machine rocking the black plates. Team leader Sam Dicker at the back of this pack at the moment. Putting some pressure on Kip Foster. They're split by Hugh Maguire. Now Dicker trying to find a way around Maguire. He slots in and gets it done. Dicker on the inside of Maguire, who gets shuffled back. Foster and Dicker now moving aside Hugh Maguire. A couple of hand signals getting thrown out the side. Whether apologizing or venting frustration. Nobody would be able to interpret that far away, but it's Reed who still leads from Thompson. Now Foster into the third spot. Dicker trying to hunt him down. Young Hugh being dropped off to the back of that group. How's this though? Kieran Ellis has worked his way from the very back of the pack to P7. Again, as he made his way to P7 in heat two yesterday afternoon before coming a cropper with Luca Nietzsche and getting caught up and dropping back to P10 and then copping a penalty in heat two yesterday that saw him starting from P24 here in heat three. As Foster starts to pour the pressure onto Shay Thompson, he has a look at the inside of the car center switchbacks, gets it done. Dicker not close enough to get him as well. And Foster up to second now, sets his sights forward and elbows out, trying to chase down Lewis Reed. Thompson splits Foster and Dicker as they head into the bottom section of the racetrack. It was not even the halfway point a moment ago. Coming up to 10 laps to go for Lewis Reed as he climbs the RGR Haulage Main Straight. Reed checks over his shoulder and he sees the orange helmet winner Foster trying to chase him down. Behind Foster, Thompson, Dicker, Maguire, Nietzsche, Ellis, Morrissey, Kane, Lunin, defending state champ down in P10. Kieran Passmore, Hayden Fraser, Flynn Thompson, Declan Blaine, and Dylan Favola makes your top 15. There's still another 10 behind there. As we follow along, everything's settling down a little bit now into the back half of 125 Light Heat 3. Foster has got the red mist and he's trying to chase down Lewis Reed out front. they come out of the Afri bus stop across an upper pass dropper into the bottom end of the racetrack through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. They've opened up a bit of a gap over Shay Thompson. 
who seems unable to hold pace with these two at the moment and is backing up Sam Dicker. Dicker having a peek at the inside line on the way into the patient sand land sweeper. Can't find a way around just yet. Hugh Maguire tucking in behind him. Further back, noticing that Kieran Ellis is closing the gap to Luca Nietzsche at the moment. But the battle for the lead is on. Reed and Foster going bumper to bumper as they come out of the dropper into the bottom end of the racetrack. Foster trying to pour the pressure on, wants to pick up a one to put himself on pole for the final. 28 laps to do battle for the West Australian title this weekend. Foster shows a wheel. Reed though, closes the door in his face. Beautiful piece of driving from both of these two to do it cleanly. But it was a firm shut of the door in the face of Kip Foster. Rocking his way down to the bottom of the hill through the Afri bus stop again. Still behind them, Thompson and Dicker having a discussion about who wants to be third more than the other today. Hugh Maguire is driven back up onto that battle pack as they're slowing each other down. But it's these two out front with six to go as they come at the RGR Haulage Main Straight. Reed and Foster fighting it out. Number 91, Lewis Reed for meat processing suppliers on the flat out Arrow X5 chassis from Kip Foster. The new Birrell Art manufactured KF cart the number 20 machine. The man behind the KF card brand, Kit Foster, bouncing his way into the left-hand hairpin. Trying to hustle up to the back of the 91 of Lewis Reed. The battle coming to them as well for 6th and 7th with Luca Nietzsche and Kieran Ellis starting to happen again. Foster to the inside though, it's a big move this time. No being cautious on the left pedal. And Reed hustles behind him but loses the cart length coming out at turn 2. Kit Foster, back to... Back to the pointy end of your 125 light field. With just over four laps left to go. We follow Reed now on the defensive from his flat out and our teammate drivers, Thompson and Dicker, tucking in behind him through the patient Sandland sleeper. The fight's on for six and seven. Okay, in, right. if you want to. So the flat out team down the hill into the Afri bus stop. Hugh Maguire joining on the back of this battle as well. Kip Foster is clearing out from this group in the lead of 125 Light, brought to you by Flat Out Carts. We pick up the battle here. Luca Nietzsche and Kieran Ellis starting to fight it out again. Behind this group for sixth and seventh. As Ellis makes the move happen on Nietzsche further back in the field. Luca dropping back now. We keep following this fight between the flat out crew and Hugh Maguire tucking in behind him. And no one can do anything about Kip Foster at the moment. The man who probably has the best chance of doing something about it would be Sam Dicker further behind in the 72. Sam Dicker Motorsports and flat outs Arrow X5. Nietzsche is dropping back very quickly as Ash Morrissey has picked him up. Thompson has a look up the inside of Reed into the patient Sam Land Sweeper. Elevating the snap on tools North Perth entry up into third once again. Sorry, into second. As Reed now checks behind your previous race leader and last year's 125 heavy West Australian champ finds himself dropping a spot. Maguire is hassling Dicker as they come out through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl one more time. The last lap board is out, one to go. Foster. Stretching the legs down the line from Thompson. Reed Dicker on the defensive from Maguire. Getting a real hassle from the digital corner number 15, Tony Card entry. As they come onto the back straight for the final time, Kip Foster surviving a wild race here in Heat 3. And opening up almost eight tenths of a second of a gap as they come out of the bowl for the final time. It's Kip Foster, the number 20 KF Cart. Who's going to claim a win as the chequered flag flies? Foster wins heat three of 125 light. Shay Thompson home in second. Lewis Reed in third. Sam Dicker in fourth. Hubert Blyer P5. Kieran Ellis in a monster drive from 24th on the grid to go P6 here in heat three. Ashley Morrissey P7. Luca Nietzsche P8. Liam Kane P9 and Cody Lunan, defending Western Australian state champ, rounds out your top 10. 
That was 125 Light brought to you by Flash. So following a crazy race, let's unpack the action from 125 Light Heat 3. It all started right here at the start. Ash Morrissey getting shuffled off the race line, trying to rejoin. But then this at the start, Scoble gathering it up. And how close did he come to cleaning up our camera tower and the tire wall? That close. That's how close. Dicker and Foster getting caught up at turn one. That brought Maguire and Favola into the fight. Scoble. And Nietzsche right there. This was Scoville into the dirt at the end of the main straight, firing into the tie wall, and the crowd jumping back in a great big hurry as well. That ended his campaign. And then Kip Foster started to really flex the muscle hard up the inside of Shea Thompson to find his way back forward. And then again on Lewis Reed. The first attempt wasn't so fruitful. Reed slamming the door in Foster's face, but the second time around up the RGR Haulage main straight, Foster made his intentions clear. Firing the 20k F cart to the inside. What a race we had. This was Thompson on the inside of Reed as he started to drop back later on in the race. The 2019 125 Heavy West Australian champ. Man, oh man, 125 Light never ceases to provide some crazy racing action. And they live up to their name once again here. The final is yet to come. 28 laps on the board to crown this year's West Australian state champion for the RGR Road Haulage Raceway. For Midwest Car Club and Patience Sandland. We'll be back in just a moment with Cadet 12 Heat 3 coming out next. The Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel. Well, if the action couldn't get any wilder here at Midwest Car Club, we've got another bumper field of 21 drivers coming out for Cadet 12, proudly brought to you by Eco Resources. It's the defending Western Australian champ, Nash Ferraro, for the Pinjara Bakery, number 16, OTK chassis, on the pole spot, starting alongside Nicholas Stardy on the front row. Sachin Smithway will start from P3 with Toby Mayolo on four. Followed by Zane Rhodes, Jack Webster, Connor Radford, Cooper Lyle, Jet McDonald, Chase Wildman. Rounding out your turn, and another, and another 11 behind him as we pour into the tram lines on the start. Lights out and racing. Starty dropping back at the start again. But Ferraro going to squeak through. We got one energy course chassis running the wrong side of the curb all the way through turn two. He rejoins and bunches up the pack behind him. I think that's Starty getting caught up. Three wide onto the back straight. We've got a couple of carts getting caught up at the cart centre switchbacks and more action happening down at the bus stop. Zane Rhodes, the BRM chassis, up into second. 
from Connor Radford in the third. Sachin Smith way in P4, but it's Nash Ferraro leading the way onto the RGR main straight. From Rhodes in second, Radford goes up the inside of the patient Sandland sweeper. More passes happening through as Toby Mayolo trying to muscle his way through. It's one of the Webster boys, the number nine energy course cart trying to squeak through and chase down his teammate Nicholas Stardy who's all the way back in P5 after another shocking run off the start. Nash Ferraro leading the way at the moment. As they come down to the Great Southern Fuels Bowl, Radford back there in second. From Rhodes in third, the 26 Vulcan panel and paint. BRM chassis losing a spot this one by as young Connor Radford starting to come good. Nick Stardy is the fastest on track, 38-619. Ferraro has no clue of the action happening behind him as Rhodes and Radford get into it. We follow along this battle here. Radford, Rhodes and Smith way at the moment as they come on to the back straight. Smith way up the inside of young Rhodes. Escorts him all the way out to the outside line. Now Sachin moves himself up into third. Zane dropping a spot to the four. Nicholas Stardy lining up behind him. The fastest on track here with a 38-6-1 last time across. He's dragging Toby Mayolo with him. As they all pour on through, through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. And back up the RGR main straight. Each driver having a peek over their shoulder to check on the driver behind. And see the gap. No one is going to touch up Nash Ferraro here. 1.2 seconds the gap out front. As Radford, where did this kid come from this weekend? Making a step to Cadet 12 here in 2020. Out of Cadet 9's last year. Making his presence felt on a regular basis in the open meetings all around Western Australia. Finds himself starting to come good here in second. But it ain't over yet. We still got 20 laps to go. 19 to go this time by for Nash Ferraro. Radford starting to get monstered by Sachin Smith Way in the number 28 but Sam Dicker Motorsports and flat out carts Zane Rhodes tucking in behind him he's found himself a good pace at the moment for the 26 Malibu boats right to drive an auto pro canning bale BRM chassis entry Nicholas Stardy though using that lap speed to drive right up onto the back of this group now now Stardy's going to force the issue in the 15 energy course chassis your fastest qualifier a pair of seconds so far this weekend Finds himself on the back foot once again. Young Nick has had to fight his way after some bad starts in the heat races. Rhodes has a little look up the inside of Smith Way and escorts him out. Stardy trying to go with him. He's on the wrong side of the racetrack though. Has to slot in back behind. So Zane Rhodes moves himself back up in the third. They're fighting for it here. And Zane's starting to really come to life. Once everything's come up to temp, he's going to start putting pressure on Radford. Down through the Afri bus stop. Into the Napa Auto Parts dropper. Rhodes putting pressure on Radford as they come through the hairpins at the bottom end of the racetrack. Smith Way, Stardy, Webster, Mayolo, Lyle, McDonnell and Webster. James this time in the 10 spot. Now Stardy has a look up the inside of Sachin Smith Way up the RGR main straight. Parks the number 15 energy course chassis up into the 4 spot now. Meanwhile Rhodes on the inside of Radford gets the job done. They're switching and swapping around here through the cart centre switchbacks. Rhodes brings the BRM back into second. Radford ain't done with him yet though. Bit of a top up into the bottom of the hill there. Radford tag in the back of the 26 BRM cart. Bit of a fair bump play on as they continue through. Stardy trying to find his way around. He's pushing hard to close the gap to these few. Out the front, now Stardy pushing Radford all the way up onto the hill. One of the other Webster boys dropping back a little bit. Radford wants to have a crack at Rhodes, who was a bit slow coming on the straight. They're going to go side by side. Nicholas Stardy choosing where on earth do I park my cart this time? As they come out of the cart centre, switchbacks. Meanwhile, Nash Ferraro clearing out. 2.5 seconds of gap as Radford up the inside of Rhodes. Stardy trying to go with him. They're going to go side by side into the dropper. But Rhodes slots into second. Stardy back to P4. They're still fighting over it behind him as well. As Radford into second. Smith, Way and Webster fighting over the placings behind them. They're going to go side by side. Webster through the dirt, taking the Rutley cross option. On the way onto the main straight, Starty and Rhodes getting side by side and defensive. Very aggressive from Rhodes. Through the patient Sandland sweeper, Nick Starty claims third. Connor Radford holding on to second as a result of that. He's built a couple of cart lengths of a gap. 
Three seconds is the gap for Nash Ferraro out front. Where is where even is this kid? He's absolutely gone. The number 16, Pinjara Bakery, OTK cart. There he is flashing across your screen from the youngster from Waruna. But the battle is on for second. Radford and Starty this time by. Going to chase each other up the RGR main straight away. We're coming up to the halfway point very soon. 13, 14 laps to go. My goodness. Cadet 12 racing at its absolute finest here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club at the Patience Sandland 2020 WA Kart Championship. Starting with a late move under brakes on Radford. Gets it done on the bottom of the hill. Radford getting pushed around a little bit. Radford countering now Rhodes to the inside of Radford. They're going to go side by side. Rhodes goes back through to third. Radford down to P4, Sachin Smith way in P5, Toby Mayolo having a bit of a quiet one, but he points it to the inside of Sachin Smith way as Radford just peeks up the inside of Rhodes all the way through the safe, patient Sandland sweeper. We follow the battle for third and fourth. Nick Stardy has cleared out from this pairing now, but he's 3.3 seconds off the back of Nash Ferraro out front. Rhodes and Radford going to continue to have this little argument about who wants to be third today. This is only heat three. We're not even at the big dance yet. And Smith Way, Mayolo and Webster further behind, fighting over fifth, sixth and seventh on the road. Behind them is Cooper Lyle in the eighth spot. As we look at second place, Nicholas Stani in the number 15 energy course chassis. Zane Rhodes has built himself a couple of cart lengths over Connor Radford now. As they're on the break, down into the bus stop corner, we grab Stardy in second. Cadet 12 brought to you by Eco Resources. Nash Ferraro clearing out house. G O R N gone. Three seconds the gap over Stardy as we watch this fight between Sachin. Toby and Jack fighting over 5th, 6th and 7th at the moment. Through the cart centre switchbacks, 11 laps to go. We're across the halfway point. Things start to settle down a little bit here in Cadet 12s. Watching the field make their way through the Great Southern Fields Bowl. Radford now falling back into the clutches of Smith Way. Trying to hold on to third, but this is going to get into a little argument between these three very shortly here. Webster and Mayolo sitting back, just watching it unfold, seeing what they can do in the closing stages. We've got 10 laps left to go. Another seven kilometers of racing still to come. Full course yellows are out for our Cadet 12s at the moment. 
with a stranded cart parked on the middle of the racetrack down at the bottom of the hill. So full course yellows are out for our Cadet 12s to bring the race under control and try to get that cart escorted off the racetrack. We brought out the yellows with a couple of laps to go. And this time by will be six laps left to go here in Cadet 12's Heat 3 brought to you by Eco Resources. Nash Ferraro was leading the way from Nicola Stardi and Zane Rhodes. So the race neutralised and the carts escorted off the track. The green flag is out to send us back racing again. Nash Ferraro will lead the field down the straight as the green flag flies with four laps left to go here in Cadet 12's Heat 3 brought to you by Eco Resources. Ferraro leads from Starty, Rhodes, Radford, Webster and Maiolo. Unfortunately, Sachin Smith way. One of the youngsters caught up with the incident down towards the bottom of the racetrack will take no further part in this one but it's Ferraro leading the way around with three and a bit laps left to go. Starty back there in the second place. As the race resumes, the racing ash and continues on. Single file restart. And as Ferraro brings it down the main straight, three to go this time by. Nick Starty senses an opportunity here to claim a win out from underneath Ferraro though. as he's been mounting a comeback, trying to recover from that shock and start he had once again. The number 15 energy course cut, chasing Ferraro down the hill. Rhodes finds himself in third. From Radford and Webster, four and five on the road as they come out of the bus stop. Out of the Napa Auto Parts dropper, and down towards the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Ferraro a little bit slow in the back end of this one. After the restart, start, he's really sensing an opportunity here. They had a thrilling finish in heat one, separated by only 12 thousandths of a second at the line. Starty with the legs down the straight. Finds it to the inside of Nash Ferraro. Nick Starty forces the issue. Ferraro up the inside. They touch. No. And it all comes unraveled. Ferraro on the sidelines. Can you believe it? Starty claims the race lead. Here comes Radford. Rhodes and Webster almost three wide down the hill. Mayolo's in the fight for this one. Nash Ferraro is out of contention. The last lap board will be coming out this time by. Rhodes up the inside of Radford. He wants to push forward and get up onto the back of Nick Starty. They're going to go side by side. Webster on the outside line, trying to defend and trying to carry the speed on Radford all the way up the hill. Here comes Toby Mayolo. Last lap board. One to go in Cadet 12's Heat 3. Mayolo up the inside of Webster. Takes the spot from him. As Nick Starty leads the way onto the back straight for the final time. No one's going to get him as he checks over his shoulder to confirm the number 15 energy course chassis out front. Young Zane Rhodes in the 26 BRM cart. 
having a crack at it for second at the moment. He leads out from Radford in the third spot. And it looks like Webster and Mayolo. Checkered flag is out. And that was an awful long race. 23 laps. Nicholas Stardy takes the win in heat three of Cadet 12. brought to you by Eco Resources. Zane Rhodes home for second. Connor Radford in third. Jack Webster in fourth. Toby Mayolo goes P5. Jed McDonald P6. Ben Hall in seven. Chase Wildman P8. James Webster in P9. Cooper Lyle rounds out your top ten in an absolute thriller and a wild one for Cadet 12. brought to you by Eco Resources. So how do we unpack that one, folks? There's been a couple of wild races. All the action from Cadet 12s here in Heat 3. Zane Rhodes was up and down the order inside the top five. And a great movie put on Sachin Smith way here. They brought Nicholas Stardy right with them as well after Stardy had a shock and start. This was Stardy on the inside of Smith way the following lap, trying to continue to push on forward. And the battle pack down the hill. This was a very late move from Radford down the hill that tried to bring Starty with him as well and they continued on racing every corner every lap not giving an inch Webster went for a bit of a wild ride down the bottom of the racetrack and the number nine energy course chassis big defensive moves being made by Zane Rhodes on Nick Starty on their way up the straight another late one at the bottom of the hill here this was Starty on the inside of Radford left it till the absolute last minute and then the move on Nash Ferraro that Put Stardy into the lead of the race after the restart following the full course yellow. And this was the bump that brought Ferraro unstuck. Something came a cropper and maybe even lost drive. It looks like he went absolutely nowhere after that bump that ended Ferraro's run here in Heat 3, unfortunately. The battles were still on behind them as well for the remaining placings. But in the end, it was Nick Stardy. Clearing out here for Cadet 12s and taking the win here in Heat 3, brought to you by Eco Resources.
Opening laps underway here for KA4 Junior Light, brought to you by All Good Racing Carts and Parts. Noah Lyle getting out front early here from Thomas Lawton in second. K. Davey and Aiden Deckers fighting over third and fourth at the moment. We lost a couple off the start here. It looks like Sebastian Guest, unfortunately, taking no part in this one. The six of Riley Watkins getting caught up at the start as well. He dropped all the way down to P13 on the opening corner. But it's Lyle leading the way out of the Great Southern Fields Bowl for the second time here up the hill under the RGR Haulage Straight. Lawton and Deckers up the inside of Lawton. It's a late move, but Deckers pulls it off. Lawton tries to go under and over, though, but he's on the wrong side of the racetrack. Side by side into turn two through the cart center switchbacks. Deckers making it happen and defending, holding under second here. Lawton gets bumped down to the third spot. K. Davey into P4. Dylan Guest into P5 from Ethan Traeger in six. Jackson Mitchell Rosenauer having a good run here. The 88 KF cut up to P7 from Luke Fraser in eight. Riley Watkins countering back to the ninth spot. Connor Payne rounding out your top 10. Following along the battle at the moment, Ethan Traeger and Jackson Mitchell Rosenauer. The Corsa Cart and the KF doing battle. They're fighting over sixth and seventh on the road. Young Jackson had his fair share of trials and tribulations. He's been in the wars a little bit this weekend so far in the heat races. For the DNF in race two, I believe. He shows a wheel to the inside of Traeger. Licks the curve on the way up the front, onto the front straight. Though. They're giving away time because it's Riley Watkins behind him now. As they close up into the cart center switchbacks. Traeger, Mitchell Rosenauer and Watkins fighting it out six, seven and eight on the road. Luke Fraser and Connor Payne are a little bit further behind at the moment. So watch the field come out. Watkins up the inside of Jackson Mitchell Rosenauer. Slide jobbing his way into the bus stop. Fraser is right behind them as well. Young Luke in the number 96 entry fighting it out. Now Watkins wants a piece of Traeger as they come out of the Great Southern Fields Bowl. Side by side, Watkins wants it. He's on the inside line. They're going to go almost drag racing. No, Watkins sneaks on through. Jackson Mitchell Rosenau wants a piece of Traeger. He slots in behind and Traeger's wide though. Now Luke Fraser looks at the inside of Mitchell Rosenau up the inside at turn two. Puts young Jackson down a spot. So Riley Watkins lit a fire under his backside after the opening lap to put him all the way down to P13. He's now climbed his way as high as P6 and trying to chase forward to catch up to the 50 Viral Art chassis of young Dylan Guest. As Noah Lyle is your leader, Aiden Decker's in second, Thomas Lawton in third, K. Davey P4, Guesty rounds out five, as his brother Sebastian is off on the side of the road, unfortunately didn't make the start of the race. The argument over these remaining placings though, between Traeger, Fraser and Mitchell Rosenau are still not over. They've still got something to say about it. And behind them, Connor Payne in P10 is starting to catch them as Aiden Deckers is the fastest young man on track with the 33 KF card out in second place. He's eight and a half tenths of a second off the back of your race leader though. Noah Lyle doing it in style out front. Thomas Lawton in P3, eight and a half tenths further back. Trying to chase him down. <laughs> Noah Lyle out front in the number four, a rise racing flat out carts machine. Stretch on the legs, 8.3 tenths of a second over Aiden Deckers now. Deckers is the only one who can really match pace with Lyle at the moment. But young Noah getting track position each and every time. Continues to soldier on forward. So evenly matched on pace, Deckers needs something a little special to put the fight to him for the race lead. It's Thomas Lawton in third, Kate Davey P4. Then Dylan Guest in P5. Riley Watkins in the sixth, gonna put some pressure on him. As we grab Noah and Deckers up the RGR. Main straightaway, 15 laps to go as they came across the line this time by.
watching this battle rage on between Dylan Guest and Riley Watkins to be in the top five. As they come into the Great Southern Fields Bowl, Watkins on a comeback drive after getting shuffled down to P13 on the opening lap. Lyle comes down the line from Deckers. The gap closing a little bit to seven tenths of a second, but here's Watkins up the inside of Guest. Guest, it lets him on go. Now young Riley Watkins charging forward, moves up into P5 and sets his sights forward, trying to chase down Kay Davey. Getting the head down and elbows out. Trying to chase down Davey. Last time across the line, he sits 1.2, 1.3 seconds adrift of Davey. The 75 Wheat Fix machine. Kay Davey for, for Wheat Fix and 79 Car Sports. Holding on to the fourth spot at the moment. Watkins, less than a second off the back of him now. As they come into the Kart Center switchbacks, young Riley using his valuable experience each and every race to charge forward after some less than favorable starts. To move forward in the field. There's the gap, you can see it visually last time across the line. 9.6 tenths of a second, but it's Thomas Lawton further ahead up the road. He holds on to third, but he's 2.7 seconds off the back of second place of Aiden Deckers, who sits eight and a half tenths off the back of Noah Lyle, your race leader. Fastest qualifier in yesterday morning's session. Won both heats yesterday. Looking to make it a clean sweep heading into the 28 lap final. To crown the West Australian state champ, Riley Watkins has closed the gap down to Kay Davey, down to 4.8 tenths of a second. The fight is coming to him for fourth here. Davey and Watkins gonna duke it out through the Napa Auto Parts dropper, down into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl they go. Davey sliding the back end of the 75. Wheat Fix and 79 Kart Sports entry. Trying to keep the momentum up, but Watkins is just rock solid. Davey moves over on him, but Watkins fires it all the way to the inside curbing and picks up the four spot. Young Riley Watkins continuing to charge on forward here. The MG Kayla Seafood Arrow X5 entry. He's had a pair of fourth place finishes. Is on, to make, on track to make it a trio of fours. Heading into a 28 lap final. Can he catch Thomas Lawton? Is the next question we start to ask. It was 1.7 seconds, the gap between Lawton and Davey as they came across the line last time by as Lyle, Deckers, and then Lawton come up the RGR main straightaway. Lawton always lonesome at the moment, the number 30, Sarah Cart. Currently holding on, 1.5 seconds clear of Watkins. Last time across the line as he comes out, he feels like he's on a bit of a lonely Sunday morning drive here at the RGR Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. But Riley Watkins is hunting him down. 1.5 seconds was the gap last time across. We'll check on it again as they come on down the line. As Lyle and Deckers slot on through, nine and a half tenths of a second apart. Deck is still trying to match pace with Lyle, just can't quite get there. And those opening couple of laps is where Lyle does the most damage to that lap time. And the gap between Lawton and Watkins, third and fourth, 1.2 seconds between them. As we follow Lyle in the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. And up onto the RGR main straightaway. Deck is sitting nine and a half tenths of a second adrift in second. Last time across, 9.3 tenths of a second this time by. We'll check on the gap from Lawton to Watkins. One second is the gap. Watkins took out a whole three tenths of a second that time by. A 37.7 to a 37.5. The KA4 Junior Light brought to you by All Good Racing Carts and Parts. Six laps to go for Noah Lyle out front. Maintaining that gap. Back to Deckers. Bit of a quiet one at the pointy end here. The closest battle starting to develop. Lawton and Watkins. As they follow young Riley in the number six MG Kayla Seafood. Flat out carts, arrow machine. 
He looks back to Davey, but this is him trying to catch the back of the number 30 Sarah Carter, Thomas Lawton, to break the monotony of fours in the heat races. Fourth place in heat one, fourth place in heat two. He's currently fourth as the battle is going on here between Luke Fraser and Dylan Guest. They're fighting it out for sixth and seventh on the road. Ethan Traeger has been dropped off the back of that battle by quite some margin. And he's a fair way further behind. Last time he was 1.6 seconds further back. And Fraser and Guest fighting it out through the cart center switchbacks. Once we follow him. Up and back down the hill, down towards the Acri bus stop. And then the Napa Auto Parts dropper yet to come. Fraser holding onto the spot at the moment over Guest. Six and seven on the road. Through the dropper they go as Noah Lyle and Deckers come down the line. Maintaining even Stevens on their gap. We follow Noah Lyle, continuing to just click off those perfectly clean laps. He maintains the gap back to Aiden Deckers, who's doing a valiant job of trying to chase him. As Lyle brings it around onto the main straight, there's Lyle, there's Deckers. One second between them at the line. We're just under, but the battle happening for third and fourth. Watkins and Lawton just missing. Watkins up the inside of Thomas Lawton for third. Young Riley on a charge here. Down to P13 on the opening lap. It's KA4 Junior Light starting to draw to a close here for Heat 3. Brought to you by All Good Racing Carts and Parts. Watkins and Lawton chasing each other around the circuit here. This is for third. Watkins finding himself with plenty of pace in the back end of these long races. At the moment, he's still lapping on par with Lyle and Deckers. Lyle that time by 37.3, Deckers 37.4, Watkins 37.4, Lawton at a 37.8, Davey 38.0. These top three in a league of their own at the moment as Lawton is trying to find some pace to chase young Riley Watkins. He runs a little bit wide through the bus stop with a lap and a half left to go. Last lap board is coming out to grab your race leader, Noah Lyle, one to go. Lyle leads out just over a second, clear of Aiden Deckers. One to go here for Riley Watkins, further behind Thomas Lawton in P4K, Davey P5. As Noah comes up onto the back of Crystal McClurg to put a lap on young Crystal, who's been in the wars a little bit in the heat races so far, but good to see Crystal still out there and having a crack at it. Checkered flag out and flying. Noah Lyle takes the win here in Heat 3 of KA4 Junior Light. Brought to you by Orgood Racing, Carts and Parts. Aiden Deckers stayed with him all the way to the end for second. Riley Watkins, a great charge back into third at the end. Thomas Lawton, P4. K Davey, P5. Luke Fraser in the six. Dylan Guest in seven. Ethan Traeger, P8. Jackson Mitchell Rosenauer, P9. Henry Patience rounds out your top ten. From Jack Parham, Connor Payne. Riley Gray, Lockie Adams, and Wesley Hobson rounding out your top 15. That was KA4 Junior Light, brought to you by All Good Racing Carts and Parts.
only came from uh, Bauer getting ready for WA Open Performance. Heat three on deck. And for the first time in four years, Courtney Goff not contending the title in 2020. Choosing rather to race in the West Australian KZ Series. Second round this weekend brought to you by Avalon Group. But it's WA Open Performance on track. Thanks to Continental Tyres. Corey Hayes has been the man to beat so far. Fastest qualifier in yesterday morning's session. Had a pair of wins in the heat races with the 175cc IAMI X30 Super X30 powered machine. For the number 11 Gillard Cart, he will start on pole. The 77 of Nathan Phillips on the outside front row from Campbell and Chambers. As the lights go out, and we go racing. 13 laps on the board. And Phillips trying to get a good jump on Hayes around the outside at turn one. But Hayes jumps to the lead here. Phillips goes to second. And Chambers. Campbell and Stewart. Third, fourth and fifth on the road as they go down the hill towards the bus stop. Daniel Stewart up the inside of Greg Campbell at the bottom of the hill. Blake Preston in there in the 84 Swiss Hutless machine. Going to P6 at the moment. See what he can turn on. Maybe he's working up on the right side of the bed and got that twin TMMF3 powered Swiss Hutless machine singing the right song. No, I stand corrected. That's Gavin Kennedy. It's Blake Preston all the way at the back of the pack in the 84 Swiss Hutless machine. Continually keeping me guessing on what's going on with this car. As he's at the back. But it's Corey Hayes out front from Phillips in second. Matt Chambers, Daniel Stewart, Graham Campbell. Greg Campbell, sorry. Gavin Kennedy. And Caprice Hall, the 50 of Alan Beard. And 84 of Blake Preston. Rounding out the running order.
Crossing the halfway point here in WA Open Performance, brought to you by Continental Tyres. Daniel Stewart and Matt Chambers having a good old little scrap on track for third and fourth at the moment. But it's Corey Hayes stretching out from Nathan Phillips as they come over the line to make it 11 to go. This battle here, Chambers, Stewart and Greg Campbell fighting over three, four and five on the road. As we grab your leaders here, Corey Hayes and Nathan Phillips having a crack at it out front. With WA Open Performance, bit of a hark back to the good old days of running twin 200 Opens and the likes. Huge horsepower, fire-breathing monsters that were an absolute menace and evil carts to drive around the track. And we can still get to run them and have fun here. With the introduction of water-cooled engines and centrifugal clutches, the category becomes a lot more easy to get going and more affordable and more accessible with the introduction of using KZs in the class before the West Australian KZ series came on in. But out front, it's a single piston engine. 175 cc's, the AIM Super X30. On board Corey Hayes, number 11 Gillard chassis. Not the quickest in a straight line, but the lighter chassis provides the ability to carry a little bit more corner speed. And Hayes is making great use of that as he works his way onto the straight, leading out Phillips as they come up to put a lap on Alan Beard. This battle of the twins though, between Matt Chambers, Daniel Stewart and Greg Campbell fighting it out as they come onto the RGR main straight. We are nine laps to go.
Five to go across the line this time by Nathan Phillips has really turned up the heat. In the last few laps, he's putting the pressure on Corey Hayes. Using the power he can put down to the ground on the straights to try and chase him. As I go down towards the Afri bus stop again, Hayes is just quicker through the slower corners. And Alan Beard stuck on the middle of the first corner. Something going wrong with the number 50 Itel car chassis. And Beard pulls it off the track and take no further part. And Corey Hayes has opened up a big gap over Nathan Phillips, who I think might have just buttoned out of it and let the uh, tyres cool down. The MG SM Green Yellow Prime providing somewhat better life and you can push them a little bit harder compared to the old MG FZ Yellows, but they still are quite a soft tyre. It takes a lot of abuse from these high-powered and very heavy carts in WA Open Performance. And same can be said for WA KZ Series as well. As Corey Hayes comes down the line, just cruising around the track now. Three laps to go for Corey Hayes in Heat 3 of WA Open Performance. Final lap upon us for Corey Hayes. Leading the way from Nathan Phillips as the pace has really dropped off in WA Open performance. As Hayes is just cruising around trying to conserve the rubber at the moment, waiting for the checkered flag to come on out. Hayes cruising around with the IAMI Super X30 175cc power plant to bring it home, Hayes wins heat three of WA Open Performance. Brought to you by Continental Tires. Nathan Phillips home in second. And then a long gap. Daniel Stewart makes it home in third. Matt Chambers in the fourth spot. Gregory Campbell rounds out your top five. As Caprice Hall will drag the 88 out of the bottom corner to claim P6, the last of your finishing drivers. As we had, did not finish from Alan Beard and Gavin Kennedy. Or Blake Preston, mind you heading into a 28-lap final later today. Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. 
If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Car Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel. Moving onwards into the next heat of KZ2. This is the Evens pre-final. Currently placed drivers following the first three heats of racing get ranked on their points they've accumulated so far and they get split into two groups. They'll accumulate more points here from this race which will set the starting grid to make a 28 cart final. Tommy Sparks starting on the pole spot here with the number 21 Charles Leclerc cart alongside Bailey Nickla with your fastest qualifier in Friday afternoon's qualifying session. Daniel Papa Sergio will start from P3. Simon Grilliam from 4. Followed by Alex Rillo on P5. Corey Minton on P6. Good to see him back out there after he had a nasty shunt which bent the rear axle yesterday. Nathan Davis and Daniel Sugar, 7 and 8. Bailey Gretchen, Marty Dack, 9 and 10. Then Callum Williamson, Jaden Pierce, Jessica Howe, Jason Priolo and Ryan Bender. Round out your starting grid as we get set to go the next gear with KZ2 for the second round of the West Australian KZ Series. 23 laps on the board. And it is go and Sparksy with a good start. It's wild through the midfield though. Minton with a good start as well. He's moved up a couple of spots already, but Thomas Sparks gets going through turn one and leads the field down into the cart center switchbacks. Bailey Mickler slotting into the two spot here. Simon Grillon right behind him, P3. Then Dama Papa Sergio and Corey Minton. Down the hill, Minton with a big one. Oh, into the side of Gwilym, who's going to choose to go around the outside of the camera tower. And Gwilym is going to rejoin here. Oh, Gumby is stuck in the dirt. Simon Gwilym's run is done. Wild opening lap for our KZ Series competitors. First lap down, it's Thomas Sparks out front, who's been well adjusted to putting on a bit of a show when he's further back in the pack. Cast your mind back a few weeks to the opening round of the WAKZ Series up at Hurricane Go-Kart Club, and he put an absolute slide job clinic to carve his way through the field in this heat. But he leads the way, no such slide jobs required this time. Bailey Mickler in second. Papa Sergio and Rallo going at it here. Davis and Minton having a crack at it further behind as well. For fifth and sixth on the road as Minton is the quickest on track. The number 13, Ricardo Kart. He's going to go for another big move up the inside of Davis into the bus stop. Minton picks off Davis and gets the job done as they come out of the dropper. Davis tucked right into his rear bumper though as they come down into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl for the one more time. Still 20 laps to go for Thomas Sparks, the number 21. Charles Leclerc card out front, Nickler in two, Papa Sergio, Rollo, Minton and Davis, your top six. Follow the battle here with Papa Sergio and Rollo at the moment. Good to see Alex Rollo having a good weekend so far. Rocking the BRM chassis for the number 62 machine. He's put on a couple of good performances so far for Land Surveys and BRM Karts Australia. Putting some pressure on Damon Papa Sergio, who, think about it, just four years ago, took a clean sweep of all three junior classes, KA4 Light, Heavy, and KA3 Junior. 
at the West Australian State Titles at, at Tiger Car Club up at Wanneroo in 2016 before he made his step into competing KA3 and KA2. Did a couple of runs on the national level and finds himself contending 125 light and KZ2 on a regular basis here in Western Australia. He's got a rear bumper full of Alex Rollo. Plenty of experience, of course, for Alex. Piling onto the back of Damon Papa Sergio, but he's got a rear bumper full of Corey Minton as well as they come up the hill. This is a battle for three, four, and five. Minton up the inside of Rollo, feeds him a bumper. And they survive and gather up the steering, but Minton survives that one. Now sets his sights forward onto the back of Papa Sergio. Sparksy and Mikla haven't been able to build too much of a gap over each other yet. Tommy Sparks has three tenths of a second over Bailey Mikla. Back there in second, they come down into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Up the hill they go on the RGR main straightaway. Papa Sergio Minton. Now Bender. Look at Ryan Bender, actually. We're going to have a little chat about this dude. He has had so much speed. He qualified second on Friday afternoon. Has had absolute shocker after shocker after you guessed it, shocker, in the heat races in both the classes he's competing this weekend. But he finds himself driving from the back row of the grid. He's now in P5. He just moved aside Alex Rollo for the spot. Now Bender is going to set his sights forward. He's got huge pace on board the Birola chassis for the 59 driver. Now chasing down Damon Papa Sergio for P4 on track. As we follow Minton, Papa Sergio and Bender. Three drivers who just a few years ago were doing this same old thing, contending the races in the junior ranks, now contesting the very pointy end of the West Australian KZ series. Thomas Sparks, a Carter from way back, made a step into Formula Ford racing. Has always been quick and loves to send it when he came back to karting. Got a bit of a reputation for being the biggest send as possible. Bender up the inside of Papa Sergio. Nicely done in the late stages of patient, patient Sandland Sweeper. Now Ryan Bender moves up to P4 and sets his sights forward on chasing Corey Minton down into the bus stop. As they come out of the dropper into the bottom end of the racetrack. We follow Sparks and Mickler, 2.7 tenths of a second apart. Another 1.8 further back to Corey Minton. After that opening lap incident with Simon Gwilliam, finds himself in third, but he's getting hunted by Ryan Bender at the moment. We follow Thomas Sparks coming out of the bus stop through the Napa Auto Parts dropper into the bottom end of the racetrack from Bailey Mickler. Three tenths of a second between them as they chase each other around onto the RGR main straight. These are your leaders as we come close to the halfway point here in KZ2. This is their fourth heat race, heat four even, we'll call it, as we split the field after their combined points from the first three heats of racing. An issue for the 67 of Marty Dax sees him coming into the pit lane and Marty Dax races pretty much over here. But check it out, fastest on track, Ryan Bender at the moment, chasing down Corey Minton as they go for third and fourth. We follow that battle now, Minton and Bender. Bender just put in a 33.04. Young Ryan is on an absolute charge for the 59 Birrell Art chassis, chasing the sister cart, the 13 of Corey Minton and the Ricardo cart both manufactured under the Birrell Art House as they head down towards the Afri bus stop. Bender that time by brought the gap down to 2.6 tenths of a second, but they were pretty much even lap times. 33.27 to a 33.25 between Minton and Bender as they come up to the back of Jessica Howe to put a lap on her. Tommy Sparks and Bailey Mickler have both snuck through. Tommy Sparks in the OJG Engineering, number 21, Charles Leclerc cart leading the way from the Amani Bar, number 97, Birrell Art chassis of Bailey Mickler. Then we go back to the Ricardo and the Birrell. Down the bottom of the hill. Now Bender putting a lot of pressure on the back of Minton, getting closer and closer. Last time by, he was about half a tenth faster. It's less than two tenths of a second, the gap, and they came across the line. As we are gonna go 10 laps to go, this time by 10 to go for Tommy Sparks. 
Minton and Bender chasing each other up the RGR straight into the patient Sandland sweeper. Jessica Howe going a lap down to Nathan Davis. And Bailey Gretsch, Damo Papa Sergio is absolutely falling back through that field. He's back to P8. Minton and Bender still going at it, having a discussion about third. Last time across, he gave away a tiny bit of time. It looks like Minter has pulled out a bit more of a gap as they bring it around onto the RGR main straightaway. This is the closest battle towards the front we have. A little bite of the gravel on the edge of the racetrack as they come up the straight. They are closing the gap to the leaders. Something fierce as well. 33.08 for Corey Minton. Setting the track alight with eight and a half laps left to go. Just over seven laps left to go for Thomas Sparks, who wants to add another heat win to his name. That'll be two from the four, he's two from the three he's contested in the heat so far. Should be enough to put him up the pointy end of the grid for the 28 lap final. But Bailey Mickler is quickly falling back into the clutches of Corey Minton and Ryan Bender. Bender with another hot lap of the race that time by. 33.037 from Ryan Bender. Scorching pace here as we put a good 60 or 70 laps on the MG Green Yellow SM Prime tyres so far. We are some huge margins slower than the qualifying time though. So on Friday, set on Friday afternoon, a 32.3 was the fastest qualifying time from Bailey Mickler. And the fastest lap of the race so far, 33.03. So it's some six and a half to seven tenths of a second slower than the qualifying time set. But Mikla has been dispatched quickly by Minton and Bender. So Minton up to second, Mikla third. Last time at the lap, now Bender goes to third. As Tommy Sparks leads the way. We'll follow Minton. Second place on the road as he comes up the RGR main straightaway. Five laps to go. as we start to break into the afternoon session for the finals here at the 2020 WA Kart Championship brought to you by Patient Sandland here at RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Kart Club. Live streaming brought to you by Four Style Media and our broadcast partners, The Kart Centre, Napa Auto Parts and Afri Equipment. Also a big shout out to other sponsors here, Digital Quarter, Vulcan Panel and Paint, Super Cool Air Conditioning, Mechanical Piping Services and Central's Earth Moving as we follow Ryan Bender in the 59 Burrell Art chassis with the Vortex power pushing him around the racetrack currently third on the road seven and a half tenths of a second behind Corey Minton on track lapping almost evenly with Minton on time as he brings it out just over three laps left to go for your leader Thomas Sparks who's doing it in style controlling the pace with a two second advantage over Minton Tommy Sparks up the hill, the number 21 Charles Leclerc cart. Another cart manufactured by the Birrell Art Manufacturing House. So when you think, when you take a look at it, the top four carts all manufactured in the Birrell Art chassis manufacturing house. The next one back is the BRM chassis in P5 of Alex Rollo, the 62 machine. Brought to you by Land Surveys and BRM Carts Australia. And Tommy Sparks brings the Charles Leclerc. I believe this is one of the only ones in Australia of the CL carts onto the RGR main straightaway. Two to go for Tommy Sparks, the number 21 entry. For OJG Engineering, leading out, he holds 2.1 seconds over Corey Minton back there in second. Now this battle's starting to come to us between Bender and Mikla. They dispatched him for just a moment, but the last couple of laps, Mikla is playing the tires game. He just put in a 33.09. So he's been playing a smart one. He knows he's got enough points to put him up the pointy end of the grid, but does he have enough tyres to make it happen in a 28-lapper? Last lap board is out now. One to go for Thomas Sparks. 
leading the way into the patient Sandland Sweeper for his final tour of the RGR Road Haulage Raceway here at Midwest Car Club. He leads the 21 down towards the bus stop for the final time. Through the bottom end of the racetrack, Tommy Sparks bringing his way around into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl he goes and out onto the RGR main straightaway. Thomas Sparks takes a win here in the even heat. Pre-final for KZ2. Corey Minton home for second. Ryan Bender in third. Bailey Mickler fourth. Alex Rollo goes P5. Nathan Davis goes P6 from Bailey Gretsch in the seven. Damo Papa Sergio makes it P8. Daniel Sugar P9. And bringing it around, Jaden Pierce will finish out your top ten here ahead of Callum Williamson and Jessica Howe, your 12 finishing drivers. And that wraps up KZ2 before we get into their 28 lap final. Will be the last race of the weekend here at the Patient Sandland 2020 WA Kart Championship here at RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. Don't go anywhere folks, it's the business end of the weekend coming up very soon here. Finals time to decide who will be your 2020 Western Australian State Champions up on the hill here in Geraldton. We'll be right back in just a few moments to bring you all the action on Four Star Media.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the final dance here. Time to do it for the big one. 28 laps on the board. KA3 Heavy is the first class out for their 28 lap finals. The winner here will be crowned this year's West Australian state champion and will take home the blue plate. Defending state champ Aaron Chivers has put in the hard yards to put himself in prime position here. He starts on P1. Lachlan Harvey, P2 from Jake Maisie on three. Then Glenn McDougall, Craig Ryan, Rodney Jamison, Nathan Jack, David Mackey, John Orish, Trevor Beck, Jake Salomon, and Jason Allen, your starting grid for KA3 Heavy, presented by the Stardy Group of Companies as we get set to go. A trio of wins and the fastest qualifier award. There's just one more tick that Aaron Chivers needs next to his name to go back to back in this class today. As we get set, the lights go out. We are racing the first of the state championship finals are underway. Lachlan Harvey trying to do it the hard way all the way around the outside. He gets it done at turn one. Jake Maisie up the inside of Chivers. They're both going backwards through the field. This is a big golden laden gift to Lachlan Harvey right now. Just handing the blue plate already after that one. Look at the gap he's got over the rest of the field. It's the 27 of McDougal. Back there in second as they head into the bottom end of the racetrack. You didn't think a final was going to go all to plan, did you? Craig Ryan with a busted rib finds himself in third. Has he been foxing all weekend? We'll find out over the next 27 laps. The 62 of Nathan Jack back there in P4. Now Chivers up the inside of Jake Maisie. Sure, we have a couple of choice words to say about that one after the race. If he remembers what happens over the next 27 laps, they fire around the outside of Nathan Jack through the cart center switchbacks. Chivers is on a mission. This guy is going to be on an absolute tear. He needs to catch Lachlan Harvey before it's too late. Coming up behind Craig Ryan, trying to put some pressure on early. Through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl they go. Harvey is cleared out already. 1.5 seconds. He's bashing wheels with her. Craig Ryan, he wants to get past him. Ryan is not happy about it either because that bogged down all his momentum. Jake Maisie has a crack at Nathan Jack here. The 62 entry. They're going to go side by side, bashing wheels on the way down to turn two. So Aaron Chivers now up into third. Going to try and chase down Glenn McDougall as they head down the hill. Watching this battle pack though for fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh at the moment. Jake Salamon in there as well. We go back and follow him along as they come out of the bus stop and the Napa Auto Parts dropper. Through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl they go. There's Lachlan Harvey at the top of your screen. Look at the gap. It's nothing but daylight. Back to McDougal. But here comes Shivers. Up the inside. Now Aaron Shivers. It's taken him a couple of laps. He's back to second. But is the damage already done? Three seconds is the gap from Harvey to Shivers. And now the long and daunting task. Aaron Shivers needs to be on his mark every corner, every lap to chase down Lachlan Harvey. If he has even a chance of hoisting the blue plate above his head once again this afternoon. At the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. It's the Patient Sandland 2020 WA Car Championship. Chivers, McDougal, Jack and Maisie rounding out your top five. Craig Ryan in six from Salomon in seven. Then Orish, Jamison, Mackey, Beck. Jason Allen didn't take it out on the track here. Yes, he did for their 12th run up for the final dance of the weekend. But it's Lachlan Harvey, the number 76. Arrow chassis out front from the youngster from the Hurricane Go-Kart Club. Something worth mentioning as well. A good stack up of contention for who's going to take out the Rose Bowl this weekend. Oh, Jake Maisie off the road. Maisie is in the dirt and it's done. Maisie's race. All but over as he rejoins the racetrack, but he's going to be so far behind the rest of the field, he has no chance of making his way back through them. So Maisie going to go out of contention, almost all the way back behind Jason Allen in 12th place on track. We find Aaron Chippers trying to close the gap. It sits at 3.3 seconds. Harvey's quicker that lap by four hundredths of a second. I'm going to put my bet on it already. Harvey might have this one sealed and signed and almost delivered with another 22 laps to go. Lachlan Harvey down the line, new hot lap of the race, 36.2. Aaron Chivers betters at 36.2, but only by six hundredths of a second.
20 laps to go last time by for Lachlan Harvey. Leading the way here is out three seconds clear. Now here's where Aaron Chivers can do the damage. A 36-6 from Harvey. 36-3-9 from Chivers. Brings the gap down to 3.01 seconds. On track. So we've got a rear bumper coming off the back of the 18 of Rodney Jamieson, unfortunately. But here's where it starts to come into play and get interesting. With 18 and a bit laps left to go, Chivers is closing the gap to Harvey. 2.8 seconds between them last time across the line. 2.7 this time across. At a tenth of a second lap, it would take 27 laps to get there. Aaron Chivers only has 18 to make an impact on this race with Lachlan Harvey. It's going to be an agonizing 18 laps of racing, trying to close the gap to the back of Lachlan Harvey. Equally so for young Lachlan out front. Lachlan Harvey coming up on some lap traffic as they come onto the RGR main straightaway. Jason Allen jumping out of the way here of Lachlan Harvey. As we continue to keep an eye on the gap, 2.4 seconds. Aaron Chivers needs another 10 to 15 laps just like that to put the pressure on Lachlan Harvey at the pointy end. And then it's going to be down to Racecraft. Who wants it more this afternoon to hold the blue plate in their hands? Harvey leads away. Chivers, 2.4 seconds again. Then we go back to battle for third. Glenn McDougall and Craig Ryan fighting. That's sorry, Glenn McDougall and Nathan Jack fighting it out for third. This is a visual look at the gap here. First and second. 2.4 seconds last time, 2.3 this time. Chivers brings it down by only about 0.08 of a second across the line. And every lap that Chivers doesn't make a big impact on that gap is a lap that he gives away a little bit more of a chance to Lachlan Harvey to take the WA title from him here. As we follow Aaron Chivers into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Trying to bleed it out and trying to find every ounce of speed that he possibly can. Harvey across the line, 36-4. Chivers, 36-4-4. 2.3 seconds the gap, it doesn't change. We go back to the battle for third and fourth here. Glenn McDougall and Nathan Jack fighting it out. They're coming up onto the back of Jason Allen for a lap though. Allen's gonna jump aside here at turn two and let these two, maybe three and four through. So McDougall and Jack jumping out of the way for your race leaders, or at least holding third at the moment. But it's Lachlan Harvey down the line, stretching it out. From Aaron Chivers in second, they come through. The gap goes back out again. Harvey starting to make some inroads and continue to opening up that gap. It's 36-4 to a 36-5. Harvey to Chivers. Glenn McDougall got his hands full at the moment because he's got Nathan, Jack, Craig, Ryan, and Jay Salamone all stacking up behind him here. As they come onto the back straight, they run down towards the Afri bus stop. Well, we're across the halfway point. 13 laps to go for Lachlan Harvey as he came across the line. Aaron Chivers holding on to second. Glenn McDougall third. Nathan Jack in P4 from Craig Ryan in the five. Jake Salamon in six as we follow this battle. McDougall, Jack, Ryan and Salamon coming down in towards the bus stop. Craig Ryan doing a stellar job despite the fact that he has a busted rib and trying to hold on to the 34 car. Trying to put pressure on McDougall. But now he's under pressure from Salamon as they bring it around the bowl and out onto the RGR main straight away. Glenn McDougall leads this group for third outright on the road in the KA3 Senior Heavy Final. 
as they come down into the cart center switchbacks. And continue following this battle. Just keep another tab on the battle between Harvey and Chivers. 2.1 seconds is the gap with 11 laps left to go. Chivers needs to start pulling out two or three tenths of a second per lap. And the sense of urgency starts to descend because Shivers can see he'll be catching him. He can, can visually tell that, but it's not enough to close down that gap unless Lachlan Harvey's cart completely goes off in the last few laps. Harvey is going to continue clicking off these laps here as we're coming down to the final 10 for our KO3 Senior Heavy Final. Just over eight laps left to go here for Lachlan Harvey. The gap still sets at 2.1 seconds for Harvey over Chivers. As we watch the battle between McDougall and Nathan Jack as they come down into the bus stop. Looking from the top of the hill and down behind them is Ryan and Salomon fighting over five and six. They continue to fight it out. Craig Ryan doing a stellar job of holding onto this cart with a busted rib as your race leader, Lachlan Harvey. This is what Aaron Chivers would want because he was just momentarily caught behind Jason Allen trying to put a lap on him as they go down towards the bus stop as we follow along with Craig Lyon and Jake Salamon heading down through turns two and through the cart center switchbacks they go. Less than eight laps to go now as we follow Ryan and Salamon down to the bus stop. Just ahead of them is the battle for third between Glenn McDougall and Nathan Jack as they come into the bottom. But Lachlan Harvey comes on across the line. Aaron Chivers behind him. The gap got shortened down to 1.6 seconds on the track. Seven laps to go for your race leaders. Lachlan Harvey out front. As we follow along with Lachlan Harvey for a moment as he makes his way out of the bus stop and the dropper towards the bottom end of the racetrack through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. 1.6 seconds the gap he has over Aaron Chivers. As they bring it onto the main straightaway. Six to go for Harvey this time by Chivers. Starting to get close enough. He really wants to do something about it. He'll be praying that lap traffic would get involved and bring Lachlan Harvey to him. And it's about the time where Harvey's mind will start to really race. As he can see the lap traffic a little bit further up the road. He's gonna catch them by the end. He can't sit back and wait. But if he catches them and gets caught up, could spell disaster for the chance of holding a blue plate this afternoon. It's KA3 Senior Heavy, brought to you by the Stanley Group of Companies. As Harvey brings it out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl onto the RGR Main Straight. Here's the lap traffic here, the 23. The Lachlan Harvey is catching a, a considerable rate as Harvey puts in a personal best lap of the race of 36.283. Last time across for Lachlan Harvey. He's got plenty of pace on board. The number 76 machine all the way to the end here as we've done 23 laps of racing into the final five for the 2020 WA Championship final for KA3 Senior Heavy. Harvey and Chivers, 1.6 seconds to gap now. Out of the ball once again. He's going to start to make his way inside the final five. There's Aaron Chivers. The number four, Epoxy Grout Works, Flat Out Carts, ARC Racing Entry. 1.5, Aaron Chivers, new hot lap of the race, 36.1. It's not enough. Chivers needs more. He needs Harvey to start slowing up. Last time across Harvey, a personal best lap of the race, a 36.223. These two leaving nothing on the table. 
Chivers trying to do his best to close the gap. It dipped under 1.6. It's the closest they've been all race long. With the exception of the start when the lights went out. This is where it can start to get nervous for Lachlan Harvey. He's starting to catch lap traffic. Three to go. Aaron Chivers back there watching it happen. It stays at 1.5. Harvey with another personal best lap of the race at 36.208. Chivers 36.181. Harvey's behind some traffic though. Coming onto the back straight. The 23 of David Mackey. Are holding the way. Mackey looks across and sees Harvey there. So no effort to slow him down, which is great to see. And good sportsmanship. And Aaron Chivers will be kicking himself, hoping that could have been his last opportunity to close this gap. Just disappearing right in front of him. As they come onto the RGR main straightaway, two to go for Lachlan Harvey. Aaron Chivers trying to chase him down. It's shortened down to 1.2 seconds. Will Lachlan Harvey catch up to the back of the 98 of John Orish before they get to the end of this one? With one and a half laps left to go, Harvey down the back straight. Chivers still has to clear the 23 of David Mackey and Chivers isn't close enough down at the bus stop to get it done. So this is where Chivers is actually gonna get held up here. And Lachlan Harvey really caught a lucky break in the bottom end. Last lap board, out to collect Lachlan Harvey this time by. The gap goes back out to 1.4 as Aaron Chivers will have to reside to the fact that he's not gonna catch Lachlan Harvey. On this final 700 metres of racing, Lachlan Harvey has been there all weekend long, clicking off the good races, clicking off clean ones, keeping himself out of trouble. He finds himself catching a lucky break on the opening lap, and 28 laps later, he brings it around the bottom end of the racetrack for the final time, right behind some lap traffic as a chequered flag is out and awaiting his arrival. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, at Midwest Car Club, Lachlan Harvey is your 2020 WA champion, the KA3 Senior Heavy, defending an outgoing state champion, Aaron Chivers home in second. And bringing it around onto the main straightaway, a long way further behind, Glenn McDougall comes across the line to pick up third. Harvey makes it. A blue plate for the 76 this afternoon here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Kart Club at the Patient Sandland 2020 WA Sprint Kart Championships. The Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel.
KA3 senior medium. Coming on out for their 28 lap final. And it's Jason Betts, who's one man to watch out of this one. He starts on the second row of the grid, trying to become a blue plate holder one more time. And I'm just trying to quickly cast my eye over previous year's results. He won last year in Esperance. He won the year before in Bunbury. I think he actually won it in Albany too and made it three in a row. So Jason Betts trying to make it four years in a row as your KA3 Senior Medium West Australian State Champ. The class presented by OJG Engineering, big supporters of West Australian karting and involved in the scene. But Zach Needham wants to get a hold of his first blue plate alongside Brandon Duncombe on the front row. It's Betts and not on the second row of the grid with Davis and Stones on row three. As we watch the lights to go out and send us racing, we are go for 28 laps on the board. Needham leads the field down to turn one. Duncombe gets shuffled out to the outside. He drops back to P4 behind Royce Knott. And Jason Betts goes to second. Big move for the blue plate, number 77, Cosmic Car. And Zach Needham out front, trying to get it done early here. It's a 28 lap, scorchingly long race, and it's gonna hurt. As Betts trying to close down the gap already, trying to put some pressure on Royce Knight into the three spot. As they come out of the bowl for the first time, onto the RGR Haulage main straight. Needham, Betts, Knott, Duncombe, Davis. Duncombe up the inside of Royce Knott, trying to get the move done. Gets it done for the 29 machine. Coming down from Caratha. Zach Needham and Jason Betts out front. The Arrow X1E 28. Cart force presented cart. Leading the way from the 77 Cosmic of Jason Betts. For Sykes Transport. And the Cosmic Cart in second as they go down into the bottom end of the racetrack. Betts on the inside. Needham's wide. He's going to have to be very defensive. But here comes Duncombe. Trying to put the pressure on as they come out onto the RGR straight. Betts on Needham's rear bumper, pushing him up the hill. Needham gives a little bit of instruction. A flick forward of the finger to say to Betts, let's get away, let's go. They're carrying Duncombe with him. Not is right there as well. The same for Davis. At the back of that pack, it's a five cart pack down the hill towards the bus stop. Needham, Betts, Duncombe, Not, and Davis fighting it out as they come out of the bus stop. Over the Napa parts dropper to the bottom end of the racetrack through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Needham now builds himself a cart length or so buffer. Just that little moment running wide through the left-hander a lap ago cost him big time. He's now buckled in and pulled out a cart length or two over Betts, who's getting pushed along by Duncombe. Brennan Duncombe ain't done with this one yet. It isn't over till the checkered flag flies. Now Knott and Davis going to fight it out for the remaining spots inside the top five. Behind them, Troy Stones, Clark and Riley Smith in six and seven. Marty King in eight, Taylor Campbell nine, Toby Hobson and Evan McCulloch ten and eleven. Unfortunately, we lost Mason Patience in the nine entry before the race even got underway. Mason's car stuck in this sand trap on this side of the main straight. You can see on camera there. As we take a peek at Matt Davis trying to close down the gap and put some pressure on Royce not for fourth at the moment. The kart centre, Formula K kart for Davis, trying to close down to the number 30 flat out cast arrow entry of Royce Knott. In the battle for fourth, as Brandon Duncombe has been dropped off a little bit from Needham and Betts. As they come on out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl, onto the RGR main straight away again. 23 to go for Zach Needham. Looking at this, the last time somebody other than Jason Betts won this class was back in 2016. Braden Bower, when it was still called Senior Heavy, but check it out. Zach Needham, Jason Betts, and Brandon Duncombe all glued together. Nathan Davis was second in that year as Betts to the inside and takes the lead in the Kart Center switchback. The defending champ trying to make it 
number four. Now Dunko up the inside. Gets the job done as well. Needham losing two spots in two corners. Royce Knott is on him as well. This could spell disaster for Zach Needham if he doesn't get the momentum going again. Now Royce Knott throws one up the inside. Now Matt Davis trying to shape him up. Can't get close enough as they come onto the RGR main straight. Jason Betts though. It's go time to make it number four in a row for the 77 Cosmic Cart. Brandon Duncombe is the first one in line to try and topple him here. Up the hill once again, 20 laps to go. Still a long, long way left in this race. Zach Needham just reset the fast lap of the race. A 35.1 from Needham as he continues to try and charge forward. He's got a bit of a gap to try and make up to Betts and Duncombe. A stellar effort from Duncombe so far this weekend though. A couple of second place finishes in his heat races earlier through the weekend for the Alloy Steel and Welding Superstore and Prize Pets number 29. Arrow X5 entry for the youngster from Carafa. Duncombe sits only three tenths of a second off the back of the man trying to make it four years in a row with the blue plate on the 77 Cosmic Machine. Leading the way, it was only 1.5 tenths. Duncombe is getting closer here. Needham is the fastest of the top three. Betts has started to go off that lap. He was down to a 35-3. But Duncombe really needs to pull one out, fire it up the inside and slow him down. That's what Needham would be wanting right now. He'd be willing Duncombe forward, trying to push him up into the back of Betts. As they charge their A, out of the bowl. Knott and Davis still fourth and fifth on the road, separated by a bit of time at the moment. They're tucking in just behind this battle. Brandon Duncombe has a big look up the inside. Betts lets him go. Slots back in, but he's on the wrong side of the racetrack. He's going to have to go wide and taper in, try and challenge. Through the cart centre switchbacks. Now Brandon Duncombe leads the way. Onto the back straight. Duncombe is defensive. Betts tap of the brake and locks it up into the bus stop. Here's Zach Needham. They're slowing each other down. Here comes Royce Knott and Matt Davis. It's going to be a five-cart fight. As they head down into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. How's your heart rate now, Amy? As they charge up onto the RGR main straight away. Brandon Duncombe leads the way. Betts in the second. Needham in third. In the cart centre switchbacks, Royce Knott and Matt Davis trying their best to tack onto the back of this battle and be there when the cards come tumbling come come there, tumbling down. I'll get it right. Dunko out of the Napa auto parts dropper. In the Great Southern Fuels Bowl, he's trying to build a buffer. 2.2 tenths of a second over bets for the multi-time WA champ. Needham. Trying to be there, but Royce Knight is reeling these leaders in at the moment. Davis has been dropped off the back of that group just a little bit for now. But Duncombe, he knows when it's time to put the pedal to the metal, and it's go time for the man from Carafa. Down into the Aftry bus stop. Once again, we're coming up to the halfway point very soon here in KA3 Medium, presented by OJG Engineering. Up the hill. Duncombe, 35-1. Betts, 35-2. Needham, 35-3. Knott and Davis, 35-2, 35-3. They're starting to open up little gaps here and there across our top five. And Brandon Duncombe is starting to pull away and do some mental damage in the minds of Jason Betts and Zach Needham. Putting the herd on him here through the middle portion of the race. Who's got the long run set up on board, though? Who's got the best cart package on lap 28? We'll find out as we are about to cross the halfway point. Brandon Duncombe up the hill. Halfway home, folks. 14 down, 14 to go for KA3 Senior Medium. Jason Betts, new hot lap of the race. A 35-1 from Betts that time across. Betts continuing to find the speed. The gap sits at 3.3 tenths of a second from Duncombe back to Betts. Knott and Davis just hanging out there, fourth and fifth behind this battle pack. They've opened up some more as they come out of the bowl, but Jason Betts settling into a groove, being patient. 
There's reasons why he's three-time West Australian state champ and why he's in contention to make it number four in a row. Through the cart centre switchback. Betts has a little look over his shoulder because Zach Needham just reset the hot lap of the race at 35.08. Brandon Duncombe is out front from this group. He's got half a second over Needham. But lapping in a 35-1 in pure, clean, open air. It would only take five laps for Needham to catch the back of Duncombe at that pace. But it's back and forth, ebbs and flows inside the top three. Royce Knott still hanging in there. Matt Davis has really dropped off the back of this group. But here comes Needham. Trying to put some pressure on Betts as they come out of the cart center switchbacks. Now the Apri bus stop into the Napa Auto Parts dropper. Through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl, they come. We're watching the battle for second and third. Betts and Needham. Betts with a little bit of a tune on the motor this time by up the hill. 11 to go for Duncombe though, still managing a three-tenth of a second advantage and just to throw a spanner in the works, the 12 of Marty King sets a new hot lap of the race, a 35.071, but Betts with a personal best, an 07.3 that time by, trying to chase down Duncombe, he's just at the tail end of the slipstream provided by Duncombe, as they come out of the bowl, this will make it the final 10. Zach Needham has dropped off the back of this battle. The top four really spreading out down the main straightaway now. That time by the gap comes just under three tenths of a second. It's almost an invisible margin between them, lap on lap, corner on corner. Duncombe and Betts leading the way, three tenths of a second in the gap. Betts now starting a monster and this lap is a lot quicker. Closing the gap up to within a cart length as they come out of the Great Southern Fields Bowl. They jump in the seat to get the momentum going. Betts is doing everything he can. Starting to scroll through the book of tricks because Duncombe puts down a 35-104. It was a bit slow in the opening part of the lap but the second and the back half of the lap puts Duncombe on his personal best lap of the race. 35-104 to a 1-1-3 from Betts. Needham with a 35-4 that lap. Completely dropping off the fight for the lead here. He's going to need divine intervention to get to the pointy end of this one now. Royce not back there in P4. Might fancy a chance at a run to third as we bring it onto the RGR main straightaway once again. Eight to go this time by. New hot lap from Zach Needham. 35.05 from Duncombe. 03 from Betts. 030 from Needham. Nothing in it on the lap times. Betts is going to need. A little bit extra to chase Duncombe. There's nothing in the lap times. He'll start be searching for every little inch of racetrack he can use to make up the time at the moment. And this is not going to plan for the three time back to back to back West Australian champion trying to make it number four. Brandon Duncombe has it under control at the moment. Quicker that lap at 35.095 from Duncombe, a 1.5 from Betts. A 1-3 from Royce Knott. Royce's personal best lap of the race. We'll check out the battle here between Zach Needham and Royce Knott. Three tenths of a second between them at the line last time across. Coming around to six laps to go very soon here. It just continually continues to tease us at the front. The gap tightens up and then it opens out again. Up the RGR straight. Duncombe and Betts 2.8 tenths of a second. Betts pulled eight hundredths out of him that time by. The smallest of margins. Just an inch or so. Betts is getting very close here. He might have to seize this opportunity to put the pressure on Duncombe before he lets Brandon build the momentum and open it up again. Out of the Napa Auto Parts dropper. The battle for third still going on behind him as well, but Knott has really dropped off the back of Needham to the tune of four and a half tenths of a second last time across the line. Up the hill. Five laps remaining for Dan, Brandon Duncombe and Jason Betts. And again, Betts was faster. Uh, 
Nobody except for Jason Betts has won this class since 2006 at Wanneroo International Cartway with Tiger Kart Club. And it was Braden Barra that year in what was originally called KA3 Senior Heavy became the mediums division in 2017 where Betts won in Albany. 2018, Betts won in Bunbury. Last year at Esperance Kart Club, Betts won there too. But at the moment, Brandon Duncombe from the northern part of our state and the great state of WA is leading the way with just a small handful of laps to go. Duncombe is opening up the gap. The battle is on for third and fourth. Royce Knott wants a piece of Zach Needham in the closing stages. Amy's going to have practical kittens up here in the tower. Knott is putting the pressure on Needham. The battle for third is on. Onto the RGR main straightaway. Three to go. New fast laps from Royce Knott at 35-1-2 a moment ago. He closed the gap up. It was a 34-3 that time. A 34-8 from Needham. Watching the battle down the hill into the bus stop. Keeping one eye on the lead, one eye on the battle for third. Two separate battle packs, not just launching it over the ski jump curve at the Napa Auto Parts dropper. He uses that to make up the momentum. He's on the inside of Needham, side by side for third. Oh, Needham in the dirt! Needham drops it off. Royce Knott takes third. Two to go. Royce Knott claims third. One and a half laps left to go at the pointy end. Brandon Duncombe has made every right move. It's been faultless for the last 20 something laps. But there's only one you got to lead and it's coming up around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl for the second to final time. Last lap board is out. One to go in our KA3 Senior Medium Final. Brandon Duncombe from Carafa leads away from the defending state champion, Jason Betts. In second, Royce Knott has been released clearly in the third as Matt Davis has gone to P4 now, putting Needham down to P5. But we follow Duncombe out of the bus stop for the final time. Betts has given up. He can't make it happen. And around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl for one final time. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Midwest Car Club, put your hands together. Brandon Duncombe is your KA3 Senior Medium WA Champion. Jason Betts home in second. Royce Knott puts it on the podium in third. Matt Davis in fourth. And Zach Needham rounds out your top five. Marty King home in P6. Troy Stones Clark in seven. Riley Smith with a run to the line in P8. Taylor Campbell in P9. And Toby Hobson is going to round out your top ten. The Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel.
Tag 125 Heavy getting well and truly stuck into it for their 28-lap feature. It's Bailey Mickler out front. Simon Grillim in the second in the number 12 KF cart. Ryan Barron in the third. Nathan Davis in the 36 Formula K cart, though, coming to life. New hot lap of the race from Davis. Now Grillim takes the hot lap. Shane McPherson takes the hot lap. The 92 Esprit cart all the way back there in P6 of Shane McPherson. Adrian Fogliani sitting P5 at the moment at the back of this battle pack. We follow along. It's Mikla, William, Barron, Davis, and Fogliani are top five. McPherson there in six. And a smaller field of tag one, two, five heavy we've seen in previous years. Last year's winner, Lewis Reed, outgoing champion, of course, as he contests the championship for the 125 light category here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway. But it's Bailey Mikla in the Armani Bar Parallel chassis. Leading the way from Simon Gwillem in the number 12 KF cart for Redline Oils. Ryan Barron in the third spot with the number four Perth Mobile Physiotherapy Arrow Chassis. Has had a second, third and a fourth in his heat race. He currently sits on the hot seat of the podium. Just ahead of Nathan Davis and Adrian Fogliani. Four and five on the road as we come down the line. Mickler leads, 23 laps to go for 125 Heady. Presented by RGR Road Haulage. A small field, but some quality racing so far. Super close across our top five. And even back to P6 of Shane McPherson. It's still Bailey Mickler leading the way from Simon Gwilym in second as we follow on with the Redline Oils KF cart number 12 of Gwilym in second. Just ahead of Ryan Barron there in the third spot. Fastest of the track last time across. There's a 34.489 from Nathan Davis was the fastest on that last lap. We'll check on him again this time by Mickler continues. Now Barron the fastest on the track with a new hot lap of the race, 34, 446 back there in P3 at the moment, trying to put some pressure on Gwilym for second. So come on to the back straight away, down towards the Afkari bus stop. Watching Mickler lead them over the affectionately named ski jump, the Napa parts dropper. We follow Barron in third with a new helmet painted this weekend. Try and pick up a bit more pace for the WA title. New paint, it's gotta be worth two tenths of a second, they say. As he puts some pressure on Gwilym through the patient Sandland sweeper. Now really putting the squeeze on him as Mickler has a couple of cart lengths of breathing space. Nathan Davis dropping off the back of that little battle. He's got Adrian Fogliani right behind him now. Always gotta watch someone like Fogliani. He'll put something up the inside as we head into the bottom of the racetrack, coming up to 18 laps remaining. We're almost 10 down here. Now 28 lap final for Tag 125 Heavy, brought to you by RGR Road Haulage. Mickler, Gwilym and Barron, one, two and three, into the patient Sandland Sweeper. And the run towards the cart center switchbacks. Now Gwilym has sensed the hurry up from Ryan Barron. He's starting to try and close down the gap to Mickler, it's down to 2.8 tenths of a second. Only less than half a second covers your top three at the moment, 4.6 tenths of a second. From Mickler over Gwilym to Barron, as they come onto the RGR Haulage main straight. Looks like Simon gives up a bit of a time to Bailey that time across. Hot lap set all the way through. Mickler, Gwilym, 
Davis, Fogliani and McPherson, all with new personal best slaps. The fastest of the lot was McPherson, a 34-3. He's the only one with clean air, with the exception of Mickler at the moment. Mickler having a drive with eyes in the back of his head to defend from Grillam and Barron at the moment as they come out of the dropper once again into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Bailey Mickler running double duties the same for Simon Grillam. Between 125s and KZs this weekend for the second round of the West Australian KZ Series presented by the Avalon Group. Mickler still holding on 3.3 tenths of a second. He opened up a little bit over Grillam with a new personal best. That time across 34-3. William with a 34-4, his personal best. Barron just slightly faster. Last time across, Davis with a 34-3-8. Now buying his way back into that fight, dropping off Adrian Fogliani there in the five spot. The hometown hero, Nathan Davis. Been racing since the early 2000s. Would have a career almost as long as Simon Williams is. And now he really closing up on the back of Ryan Barron, trying to put some pressure on. It's Mickler out of the cart center switchbacks onto the back straight. The number 97, Amani Bar, Parallel and Chassis leading the way. A mistake from Mickler puts Simon Grillam to the lead. And Mickler on the very defensive line up the hill. Nathan Davis is involved in this fight now. Barron is slow through the sweeper. Davis chooses not to fire one up the inside, but something just went awfully wrong there for Bailey Mickler. You take your eyes off it for just a second. Mickler just moving aside to let William through. There's a lot of respect between the guys at the pointy end here. They love to race hard, clean and fast as it's William leading the way. Mickler trying to tuck in and try and close the gap now. But it's the Red Line Oils, number 12 KF card out front by Simon Gwillem. Winner of Senior National Light Australian Championship in, oh geez, 2004 at Tiger Kart Club in Wanneroo. He's been doing it for many, many years. Knows how to get a go-kart around a racetrack and he leads away from Mickler. Barron and Davis just a little bit further behind in third and fourth at the moment as they come through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl once again. Across the halfway point, 12 laps to go now. Into the back half contention. And it's just a small battle at the front, four of them fighting it out, trying to find every little bit and squeeze every last ounce of pace you can. Davis with a very tight line into the second half of the cart center switchbacks, trying to put pressure on Barron down into the after bus stop. Mickler is closing the gap to the back of Gwilym once again as they head into the bottom half. Davis right up into the rear bumper of Ryan Barron on the entry to the Great Southern Fuels Bowl that time by up the RGR main straight away. Nothing between them on their lap speed at the moment. Lapping 34.6s, 34.5s between the top four. Total lap speed difference between them was between a 34.555 and a 34.61. So only six hundredths of a second difference on lap speed across your top four. Behind them, Adrian Fogliani in P5. Shane McPherson still sitting P6. As Nathan Davis holds the fast lap of the race of a 34.26 a few laps ago. But it's 10 to go. The final 10 here for Tag 125 Heady. Presented by RGR Road Haulage. Simon William leads the way. Bailey Mickler in second. Ryan Barron third. Nathan Davis, the hometown hero, right behind in P4 at the moment. Watching the battle as they come out of the bowl onto the RGR Haulage Main Straight. William and Mickler separated. By less than two tenths of a second across them. Barron, another two and a half further back. Another 2.8 back to Davis. Nothing in it at the point end. Mickler is mounting a charge, trying to put pressure on the back end of Gwilym as they come out of the dropper. This is where Mickler seems especially quick at the moment. 
through the bottom end of the racetrack. And this is right here where he lost the, the race lead. He'd be kicking himself if that's how it ends up and he can't challenge Gwilym once again because they're so even on pace at the front. Nothing between them on their lap speed through the patient Sandland sweeper once again. Gwilym a little bit wide on the entry. Mick left close right up to his rear bumper under brakes. Less than two tenths between them at the start finish line. We'll watch Ryan Barron down into the bus stop trying to find a way forward. But he's got a rear bumper full of Nathan Davis once again. Davis putting pressure on. He wants to get onto the podium this afternoon here for Tag 125 Heavy. And he's starting to run out of laps. We've completed 21 laps now. Seven to go for Simon Gwilliam out front. But the man affectionately known as Gumby leading the way over Mickler in the two spot. Barron just a little bit further behind. Davis has really dropped off the back of that pack now over the last half a lap or so. And Fogliani falling back into the clutches of McPherson in the fight for fifth on the road. Watching the body language of the cart. See Gwillem trying to hustle the cart out of the corner. A little bit of jump in the seat. Looks back to check on him. Mickler. Driving with blinkers on at the moment. Doesn't want to think about Barron, just wants to see forward. Under the back end of the Redline Oils, number 12 KF card of Simon Gwilym out front, and he grabs a curb coming out of the switchbacks. And that hurts his momentum down the back straight just a little bit. Every inch you have to give away to your competitor at this stage of the race is going to cost you big time. One mistake, and he's going to find Ryan Barron all over him. And his chances of challenging Gwilym. Look at the gap this time, by as they come up the RGR straight. Five to go now. Barron's going to go for one on Mickler soon here, surely. Starting to really size him up. As Mickler has given away a couple of bit of time. That's much better through the switchbacks this time by. Mickler gains a little bit on Gwilliam. And builds a couple of inches over Barron. Just those little mistakes that hurt your momentum. And these 125 open motors, especially in the heavy class where you carry an extra weight ballast. Or if you're just a bigger driver as they come onto the RGR straight. Four to go. And Simon Gwillem doing a brilliant job of controlling the pace out front right now. Every lap he just peeks over his shoulder and checks on him. It's really this first portion of the lap where Mickler can make an impact at the moment and put some pressure on. As they come out of the Napa auto parts dropper, Gwillem, Mickler, Barron, Davis just a little bit further behind. 25 laps completed here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway in our Tag 125 Heavy Final. And Mickler is pushing Gwilym out of Turn 1 now. The Patience Sandland Sweeper. Barron is right there as well. It's starting to bunch up. They're taking the fight to him. Down the back straight they go. Just two and a half laps left in it for the final. To decide who's going to be West Australian State Champion. Taking over from Lewis Reed in 2019 down at Esperance Car Club in the battle he had with Lachlan Miller. Two to go this time by. It looked awfully close. Barron has a little peek up the inside. He just needs that little bit extra speed up the hill to make a move on Mickler, who's just buried under the rear bumper of Gwilym but can't get close enough. It's going to come down to this final lap. You can sense it coming. And at what point does Simon Gwilym decide he has to drive a defensive race? through the bowl for the second last time. Coming up to a little bit of lap traffic. Not sure if they'll reach him soon. Last lap board is out. One to go. Simon Gwillem is 700 metres from home in the blue plate for the number 12 Redline Oils KF cart. The first man in line to stop him is Bailey Mickler, but he's not close enough at the turn of the final lap. Ryan Barron is close to Mickler, but still not close enough to make a move happen. There's only one more passing opportunity to go and they're nowhere near close enough. Simon Gwillem has driven a very smart race. 28 laps and months of preparation to get here. The final corner though. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Simon Gwillem is your 125 heavy West Australian champion. From Bailey Mickler home in second, Ryan Barron home in third, Nathan Davis in fourth and Adrian Fogliani running out your top five.
Tag 125 restricted. Masters getting set to go here. Defending West Australian champ Simon Minton is going to lead the field from pole as the lights go out and send us racing. 28 laps on the board. Mark Redman wants to sneak through here. Brad Stewart gets a much better start out of this one. Bryce Watson slots back into P4. So Minton leading the way down the hill on the opening lap from Mark Redman in two. Bradley Stewart, P3, Bryce Watson, P4, Johnny Ray, P5. From Paul Hughes, it looks like. We'll pick them up as they all come along. It's Minton leading the way on lap one. Watson and Johnny Ray going bumper to bumper up the hill on the opening lap here, but it's Minton, Redmond, Stewart, Watson, Ray, Hughes, Shaw, Tenbrooker, Hill, Freeman in P10 from Simon May and Vaughan Elliott. And Johnny Ray setting his sights forward here, wants to put pressure on Brad Stewart. As they come down to the bus stop once again, Stewart and Ray going at it in the fight for third. Sorry, fight for third. Yeah, fight for third. Watson has been dropped off here. Johnny Ray dispatched him at the beginning of the previous lap. Now Brad Stewart moves across and just covers off a little bit from Johnny Ray. Switch into the 30 mil chassis in the number two Cosmic cart this weekend. Try and get the cart to drive off the corners a bit better. It's working for him though, because he resets a fast lap at the beginning of the race of 35.818 for Johnny Ray into P4 and putting pressure on Brad Stewart. But it's Minton out front, three tenths of a second clear of Mark Redman. Trying to build that buffer and take the blue plate home once again for Simon Minton in the B-Sport and Simon Minton Motorsport Ricardo cart. Defending West Australian state champ. First five laps in the book here for 125 Restricted Masters, brought to you by CJD Equipment and TRP Truck and Trailer Parts. Simon Minton leads the way from Mark Redman, who finished second in this class back in 2018 at Bunbury City Car Club. Last time he contested the class. Minton won it last year ahead of Daniel Peniza and Graham Wesley in 125 Restricted Masters. We follow Bryce Watson at the moment, P5 on the road, just trying to chase Johnny Ray. He's putting pressure on Brad Stewart as they come up onto the RGR main straight. 22 laps to go. Simon Minton out to a half second advantage. No, now over Redmond. Four Rotaxes out front. The first of the X30 power plants of Watson in the 65 KF cart. They make their way out of the bus stop corner at the bottom of the hill. A long way left to go, but the gaps starting to open up across your top five and six drivers. See who's got pace towards the end of this 28 lap final. For 125 Restricted Masters, brought to you by CJD Equipment and TRP Truck and Trailer Parts.
Whoa, we got big problems down at the bottom of the hill. Mark Redman had something go wrong there and he started with his hand up and put his hand up and moved to the inside and cleaned up Brad Stewart in the process. Redman has trouble on the number 11 epoxy groundworks entry. Something's gone wrong for him. And in the process, he cleaned up Brad Stewart. That puts Brad into the third spot now. Johnny Ray goes to second. And that really spreads out your top three. Big problems for Mark Redman. While the 125 restricted Masters race continues to develop, because Brad Stewart now has issues and he's dropping back through the order, really struggling with the 15 machine. Something's gone wrong for him as well. Simon Minton stretching the legs now. 2.7 seconds to get back to John Ray, and it's Bryce Watson in the KF cart who holds on to third place. Johnny Ray back in second. The 30 mil chassis doing work for him this weekend. As we're crossing the halfway point, 14 laps down, 14 to go. But Watson back to P3, Paul Hughes in P4, John Hill in P5. So we've lost Mark Redman, we lost Andrew Freeman. And Brad Stewart has had huge issues that's dropped down through the order. He's all the, gone all the way back to P6 as a result of something going on with the number 15 machine. But no such issue here for Simon Minton on his way to going back to back. West Australian blue plates for the number 21 Ricardo Kart. Last year he took the win behind the wheel of an Arrow X5 chassis. This year he does it behind an, a Ricardo chassis leading the way. 2.6 seconds the gap into the second half of the race now with 12 and a half laps left to go. Inside the final 10 laps of racing, last time across for Simon Minton. 
as he brings it down to the bottom of the racetrack. He leads out by 3.3 seconds over John Ray on a Sunday afternoon cruise in our tag 125 Restricted Masters final. Brought to you by CJD Equipment and TRP Truck and Trailer Parts. We follow on this battle at the moment. John Ray and, sorry, John Hill and Bradley Stewart fighting it out for fifth and sixth on track. As Paul Hughes has found himself into third now, dropping off Bryce Watson to P4. Simon Minton in the 21 Ricardo cart. Out of the AFCRI equipment bus stop. And down into the bottom end of the racetrack. Through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. And the move happened for fifth. Brad Stewart dispatches John Hill there. In the number six FA car dropping him down a spot. But here comes Minton. Eight to go in the number 21 Ricardo cart. Looking to go back to back West Australian state champs here for the Rotax powered Ricardo chassis. The fastest qualifier in yesterday morning session. A trio of heat wins. And stretching it out with eight and a bit, or sorry, seven and a bit laps to go. As we pick up with John Ray, the number two Cosmic Cart with Rotax Power. Doing it in style in second. Unchallenged at the moment for third. We have, unfortunately, we lost Mark Redman out of contention in here. We had trouble for Bradley Stewart. We had big problems in his run as well. Something went wrong for the cart, and then he rejoined and got going. But he finds himself in P5, trying to chase down Bryce Watson by a margin of about five or six seconds. As Stewart comes up the RGR main straightaway, the gap sits at 6.1 seconds from Watson back to Stewart. With Simon Minton continuing to set the fast laps. A 35-4 for Minton. 3.9 seconds clear of John Ray back there in second. To so follow along with Johnny Ray in the number two Cosmic Cart. Around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl, we grab Minton off the end of the main straight. Six laps to go. Four laps to go. Now three for Simon Minton. Down the line, the 21 Ricardo cart. Absolutely G-O-R-N gone. Dominating the field this weekend here in 125 Restricted Masters. Brought to you by CJD Equipment and TRP Truck and Trailer Parts. John Ray has mounted a stellar drive in the final. After running only fourth and fifth in the heat race, has to run second here with a couple of laps left to go. Paul Hughes back there in the third spot, the number 47 entry. Has had a quiet weekend so far for the Tintacar Northern Energy Course chassis as Minton comes up the hill. Two to go this time across for Minton. As Johnny Ray comes through, we follow Minton through the cart center switchbacks before he makes his way onto the back straight. And down the hill towards the AFCRI equipment bus stop. John Ray on his way towards the bus stop now. Minton out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl for the second and final time. Last lap board is out. One to go for Simon Minton. On the way to making it 
back-to-back -back West Australian state champions into the Cart Centre switchbacks. He's done it the easy way all weekend. Not a challenge to the 21 Ricardo Kart. It's looking clean, it's looking fresh. As good as the day it rolled off the factory floor as he brings it out of the Napa Auto Parts dropper into the bottom of the racetrack for the final time here. Through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl, ladies and gentlemen, bring him around, put your hands together. Simon Minton makes it two years and two blue plates as he wins your 125 Restricted Masters. Johnny Ray up the RGR main straightaway, claims second. And nothing but daylight. Back to Paul Hughes, who rounds out your podium in third. Back to the racing action, KA3 Senior Light, proudly brought to you by Bunbury Cartworks, getting set to go, and it's been a thriller so far. Hugh Maguire will start on the pole spot, alongside Jake Sawyer on the front row. Luke Kanichi and Michael Jones will start third and fourth. Liam Kane and Eli Tunstall starting on the third row, with Holly Patrizzi and Brandon Dumcombe on row four. Tyler Smith and Aiden Passmore on row five, as we are set to go, 28 laps on the board. Maguire leading the field around the patient Sandland sweeper for the first time. That's Duncombe all the way to the back getting shuffled around at the start. Nietzsche goes through to P3, a couple more getting caught up. Tell me it's not a 46 of Eli Tunstall getting stuck at the start again. No, it looks like Tunstall further back in the field having a crack at it here. But it's Maguire leading the way from Sawyer, Nietzsche, Jones. And then it's Holly Patrizzi back there in P5. They bring it around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl for the first time. Hugh Maguire from Digital Quarter, the number 15 Tony Cart, leads the field for the opening lap of this long 28 lapper to decide who's going to be this year's West Australian champion. Jake Sawyer in the Sarah Driver Development Transcoat and JNA Cart tuning. Sarah Cart back there in second. Luke Kanichi, just 15 years old, into the third spot, the 55 Ricardo Cart. Has had his fair share of wins, knows what it's like to put it on the top step of the podium and host a blue plate above his head. Can he make it happen here? In the first of his final outings today, he runs 125 light, which will be out soon enough as well to put on a 28 lap heart stopper. But it's Maguire leading in the early stages from Sawyer, Nietzsche, Jones, Patrizzi. Then it's Tyler Smith back there in P6. Then Liam Kane in the number six KF cart P7. Ryan Nicholson in the eighth spot. Josh Healy P9, Aiden Passmore rounding out your top 10.
Early days, yeah. They had a frantic heat three earlier today that saw many carts not where you would expect them to be in a frantic opening lap as well. Issues for Tunstall. Unfortunately, his race campaign is done. And Eli, sad and dejected, walking through the ambulance gate, will take no further part in this 28 lap feature. Big move there from the 41 of Passmore up the inside of Nicholson at the patient Sandland sweeper getting the job done to turn one. He now sets his sights forward to chase down Liam Kane, the number six KF cart further up the road. We follow this midfield battle at the moment. That's Passmore and Nicholson. Just getting stuck into it for a moment as Maguire flashes across your screen. Leading the way here. Fastest on track is Liam Kane to a 34-6, but he's all the way back in P7. Lots of work to do for Liam at the moment. Driving up onto the back of Tyler Smith in the 22 Tony Cart. Would love to push forward and catch Holly Patrizzi and Michael Jones running fifth and fourth on the road respectively. It's Maguire out front from Sawyer and Nietzsche at the moment. Hugh Maguire with the fast lap of the race that time by. 34-6 for Maguire as they bring it through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl once again. Long way left to go here. Maguire brings it onto the RGR straight. Five down, 23 to go. You've only got to nail that corner 23 more times, son, as Maguire starting to fall back into the clutch, as it seems, to Jake Sawyer. He's staying right in touch. Four tenths of a second between them. But just watch the 55 Ricardo cart of Luca Nietzsche. You'd be a fool not to put your money on him making an impact on this race. They'll get the cart set up just in the right window, let it come on in the middle, pay, the middle phase of the race. And see if he can lay down some heaters, but it's Maguire leading the early stages at the moment from Sawyer and Nietzsche. And Jones and Patrizzi, fourth and fifth on screen at the moment. They're having a good fight for it here. Michael Jones in the flat out carts and Simon Minton Motorsports arrow machine. And Holly Patrizzi. Running the all white, number 29 Ricardo Kart as they come out of the Napa Auto Parts dropper into the bottom end of the racetrack. The top three spreading themselves around, but this battle for fourth starting to come to life because Liam Kane is driving up onto the back of them as well. Last time he was marginally slower than Jones and Patrizzi, but he looks to be gaining on them. This time across, he puts in a 34-5 and closes down on them by three tenths of a second. Liam Kane starting to come to life here in the number six KF cart, rocking the orange and blue as they come out of the cart center switchbacks onto the back straight. And down the hill, this is a battle for fourth, fifth and sixth. Jones, Patrizzi and Kane out of the dropper. Patrizzi trying to close the gap up to Michael. Jonesy Jones in the 40 cart. The top three continuing to spread themselves out. We crown a new champion this weekend as the outgoing champion, Jason Betts, not contesting KA3 Light this weekend after winning this event last year at Esperance Car Club in the great southern region of Western Australia. No battles in the top three just yet. It's all about playing the lap times right now. Maguire, the quickest of the top three. Last time across, 34-4-7. 34-5 for Sawyer. 34-5-9 for Nietzsche. 34-7 for Jones and Patrizzi. A six for Liam Kane. The top three are just on another level of lap speed at the moment. But the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth is still on. We follow it along. Into the cart center switchbacks they go. Still rocking and rolling down the hill towards the Afri equipment bus stop. Someone's got a flinch in this battle for fourth at the moment. That's the only battle we have on track here. As we're working through the first 10 laps of this 28 lap final for KA3 Life, brought to you by Bunbury Cartworks.
Big move time from Liam Kane up the inside of Holly Patrizzi into the patient Sandland sweeper. We knew it was time for someone to flinch in the fight for fourth. And Kane, the quicker of those three drivers, finally makes his move on Patrizzi. That slowed them both down though. Opened up a gap for Michael Jones to breathe for a second. But Liam Kane and his relentless driving style will keep on pushing, try and close the gap here. Winner of last year's KA3 Junior category down at Esperance. Making a step to seniors for 2020. Trying to make an impact on this race, but Hugh Maguire just turning it on for the number 15 digital quarter, Tony Kahn. Peaking at the right point of the weekend here. Last time across, a five for Maguire, five nine for Sawyer, six three for Nietzsche. The slowest of the top three, but still faster than the three stacking up behind him here. The battle here for fourth and fifth, Michael Jones and Liam Kane. Jones, about twice Liam's age. Still showing he's got what it takes. He's a little bit defensive on the RGR main straight. But Kane, he's got the head down and he's hunting. Into the cart center switchbacks, out of the patient Sandland sweeper. Just a couple of feet between them. Through the left and right switchbacks, onto the back straight. Jones and Kane down towards the after bus stop. Ryan Nicholson is buying his way into this battle as well, closing up onto the back of Holly Patrizzi. That's in a fight for sixth and seventh. It's on to the bus stop. Liam Kane had a big look up the inside of Michael Jones there. Looked like he was going for it. Look at the momentum that he's lost, though. He's given away a lot of position. Back into the clutches of Holly Patrizzi, who's copying a large amount of pressure from Ryan Nicholson at the moment. As they come up the RGR main straightaway, we watch this bite. Four, five, six, and seven on the road. Your top three have opened right out around the track. And if you are using the MyLap Speed Hive app, take a look at the lap times. Luca Nietzsche, a personal best lap last time across, 34.491. He's a second off the race lead, but the leaders are one to two tenths of a second a lap slower last time across the line. But it looks like he's lost some ground this time through. Just as we say, he's starting to come good. Nicholson on the inside of Patrizzi. The battle for six. Nothing there. Patrizzi doesn't give him an inch more room than she has to. But Nicholson threads the needle. The 75 KF cut. Squeaks through to P6 here. Drops Patrizzi down to the seven spot. And now loses all that time to the battle for fourth between Jones and Kane. Fourth and fifth on the road into the bottom end of the racetrack. We're just inside the second half of race distance in the final here. 28 laps on the board for KA3 Senior Light, brought to you by Bunbury Cartworks. It's Hugh Maguire leading the way from Luke, Jake Sawyer in second, Luke Anichi in third. Eight tenths of a second. Covers Maguire to Sawyer. Another second back to Nietzsche. He's got a huge margin to make up, but Liam Kane tries one up the inside of Michael Jones. They're going to go side by side. Kane gets through to the four spot. That slows Jonesy down now, puts him down to P5. Nicholson standing right there to try and capitalize on Jonesy as they bring it around onto the RGR front straight. Nicholson's going to look to the inside to the sweeper. Jones covers him off. They're going to go wheel to wheel. Jones has to yield. Now Nicholson goes through to P5. Jones gets dropped off to P6 and now copying pressure from Patrizzi. Lap momentum is absolutely everything here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. Carrying momentum, absolutely everything. Now Patrizzi up the inside of Jones at the bottom of the hill. Up the inside and getting it done. Coming up to the final few laps here. We're inside the final 10. 
as we follow along with Hugh Maguire. Still hopping in the seat, still hustling. The number 15 digital quarter, Tony Cart along the track. Follow along your top three. Yeah. Which we pick up with Jake Sawyer at the moment. Starting to drop time from Hugh Maguire. He can't do anything about Hugh Maguire out front. follow along Luca Nietzsche still trying to put pressure on but still losing time from Sawyer and Maguire out front there's a second from first to second another second back to third of Nietzsche but Hugh Maguire leading the way down the RGR main straightaway five laps to go five left in it here for Maguire the number 15 digital quarter Tony Kart chassis coming up onto the back of some lap traffic now Cast your mind back 12 months ago. Maguire finished seventh in the final of KA3 Light down at Esperance Car Club. Coming up on the back of some lap traffic. Down the line though, four to go for Maguire. Looking to make amends for 12 months ago. He's starting to hold on to the gap. 1.1 seconds he has over Sawyer, this time by a 34-4. That time for Maguire. No one's going to touch the top three here. The next car back, Liam Kane P4, Ryan Nicholson P5. Sawyer is the only one who can make an impact on him, but with four, three and a half laps left to go, Maguire is in charge of this one. He had the fastest lap down in Esperance in the final as well, with a 31-second lap at the Esperance Car Club circuit, but couldn't convert it and make it happen here as he's stretches the legs up the RGR main straightaway. Three to go as he came across the line, still making inroads on lap traffic. It's processional at the front, but it'll be a joyous occasion for Hugh and his dad Max on the sidelines watching on here as Maguire stretches it out of the Napa Auto Parts dropper down into the bottom end of the hill. Just a couple of laps left in it through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Still hopping in the seat. Still doing everything right, hustling the car along. Coming up on some lap traffic. The 21 of Aston Nicholas going to be first in line for Maguire here. As he tries to close the gap. And working his way around. Maguire makes short work of Nicholas as we follow along with Jake Sawyer. Who checks back to see Nietzsche. Huge gaps in your top three. Nothing any of them can do about it. Just over a lap left to go. Maguire has been in fine form all week on. Just playing the game. A second in race one, a first in race two. Second again in race three. Last lap board is out. One to go for Maguire this time by. 700 metres from home and becoming the West Australian state champion. He got out front and it's clicked off the laps with perfect consistency. A second and a half the gap that he's built over Jake Sawyer over the last 28 laps. Luca Nietzsche, another 1.7 seconds further back, but unable, unable to do anything about it. Around the final corners, ladies and gentlemen, if you're here at Midwest Car Club, put your hands together. Hugh Maguire is your 2020 West Australian champion for KA3 Senior Light. Jake Sawyer home in second. Luca Nietzsche home in third. Liam Kane comes home for P4. Ryan Nicholson rounds out your top five in KA3 Senior Light, brought to you by Bunbury Cartworks.
Cadet Nine's taken to the track for their 28 lap feature race. This is going to be a long one for these youngsters. But it's Campbell Thompson who's showing the rest of the field a clean pair of heels so far this weekend for the 51 form of KF Kart. Fast qualifier yesterday morning. Three wins for the youngster so far. He starts alongside Chase Webb on the outside of the front row. William Kalik Chen and Lucas Kalik Chen start side by side on row two. Leroy Toon and Xana Edgington start next to each other on row three and backed up by Joel Blackman and the number 64 machine for Blackman, Fab Shack, Tito in Mechanical Country Rugs and Shack Electrical as they come on down. Lights go out. We are racing. 28 laps on the board for the Cadet Nines. Thompson leads the field through in turn one. Kalik Chen just feeding a bit of bumper work to the back of Chase Webb but he survives. Edgington Brothers, sorry, Kalik Chen Brothers going side by side. Oh, one of them off on the edge of the road, coming out of turn two. He goes to the back of the line here, but it's Campbell Thompson and Chase Webb leading the way. Last year's West Australian champion was James Webster out of the Cadet, Cadet Nines field. Taking no part in this one. Contesting in the Cadet 12s instead this weekend for the 2020 WA Championship. But it's Campbell Thompson who leads the field at the end of lap one. Just 27 left to go for Thompson. Chase Webb in second. Lucas Kalik Chen in third. Xana Edgington P4. Then Blackman, Leroy Toon and William Kalik Chen who's been running third all weekend long finds himself in P7 at the end of the opening lap. Still a long way yet to go here. Oh, the 97 of Lucas Kalik Chen just bouncing across the curb. On the exit of the Napa Auto Parts dropper, he's going to get caught up by Leroy Toon. As your leaders, Campbell and Chase stretching the legs on the RGR main straightaway. Chase Webb with some pace now. A 39.17 for Webb, 39.19 for Thompson. His youngster's going to go hammer and song, bumper to bumper for the next 25 laps of racing. The battle happening at the pointy end. Thompson and Webb going at it. As we follow along with this battle for the back end of the track here, Blackman, Leroy Toon, and William Kalik Chen fighting it out for five, six, and seven on the road. But at the front, it's Thompson leading out from Webb as they come out of the dropper into the bottom end of the racetrack. Follow the battle here, Leroy Toon, the meat and the sandwich between John Blackman and William Kalik Chen in these early stages of the race so far. But out front, Campbell Thompson and Chase Webb following each other around the track at the moment. Xander Edgington finds himself in third and we are 23 and a half laps left to go. Watching the battle at the front here. Thompson and Webb still going at it. They got real close a couple of moments ago. A young Chase seems to find a bit of pace every once in a while and go for a bit of a run. The Campbell opening it up to 1.4 tenths of a second at the line last time by. We'll see what the gap is here. As they're coming out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl onto the RGR main straightaway. Thompson and Webb. Webb's got a run on him. He's got the aerodynamic toe. He pulls out halfway up the straight. He gives away. He's going to still have a look at the inside, but Thompson. Covers him off to the inside line through the patient Sandland sweeper. There was once upon a time these two got hooked up on each other and were actually stuck on the opening lap of, I believe it was a carnival of carts final. 
down at Coburn International Cartway a couple of years ago, and they both come back. No, City Perth titles it was. They come back a little bit dejected and sad of themselves. These two kids now leading the way in Cadet Nines, fighting it out. Webb to the inside on the exit of the bowl. The first challenge to Campbell Thompson. All weekend long, Chase Webb peaking at the right time of the weekend. Thompson just says hello on the way into the sweeper. Chase Webb in the number 33 West Coast Civil flat out carts machine. Claims the race lead with 21 laps to go. Campbell Thompson back to second. Clicking off the laps, 20 still to go here. And I expect to see 20 laps of this. Chase Webb and Campbell Thompson going at it. Thompson trying to do the over and under through the cart center switchbacks. He's gonna to go to the inside and drag him down the hill to the bus stop. Thompson claims the lead back again. Young Campbell, now Chase Webb back to second. We'll get the opportunity just to reset and think about it. At the moment, they hold five and a half seconds over Xander Edgington back there in third. Only seven tenths of a second further back to Lucas Kalik Chen in the four spot. William has made his way back up to P4. Campbell Thompson leading the way here. Chase Webb in hot pursuit out of the cart center switchbacks. Has a look, a big look as well over his shoulder. A check on Chase. Down into the bottom of the racetrack, Thompson leading the way, Webb trying to stay in touch. We can't get close enough. The last lap or so, Thompson trying to use the opportunity to open up the legs and stretch out the gap, 3.7 tenths of a second. It was a 39.04 for Campbell Thompson that time across. A 39.2 for Chase Webb. We are 10 laps completed, 18 to go. And your Cadet 9 final, presented by Ceiling Works Australia. Twelve laps completed as we pick up the battle between Kalik Chen and Lucas. The two brothers fighting out here for fourth and fifth on the road. As they come down into the bottom of the racetrack, the Kalik Chen brothers fighting it out. Xander Engineer still holds on to third at the moment.
12 laps left to go. Thompson continues to lead Webb in the second spot. And they just passed Leroy Toon on track. 2.8 tenths of a second between them at the moment. Webb just trying to stay in touch. But Thompson continues to lead this one out. The 51 KF cart stretching the gap. And maintaining 5.5 tenths of a second the gap now. As we come into the back half of the race, we are 11 to go this time across for Campbell Thompson. Final 10 laps are here, Campbell Thompson. Still out front, last time across three tenths of a second, the gap is built over Chase Webb. Coming up the RGR main straight away. Nine to go now. As they click him off, he's starting to open up the gap, six tenths of a second. Back to Chase in second. Xander Edgington still a long way further back in the third spot. William Kalik Chen back there in P4, Lucas in five, Joel Blackman six, Leroy Toon rounding out your seven cart field. We can work our way through. Cadet nine proudly presented by Ceiling Works Australia. Six laps to go for Campbell Thompson down the line. 1.5 seconds he's pulled out over Chase Webb now. It was nice and close early on. Webb leading a part of this race for just a little bit. But Thompson now getting out in front, setting his sights forward and never looking back at the moment for your fastest qualifier. And a trio of heat wins for Campbell so far this weekend. He's leading the big dance when it counts for the weekend. And on his way to a blue plate that's awaiting his arrival. And just five and a half laps left to go for young Campbell. Down into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl he goes.
four laps to go for Campbell Thompson and a new fast lap that time across at 38.834. New fastest from Campbell. Out to 2.3 seconds, the advantage over Chase Webb back there in second. Xander still holding on to the third spot, but the battle is on for third. With William Kalik Chen having a good battle. As Campbell Thompson brings it out of the Napa parts dropper, the fight is on for third and fourth at the moment. Xander Edgington just holding on to it over William Kalik Chen in the 20 machine. Putting pressure on him as they go down onto the back straight. On their way into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl, we catch the battle for the third spot at the moment. Xander Edgington and William Kalik Chen fighting it out as they come onto the main straight. Kalik Chen still sitting back there in the fourth spot at the moment, putting pressure on, and he's bringing Lucas into the fray as well, fighting it out with just three laps left to go last time across the line. This is the fight for the top three at the moment to make it onto the podium here. Campbell Thompson and Chase Webb clearing out from this group. Kalik Chen goes for a big look up the inside of the bus stop and they both run very wide. Edgington very wide out to the edge of the rumble strip. Trying to outbreak themselves. They're bringing it around into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Battle still going for third on the final lap here as Campbell Thompson and Chase Webb start their final tour of the track, but the battle going for third. Campbell Thompson though, down the back straight for the final time into the AFRI equipment bus stop. And the Napa Auto Parts dropper. This youngster has driven an absolute stellar weekend, flawless in his execution for the 51 KF cart. Campbell Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen at Midwest Car Club, put your hands together as Campbell Thompson brings it down and as your new Cadet Nines West Australian State Champion, Chase Webb in a stellar effort home for second. <coughs> the battle for third though, last time at the line, William Kalik Chen, who ran third all weekend long. Finds himself in the third spot on the final lap. William Kalik Chen claims third in a drag race between Lucas and Xander. Lucas claims fourth, Xander Edgington P5. Joel Blackman claims sixth, and Leroy Toon rounds out your seven car field for Cadet Nines.
kicking things off with KA3 Junior, brought to you by B Sport. The opening laps fall in the way of Noah Lyle. Thomas Lawton jumping to second, Josh Byrne in three, Aiden Decker's four. Luke Sawyer running at your five in the opening laps, hey? Great run he's had so far for Noah Lyle. Dragging Lawton with him at the moment as they come out of the bus stop. Over the Napa parts dropper. Screaming their way around, trying to build a gap over the rest of the field in these early stages. KA3 Junior brought to you by B Sport, race coach and engineer. Vernon Deckers up the straight. Aiden Deckers elevating himself up in the third now. Caleb Sumich further back in the field. He's been fighting his way through after problems in heat three earlier today. Big move from Lawton they are. Lawton into the side of Lyle. And that's brought them both very bogged down. Here comes Aiden Deckers. Deckers fights his way through. Lyle covers him off though. Now we're bumper to bumper the fight for the race lead. If you weren't awake yet, folks, now's the time to come to life. Lyle leads away. Decker's in second. To the inside, Decker's voice is the issue. Lyle out wide. Lawton tries to sneak through as well. He gets it. Lyle goes down to P3. Josh Byrne back to P4. Caleb Sumich is loving this. He's buying his way into this fight. Now Lyle got his head on a swivel because he's been pushed all the way down to the bus stop. Decker's has outbraked himself. The 33 KF cart losing ground here. Thomas Lawton breaking away. Oh, Lyle back to the two spot now. Decker's trying to cover off a challenge after bogging himself down to the bus stop. He's down to P3. He's got Caleb Sumich behind him. Josh Byrne in P5. Then Stefanovic. Connor Gray, six and seven. Bree Rhodes in the eighth spot. Charging their way forward. Luke Sawyer, P9. Mason Fraser rounding out your 10. Thomas Lawton for Tune Tech Auto Service Centre. And OTK WA, the number 30 Tony Cart. Stretching the legs now, trying to build a gap over Noah Lyle. Caleb Sumich up the inside of Aiden Decker's getting it done. Decker's trying to counter to the inside of Burns, sideways off this dropper. Now Stefanovic trying to find his way around as well, can't get alongside. But it's Thomas Lawton stretching it out, out front then Lyle, Sumich, Burns, Decker's, Stefanovic. Following the battles all the way through the field here. Thomas Lawton is out front from Lyle and Sumic. Deckers has found himself all by his lonesome at the moment. Then Stefanovic leads Byrne, Rhodes and Sawyer. The 62 of Mason Fraser in the ninth spot. Nicholas Smith rounds out your top 10. Super tight in the middle pack. Caleb Sumic on screen chasing Noah Lyle at the moment who hasn't had it all his way so far in the final. Despite his efforts throughout the heat races, Lyle trying to drive his way forward. But they're all getting pipped at the post by Thomas Lawton so far. We follow along. Lyle and Sumic onto the RGR main straightaway. A long way yet to go here. We are eight laps down, 20 to go. Lyle back in second. The number four of Rise Racing, a flat out cart entry. Just trying to hold on to it at the moment. But Thomas Lawton is the class of the field here. KA3 Junior was super hot this morning in Heat 3. Lyle and Sumic really need to work together to try and close the gap up and put the move on Lawton, start putting pressure on him. He's out by 9.1 tenths of a second over Lyle. Then another 1.5 tenths back to Sumic. Deckers has done a brilliant job of surviving the melee attack in the early stages. He holds on to P4, but he's 1.6 seconds off the battle of this fight for third. Then Alex Stefanovic running out the top five ahead of Byrne, Rhodes and Sawyer. 
and Fraser Smith, Drew, Makuchi Allen, Connor Gray, Sadler, West running at your 15 from Davis, Kaulo, Belanca, Duncombe and Tristan Gray, your top 20. But it's Lyle and Sumich, second and third. There's Thomas Lawton sliding his way through the Great Southern Fields Bowl. Lawton still faster than these two at the moment. Opening up the gap, it's now out to a second. Thomas Lawton has built himself a one second advantage here in the KA3 Junior Final, brought to you by B-Sport. Down the back straight into the bus stop. Sumich going for a look up the inside of Lyle. Now to dispatch of him, Lyle back to the third spot now. Sumich trying to charge his way forward after a DNF in heat three. See what Sumich can do with the pace of Thomas Lawton. Lawton, new hot lap of the race, 34.29. Sumich, 34.5. The gap goes down to 1.4 seconds. Sumich really has some work to do to close this gap at the moment. Trying to close the gap up to Thomas Lawton. He's opening up a gap as we follow along with Alex Stefanovic and Josh Byrne at the moment. That's the fight for fifth and sixth down into the Asbury bus stop. They go. Sawyer is right behind him as well in P7. He's just set his personal best lap of the race at 34.615. Following them on to the RGR main straight away. Stefanovic and Byrne going bumper to bumper. Sawyer just waiting to pick up the pieces. Aiden Deck is now setting a hot lap of the race. Look at your timing screen, 34.26 for Aiden Deck. Is that time across, he's eight tenths of a second off the back of Lyle. Two and a half off the race lead, Caleb Sumich. Maintaining 1.4 seconds in touch with Thomas Lawton at the moment. Trying to stay in tow. We go back to this fight. Stefanovic and Byrne fighting it out for fifth and sixth on the road. Down into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl they go. Sawyer staying in touch at the moment as well. Keeping one eye on the tiny screen, one eye on the battle. Caleb Sumich is bringing the gap down. It's 1.2 seconds for Thomas Lawton now. A 34-2, sorry, 3-2 for Caleb Sumich that time by. This battle here, Stefanovic, Byrne and Sawyer down the back straight into the Asbury bus stop. On the run towards the Napa Auto Parts dropper. We follow along for a moment following Thomas Lawton being chased by Caleb Sumich out of the car, car centre switchback and down the back straight into the after bus stop. Sumich trying to bring the gap down some more. It's 1.06 seconds. Last time across the line. Lawton getting away early in the piece here. Here's Sumich on camera, the number 14 machine for Eco Resources in the 14 Cosmic Card. He's been there all weekend long. Came unstuck in Heat 3. But is on an absolute mission, trying to close the gap to Lawton. It stays at 1.07 seconds. Meanwhile, Aiden Deckers is reeling in Noah Lyle for third. Here's the battle on screen now. Lyle in third, Deckers in four. Putting in the hard yards. A great piece of driving to come from Aiden Deckers. Trying to recover from the melee attack that took place on the opening laps here. Eleven laps to go here in your KA3 Junior Final. Thomas Lawton putting in a new fastest lap of the race, 34.25. Just doing what he can to manage the gap. Caleb Sumich with a 34.28. Noah Lyle with a 34.39. Deckers with a 34.34. Deckers just slowly inching forwards, trying to close the gap to the back of Lyle. And the number four flat out carts and a rise racing entry. Down into the bottom section of the racetrack, we follow these two, fighting for third and fourth on the road. The back. Battle behind them here, Stefanovic and Byrne fighting five and six, and Sawyer in seven. But up the hill, Sumich disappearing out of frame. 
the battle behind. Stefanovic, Byrne and Sawyer still fighting it out for five, six and seven on the road. As Noah Lyle just reset the fast lap of the race. 34, two, two, three from Noah. Stefanovic, a little check over his shoulder, Burn might have a little look under brakes here, decides not to. He keeps the number 86, Mechanical Piping Services, Tony Kart tucked in behind in the battle for P5. As Lawton and Sumich race up the RGR main straight away, the gap 1.1 seconds, Noah Lyle has the fast lap of the race. This done by Lyle, the 34-4. Sumich giving away a tenth of a second to Lawton in the race lead. Thomas Lawton might have this one in the bag here as we're inching closer and closer to a checkered flag finish for KA3 Junior. Presented by B-Sport. This battle's still going on with Stefanovic and Byrne. Out of the Afri equipment bus stop into the Napa Auto Parts dropper. Stefanovic just hanging the inside tire in the air on the way into the hairpin. As we catch Sumic scrolling across on the main straight. This is the battle for third. Lyle and Deckers fighting it out through the patient Sandland sweeper. Down into the cart center switchbacks. The gap last time between them. Two tenths of a second. The advantage going to Deckers on lap speed, 34-4. Lyle with a 34-5. So we follow along here, the battle for third. Noah Lyle holding on to the spot at the moment as Aiden Deckers trying to put the pressure on. Looks like Lyle is getting away just a little bit the last lap or so. The gap across the line, two and a half tenths of a second in this fight for third. How would you be Noah Lyle right now? Fastest qualifier, couple of race wins. You find yourself fighting it out for third as you watch the leaders run away from you. Thomas Lawton leading the way. 1.2 seconds clear from Caleb Sumich. Another 1.7 seconds back to Noah Lyle. There goes Lawton, Sumich, Lyle and Deckers around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Onto the RGR main straight. Six laps to go for this young man, Thomas Lawton. On board the number 30, TuneTech Auto Service Centre, Tony Kart. Out of the Kart Centre, switchbacks, Caleb Sumich, the Eco Resources Cosmic Chassis. Trying his best to hunt him down, the gap stays where it was, 1.2 seconds between. In a category that promised so much for some action, it looks like it's a processional race at the front for the first couple of spots. Lyle and Deckers, pretty close together still, three tenths of a second between them at the moment in the fight for third. Joshua Byrne has been dropped off the battle for P5 as Alex Stefanovic holds 1.3 seconds over Luke Sawyer in that fight. Four laps remaining for Thomas Lawton up the RGR main straight. He continues to stretch the gap. He's holding on to 1.1 seconds over Caleb Sumich now. Sumich just marginally quicker the last time they clicked the cross. Caleb trying to seek everything he can to close the gap. But I think Thomas has this one. He's got one hand on that blue plate for the number 30 June Tech Auto Service Centre, Tony Cart. His dad will be nervously watching on the sidelines. So will the likes of Daryl Henderson from OTKWA. Watching their man do the work out front. As Lawton comes on up the RGR main straightaway. Three to go for Lawton. He opens the gap once again to 1.2 seconds. Over Sumich back in second. Lyle and Deckers third and fourth. Four, four and a half, four and a half tenths of a second separating them now. So Deckers is dropping off the fight for third. Might have to just settle for P4. Alex Stefanovic, P5. Clear of Sawyer and Byrne at the moment in six and seven. And it's Lincoln Drew in the eight spot. Mason Fraser, P9. Nicholas Smith rounding out your 10. But we follow along with young Thomas Lawton as he brings it on to the RJR main straight. Two to go.
last lap board out to grab him. One to go for Thomas Lawton. One lap separates him and the blue plate and the West Australian state title. The KA3 Junior brought to you by Beastport, the number 30 Tune Tech Auto Service Centre Tony Kart. Doing the job all weekend. Lawton has found himself inside the mix all weekend long. But it's all about jumping at the right time of the weekend. And Thomas Lawton has picked his moment beautifully around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl for the final time. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Thomas Lawton is your 2020 West Australian State Champion for KA3 Junior. Caleb Sumich, a valiant drive home for second. Noah Lyle survives for third. Aiden Deckers in P4. And Alex Stefanovic rounds out your top five. Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel. Well, it's the business end of the weekend for Tag 125 Light, brought to you by Flat Out Carts. And what a stellar set of heat races we've had so far. Your starting grid looks like Kit Foster on the pole spot here alongside Lewis Reed, last year's 125 heavy West Australian jet. <coughs> Ash Morrissey on P3, Sam Dicker. Starting on P4, Hugh Maguire from P5, Aiden Passmore from 6, Shay Thompson on 7, Luca Nietzsche starts from the 8, and Dylan Favola, Ryan Nicholson, Kieran Ellis, Kieran Passmore, and Liam Kane, Cody Lynn, and Tommy Shu rounds out your top 15. There's another 10 lining up behind them for our second biggest field of the weekend here at the WA Car Championship. No start that time by. 125 light never fails to disappoint and I'm sure this 28 lap feature will be another one that will go down in the books as the races, kind of races we talk about in years to come. Kit Foster on the pole spot here, setting the starting pace. He's got 24 snarling. 125's lining up behind him, wishing to pick him off. Foster brings the field around once again, looking for the lights to go out this time by. 
Here we go. One, two, five light from Flat Out Cars is go. 28 laps on the board. Foster down in turn one. Reed getting in there. Dicker gets forced a little bit wide. Oh, we got cards off. Lewis Reed getting shuffled back. Three, four, maybe more. Oh, big together at turn two. Reed Nietzsche. Kieran Ellis is in there as well. Puppets or Betts going down to the back. Nietzsche and Reed are out. Ash Morrissey slots into second. Sam Dicker goes to third, but Kip Foster getting out front. Big lose from two of our main contenders inside the top 10, Lewis Reed and Luca Nietzsche. Both getting caught up at the start there, and both of them out of contention. On lap one of our 28 lap final, it's Kip Foster. Leading the way here, Ash Morrissey in second. Sam Dicker into the third spot here. Aiden Passmore, P4. Shay Thompson in the five. Morrissey pushing Foster down the hill under brakes, trying to find a way around. Dicker tucking in behind him. They're putting some pressure on Foster already. It's early days yet, but they've got to get a jump on the old fella. The wily old Fox Foster. Out front, the number 20 KF cart. The man behind the brand. Up the RGR straight. Here we go. Morrissey has made some right moves this weekend. He's been there all weekend long, but never up this high. There's Morrissey putting some pressure on Foster. Out of the cart center, switchbacks they go. Onto the back straight away. Foster looks over his shoulder. Morrissey's gonna go for a big one up the inside. Ash Morrissey, for the first time this weekend, leads in 125 light ahead of Foster and Dicker. Onto the RGR main straight. Once again, Ash Morrissey, the 89 Sarah Cart, wants to take the opportunity, grab the bull by the horns and break away here. And he's got Foster and a trio of flat out arrows lining up behind him. Ryan Nicholson, bit of fish out of the water here right now. He's back in P6. I think the highest he's run so far this weekend, the 75 KF Cart moving up and a non-start for Steven Scoble, I see. Unfortunate for Scoves finding the wall in heat three earlier today as Hugh Maguire gets shuffled back another spot down at the bus stop. We follow Morrissey up the RGR main straight. Foster not letting him get away now. He's tucking right in there with him. From Dicker and Passmore. Shea Thompson right there in P5. Now Kip Foster just reset the fast lap of the race. A 33.864 from Foster. A couple of cart lengths gap that Morrissey's built down here. Here comes Dicker! No, Dicker! Round he almost goes, and he's gonna give it all away. Sam Dicker's weekend is done. There's no chance of coming back from that. Sent it from another postcode, and it really didn't stick when it came to the corner. Foster was lucky to survive that one. Now here's Passmore and Thompson. Meanwhile, Ash Morrissey putting in the hard yards out front to try and build a buffer. Kip Foster will be livid with a move like that, not sticking, because that really slowed him up. We still got a long way left to go though. 22 and a half laps left to go for Kip Foster to try and chase down Ash Morrissey. Aiden Passmore and Shay Thompson, I like these two at the moment. How's this defending state champion Cody Lunan is up to P6. That's the highest I've seen him run so far. As he comes up behind Ryan Nicholson as they come up the RGR main straight. Thompson has a little look up the inside of Passmore. Couldn't find a way around though. Into the cart center switch back, so they go coming up. Watching the battle happening here. Ash Morrissey starting to be reeled in by Kip Foster. And they're dropping off Passmore and Thompson at the moment. Foster continuing to set the hot lap. The 33.604 from Foster. Two tenths quicker than Morrissey. Foster reeling him in. Gives him a little bit of a nudge into the sweeper. Foster. The wily old fox knows how to get it done. Morrissey, very much the quiet achiever in West Australian karting. He's always there or thereabouts, so to speak, down into the Africa bus stop once again. 
out of the Napa Auto Parts dropper. He's opened up about a car length, but Foster reels him in under brakes. He's ahead into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Pass Moore and Thompson right there. Nicholson can't get in touch at the moment. Cody Lunen back there in P6. There's no good fight between Nicholson and Lunen either, so if they get together on track, all hell could break loose in the minor placings. But at the moment, Morrissey and Foster out front, breaking away from the rest of the field. They're half a second clear of Passmore, who just set his personal best lap of the race, which was actually quicker than the two in front of him. Passmore with a 33.58. The leaders on 33.7s. Aiden Passmore starting to come to life here from Exmouth Hardware in the Arrow chassis. He wants a piece of the pie for the 2020 WA Kart Championship up the RGR main straight. Foster pulls out. It's going to be a big move from Foster. Morrissey lets him slot through. They both slow each other down in the sweeper. And Aiden Passmore will drag Shay Thompson into this fight. So Passmore and Thompson are going to throw their hat into the ring here. Foster defensive at the bottom of the hill. With 18 laps to go, we're playing defending games now. Kip Foster, the number 20 KF cart, covers off the inside line. That slows them all down. That brings Passmore and Thompson into the fight. And up onto the RGR main straight. Foster's going to rely on having the motor to drag his backside all the way up the hill. RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. We follow the top four here. Through the cart centre, switchbacks onto the back straight. Foster's managed to build a couple of cart lengths over Morrissey. Now Passmore is hustling up the inside of Morrissey. He's going to run them both out wide. Morrissey drops the wheel. He's defending into the bowl. Slowing each other down. They're letting Foster get away with it now. Look at the gap that Foster has built. Passmore's hungry. He wants it bad. He's going to force it up the inside. Morrissey's going to run wide. Thompson's going to get him as well. Morrissey losing out big time there. We'll go to P4 and he'll pay the price for that defensive driving down to the bottom of the hill. Now is the opportunity for Aiden Passmore. He needs to set some absolute blinding laps to catch up to the back of the 20 of Kip Foster out front. Or well, they're going to let Kip Foster add to his collection of blue plates on the mantelpiece at home. Up the RGR straight goes Foster. Pass Moran Thompson now in hot pursuit. Morrissey back there. P4, he's dropping back very quickly. Losing a lot of time. Nicholson and Dicker in hot pursuit. Sam Dicker trying to buy his, buy his way back into it. The best he's going to get is to P5 maybe. I don't see him making an impact on the top three in this race unless they all come unstuck. But it's going to have to be a big drive from Dicker to make something happen this afternoon here. 125 Light brought to you by Flat Out Carts. About to cross over the halfway point. Kit Foster up the RGR main straight. Now crosses off into the second half of this long feature race for 125 Light. Pass Moore and Thompson, second and third. Ash Morrissey, the 89 Sarah Cart, back to P4. Then it's Nicholson and Dicker. Lunan and Kane, 7 and 8. Thompson and Fraser, 9 and 10. Then Bender, Shu, Betts, Blaine and Ellis running at your top 15 from McGuire. Kieran Passmore in 17. Chris Smith, Dylan Favola, 18 and 19. Isaac McLean, Caprice Hall and Bevan Stone rounding out your running order. As we follow along, 1.4 seconds the gap for Foster last time by. Stays where it was. Equal times between Foster and Passmore. there's one person in Western Australian karting you don't want to have a gap is Kip Foster because you know by that point you ain't going to catch him. And Foster out to prove that point yet again here this weekend at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for the 2020 WA Championship. Morrissey coming under a lot of pressure from Sam Dicker now as they come out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl onto the RGR Main Straight. Dicker's going to pull out and try and make a move stick up the inside into the patient Sandland Sweeper they go. Dicker Elevates himself up one more. He's now P4 on the road. And now Sam Dicker has 12 laps to make something happen and close the gap inside the top three. We'll follow along Dicker leading that big gag of the carts behind him. Morrissey, Nicholson, Lunan and Kane into the bottom end of the racetrack. 1.38 seconds to gap out front for Kit Foster at the moment. We're keeping an eye on that in case Passmore can pull out something big and close the gap to them out front. Ah, 
Hugh Maguire off the side of the racetrack. Unfortunately for Hugh, taking no further part. The highs and lows of West Australian karting really hitting Hugh hard here. After just claiming the win in KA3 Light, Maguire will have to watch the next 10 laps of racing in our 125 Light final. It's Foster out front. Passmore is starting to close the gap, but it's only little bits at a time. 1.2 seconds the gap now for Foster and Passmore. We watch for the back. Thompson, four tenths off the back of Passmore in third at the moment. Sam Dicker, six tenths for the back in P4. And a personal best lap of the race from Dicker that time across, a 33.5 for Sam. But it's this man, large and in charge out front, Kit Foster. Continues to stretch the Birrell Art Design KF card out front. As he's opened up the gap now to 1.3 seconds. Over Aiden Passmore coming down from Exmouth to race this weekend. He leads Thompson and Dicker behind him. Just a couple of years ago, Kip Foster led many of the laps in the heat races down at Bunbury for the West Australian title. Ultimately won by Brock Kenny that year. His first ever West Australian title win and a one-two for the newly forged KF Kart brand. Two years later, and Foster brings a whole team to the West Australian titles. But he's still the man to beat. Out front, 20 laps down and eight to go. Last time across the line, Sam Dicker is trying his best to make inroads under the back of Shay Thompson and put on a fight to get inside the top three. Chasing around his fellow flat-out cars driver around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl and onto the RGR main straightaway. 1.1 seconds was the gap. Now Passmore puts in his best lap of the race at 33.5. The gap is less than a second for Kip Foster out front, but there's only seven laps to go. Sam Dicker back there in P4, still trying to put some pressure on Shay Thompson. If not pass him for third, at least push him up into the back of Aiden Passmore. But Dicker now is going to go for a move up the inside of Thompson. It's going to make it hard for him, but Sam Dicker elevates himself up to third on a comeback drive after coming a cropper early in the race and dropping way back through the field. This time by Passmore pulling out half a tenth on Foster. It sits 9.3 tenths of a second. Passmore needs a little bit more to make it happen. Foster is just going to continue to lay down these clean and consistent laps. The only thing that's going to bring him unstuck is tire degradation. Down the line on the RGR straight this time by, it stays even. 33.54 to a 5.4 between Foster and Passmore. Equal lap times. Dicker is quick though. He's on a 33.4. He's the quickest of the top five. The quickest on the track at the moment. And it's lapping almost identical to the hot lap of the race held by Hugh Maguire. A 33-4-3 set just prior to his demise. As Maguire stands on the sidelines down at the bottom of the hill watching them as they come out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. But it's Kip Foster bringing it around. Four laps to go down the RGR main straightaway. And now Foster sets his best lap of the race. A personal best for Foster this time by 33-5-1. No one can do anything about him here. He's just simply bolted out front. And Kip Foster is in control of this 125 light final presented by Flat Out Karts. We follow Shay Thompson being dispatched out of third place by the man Sam Dicker on the board, the number 72 Flat Out Karts Arrow X5 chassis. Dicker trying to put some pressure on Passmore. In the battle for second now, as Sam Dicker resets the hot lap of the race. 33-4-1, was three to go last time by. Dicker starting to heat up the battle for second here. Nothing can be done about Kip Foster. He's got one hand on another blue plate to add to the collection here. Just got to click off this last two laps. As Foster brings it around onto the RGR haulage main straight. We follow this battle for second. Passmore and Dicker, Sam pulls apart. And Passmore lets him go by. Not really a challenge at all there. There's no way Dicker can close the gap in two laps to Foster. As they've all dropped off into the 33 sixes now. Dicker wants to give it a go though. 
never give up, never say die, says Sam Dicker. But we're just over one lap remaining. It looks like it's all gonna fall this way to Kip Foster. Out of the bottom corner, onto the RGR main straightaway. Foster leads with one to go, one lap remaining. But Kip Foster out front, Dicker is doing everything he can to make inroads on him. He brought the gap down to eight and a half tenths of a second. But it's too little, too late for Sam Dicker as they come out of the cart center switchbacks for the final time. Onto the back straight, Kip Foster, man behind the KF Kart brand, making the switch to the Birolart chassis for 2020 and unveiling the orange chassis rails. They tell you the difference between that and the previous DPE chassis. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Kip Foster knows that Foster wins 125 Life for 2020 here at Midwest Kart Club and adds to the collection. Samuel Dicker, a valiant effort and a comeback drive to end up second on the road. Aiden Passmore comes home for third. Shay Thompson makes P4. Ashley Morrissey rounds out your top five. An outgoing West Australian champion. Cody Lunan goes P6 from Ryan Nicholson in seven. Liam Kane in the eighth spot. Flynn Thompson in nine. And Hayden Fraser rounds out your top ten. Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel.
Let's get it on with Cadet 12s. Let's get going. Eco Resources presenting Cadet 12s out for their 28 lap final to decide who's going to be the West Australian state champ in 2020. Nicholas Stardy on board the number 15 Energy Course chassis starts from the pole spot here alongside defending West Australian state champ Nash Ferraro, who up until this morning has had it all his way. Fastest qualifier, one of the fastest qualifying times. Stardy took the TQ time in yesterday morning session, but Ferraro, a pair of heat wins in the early heats yesterday, but came a cropper with a DNF in race three today. He finds himself on the outside front row. Zane Rhodes back there in third is starting to peak at the right time of the weekend here on the 26 BRM chassis from Toby Mayolo in the 23. He's been quietly achieving, just chipping away at it here in P4. Jack Webster, his teammate, starts P5 with Connor Radford throwing his hat into the ring in P6. Sachin Smith way in P7. From Jen McDonald in P8, Cooper Lyle P9, Chase Wildman rounds out your top 10 starters from James Webster and Bailey Reardon, Ben Hall and William Campbell, Lachlan Clee and Max Duncombe, Noah Byrne and Jordan Clee, Ryan Warner and Riley Curry and Ashton Sprague lines up P21. In your huge field of Cadet 12s getting set to go, 28 laps on the board. And there's something quite wrong here with the starting procedure. I'm not sure what entirely is going on. Stardy wants to make it a very slow formation lap. And Ferraro out of position. We're going to send the field around once again to get them going here. Now Stardy on the pole spot is setting a very slow formation lap and he's been monstered at the starts of the previous heats. So he'll be a very nervous young man Looking to try and get them going. So your Cadet 12 field presented by Eco Resources getting set to go and they provide some fantastic racing. I love to always put it on. Some of the best racing you'll see here in Western Australia. These youngsters duking it out on track. They got 28 laps to sort it out of who's going to be your West Australian state champion here in 2020. The lights go out and send us starting with a decent start this time. Zane Rhodes going to try and sneak through as well. Nash Ferraro getting hung out to dry on the outside. He's going to drop a long way back. Defending state champions drop back almost back to P10 on the run down to turn two. Nicholas Stardy is absolutely bolting early. They're chasing after him here. It's Webster in second. Sachin Smith way. How did he sneak through? Smith way sneaking through to third on the opening lap. Zane Rhodes getting dropped back to P4 as they head down to the bottom of the racetrack on the opening lap. Stardy, Webster, Smith Way and Rhodes as they bring it out of the bottom corner onto the RGR main straight for the first lap in the books. And Nicola Stardy is just clearing house at the moment on the opening lap. Sachin Smith Way up the inside of Webster. Oh, they get hung up on each other. Oh, Webster under the back of Sachin Smith Way. That puts Webster off into the dirt. Smith Way survives. Zane Rhodes slots into the three spot. Connor Radford, P4. Nash Ferraro, P5. Followed by Cooper Lyle in the six. So Nicola Stardy breaking away by half a second on the opening lap. This young kid has absolutely bolted for the number 15 energy course cart. Trying to get away from the rest of the field here, but it's Sachin in second. Zane in third. Connor in fourth. Then a bit of a gap back to the, the defending champ, Nash Ferraro from Waruna in P5. Early days yet, though, a long way yet to go for these Cadet 12s. Chase Wildman fighting his way forward. He goes to P6. It looks like he got up the inside of Cooper Lyle, dropping him down to the seventh spot as Nash Ferraro climbs his way up into the fight for the next three in front of him. Sitting P5 on the road at the moment. He's the fastest on track at 38.7. It's a big ask for young Nash right now with the Pinjara Bakery number 16 OTK cart. Starting. Out front here from Smith, way in second. 
Rhodes having a bit of a mix up in the third spot as Radford trying to close the gap to him. He's got a rear bumper full of Ferraro as they come out of the patient Sandland sweeper. Up into the cart center, switchbacks. 1.1 seconds the gap now for Nicola Stardi. He's just opening up the taps and not letting up here. And Nash Ferraro out to a 38.6. Finds his way around Connor Radford. He's the quickest on track at the moment. The number 16 machine really having to put the foot down and try and drive his way forward into this one because at the moment, Nicola Stardi is just doing an absolute runner. He checks over his shoulder and sees Sachin Smith way the back there in second, the first one to arrive on the scene. 1.2 seconds the gap as Stardi puts in a new hot lap of the race of 38.67. Sachin Smithway, Zane Rhodes and Nash Ferraro, two, three, and four. Connor Radford sitting P5 at the moment. So head down the hill towards the Aftery bus stop. Zane Rhodes in the number 26. Malibu boats right to drive an Auto Pro Canning Vale BRM chassis. The only BRM in the field at the moment in our Cadet 12s. Flying the flag for the orange and silver. As they bring it down onto the RGR main straightaway. We follow along with Zane Rhodes and Nash Ferraro sitting third and fourth on the road. Rhodes covers off the inside line to prevent a challenge from young Ferraro looking to defend his championship win he started the weekend off in fine form but this final the first couple of laps at least not going his way so far it's Nicola Stardi out front to a 38.5 the only other 38.5 coming from Nash Ferraro back there in P4 so Ferraro really needs to be with Stardi to put the pressure on the heat race has proved that. Stardi just ghosting Ferraro for the entire duration of the 17 lap heats. As they bring it out onto the RGR main straight. Sachin Smith way. Holding a clear second at the moment from Rhodes and Ferraro. Connor Radford back there in P5. Then Toby Maiolo, Chase Wildman, Cooper Lyle, Jed McDonald, Bailey Reardon. Rounding out your top 10. time by Zane Rhodes starting to come to life here he put down a 38.6 his personal best lap of the race as he tries to chase down Sachin Smith way another quick one from Zane this time across as well pulls the gap down a little bit more to Sachin but no one lapping on the same speed as Nicholas out front young Stardy leading the way 1.7 seconds the gap from Nicholas Stardy back to Sachin Smith way in second Watching this battle at the moment, Toby Maiolo and Chase Wildman in the 77 Sabre real estate entry. They're fighting over sixth and seventh on track. Down into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl they go. Just behind them is Cooper Lyle running out the top eight. Then Jet McDonald and Bailey Reardon running out your top ten. Maiolo and Wildman into the patient Sandland sweeper. The closest battle we have on track as he battles for second through to fifth. Not really coming to anything at the moment. They chase each other down towards the Aftery bus stop. Into the Napa Auto Parts dropper. Trying to find something, anything they can get to close the gap to Nicola Stardi. The pole man bolting on the opening lap here and maintaining a 1.7 second advantage for young Nicholas. Nash just checking over his shoulder as he's dispatched Zane Rhodes. Nash finds himself up in the third. Trying to put some pressure on Sachin Smith way now. The battle for second is on. Smith way going to be have to be on the defensive. He looks over his shoulder. Nash pulls out. Under breaks into the bus stop corner. Nash Ferraro slots into second. Sachin Smith way down to third. Oh, Smith way dropping down to fourth as Zane Rhodes sends the number 26 BRM chassis up into the spot to put Sachin down another. Now Nash Ferraro, defending state champion, has a two second deficit to make up to the back of Nicola Stardi. He checks over his shoulder and that lap, obviously the pass on Sachin slowed him down at 38.8 from Ferraro. We'll see Ferraro's true pace the next time they get by with both of them in clean air. But given the way the heats fell with even pace between Stardi and Ferraro, I'm going to say that Stardi just might have enough lap speed to maintain the gap like this as they head down into the bottom end of the circuit. We are 10 laps down, 18 to go last time across the line. 
as Nicola Stadia, the number 15 Energy Course chassis, leads away from defending state champ Nash Ferraro. Up the hill goes Stardi. We're watching. Rhodes, Smithway and Radford being led by Ferraro in second. 2.1 seconds is the gap here. Stardi dropping to a 38.8. Ferraro with a 38.5. Just a hair outside of his personal best lap. So Ferraro trying to make inroads. He's got enough time if he can maintain that pace. Only time will tell. Over the next 16 and a half laps as now Sachin Smith way up the inside of Zane Rhodes picks him off for third. It's going to be a fight for the remaining placings here. Third, fourth and fifth on the road. Sachin Smith way, Zane Rhodes and Connor Radford in the fight for this one. Further back, Toby Maiolo and Chase Wildman sixth and seventh on track. Cooper Lyle in eighth from Bailey and Jet, nine and ten. So the battle out front, Nash Ferraro continually trying to chase down Nicola Stani, who bolted from the start. At the moment, the gap sits at two seconds from Stani back to Ferraro. Sachin Smith way, Zane Rhodes and Connor Radford. Discussion starting to heat up for who wants to be third today in the West Australian State Kart Championships. Currently Sachin Smith way holds that one. As they come up the RGR straight, Ferraro checks over his shoulder. The gap goes back out to two seconds as Stardi and Ferraro match each other's lap speed. We follow your race leader, Nicola Stardi in the 15 energy course cart. On the way down to the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. As he leads this one out, two seconds the gap back to Nash Ferraro. A little check over the shoulder as he comes up onto the RGR main straight. Ferraro doing everything he can to maintain, try and close down the gap. But Stardi still maintaining the two second advantage at the moment. This youngster in the number 15 energy course cart. We're at the halfway point, 14 down, 14 to go. Last time across for young Nicholas. These youngsters stretching the lead, trying to build a gap. They've built over a second over Sachin Smith, way back in third now, as Nash Ferraro, who's under pressure. Zane Rhodes still right on the back of Sachin as they bring it around the bottom bowl onto the RGR main straight. Sachin with his head down. Rhodes is going to pull out. He pulls back in behind. Nothing happening between these guys. Zane Rhodes just trying to find a way around at the moment. But it's all about Nicholas starting out front. With 12 and a half laps left to go, he maintains two seconds over Nash Ferraro in second. And the even pace of these two means Stardi can just keep clicking off the laps and Ferraro can't do much about that gap.
working our way down. 18 laps to go. 18 laps down, 10 to go for Nicholas Stardy. Last time he came across, and he's starting to come up onto the back of some lap traffic of Riley Curry as they make their way down into the bottom end of the racetrack. Nash Ferraro is still staying 2.1 seconds off the back of Stardy. Can't do anything about his pace at the moment. The young Nicholas coming onto the RGR main straightaway behind young Riley. You can see that's your leader about to put Riley a lap down. Nash Ferraro trying to stay in touch. That brought the gap a little bit closer though. As for just a moment, Nicholas had to slow down to a 39.2. The gap goes to 1.5 seconds. But Nash Ferraro yet to close up onto the back of young Riley and put a lap on him. Sachin Smith way further behind, still in the three spot from Zane Rhodes and Connor Radford rounding out your top five. The gaps between eight, se eight tenths of a second covers Smith way, Rhodes and Radford at the moment. Third, fourth and fifth on the road. Nash Ferraro managing to bring the gap down to 1.1 seconds within Nicola Stardi, but we're starting to count off the final few laps now. Eight to go last time across the line as young Riley Curry just doing his best to get out of the way of lap carts. Coming through to put a lap on him here in the number 31 Ricardo cart. The blue lights being shown for the lap traffic and the top five stay as they were at the moment. There's the battle still going on further back between Toby Maiolo and Chase Wildman for sixth and seventh. But the gap stays the same now. Nicola Stani, 1.2 seconds clear of Nash Ferraro. Nothing between them on lap speed. Stani was marginally quicker the last lap, actually. As we follow the battle here, Sachin Smith, Way and Zane Rhodes fighting over third and fourth on the road at the moment. Sachin Smith way still holding on to the third spot at the moment as they come up the RGR main straight away. Now Nash Ferraro puts in the best lap of the race of 38.503. He's still doing everything he can, this youngster. Trying to recover from the start there. 38.5, hot lap of the race, coming with six laps left to go. Ferraro sits 1.089 seconds off the race lead of Nicola Stardi, who's out front and just doing his thing at the moment, the number 15 energy course, bringing it onto the RGR main straight. As now Maiolo and Wildman find themselves up upon Riley Curry and try and put a move on him and get past for the lap. Ferraro keeping the gap down, 1.06 this time by. He's taking little bits out of Stardi, but just not enough towards the end of this 28 lap long feature. Last time across, five to go for Nicholas Stardi out front. As we pick up young Nicholas Stardi, leading the way here in our Cadet 12 final, Nash Ferraro, another hot lap of the race, 38-5-0. It brings the gap down to just under a second, but Stardy still clicking off the 38 fives himself. And Sachin Smith Way puts in his personal best lap at 38.55. So these youngsters turning it on in the back end of a 28 lapper. The body language on Ferraro kind of says it all though. Seems like a little too little too late for young Nash to try and close the gap down. Still a second of an advantage that Nicholas has as they come up the RGR main straightaway. Three to go this time by, Stardi to Ferraro. But whatever Nash Ferraro just did, a 38-4, he pulled four tenths out of Stardi. He's bringing it to him. Onto the back straight as they make the run down towards the Afri, Afri bus stop. Ferraro putting everything, including the kitchen sink on the table here, trying to close the gap to Nicholas Stardi. Another lap like that is what he needs. And he's only got two to go this time by. Coming out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl, Nicholas Stardi leads from Ferraro. He didn't make up as much this time by. It stays at half a second. 
A 38.47 for Ferraro, 38.55 for your leader, Stardi. Was two to go as they came across the line. Ferraro needs another stellar effort. There's a lapped cart making their way down towards the bus stop corner. Starty leading out from Ferraro into the bottom section of the lap. It's a valiant effort from Nash Ferraro trying to close the gap down. Out of the Great Southern Fuels Bowl for the final time. Starty leads as the last lap board comes out. One to go for Nicholas Starty who looks over his shoulder and flinches for a second. Is that Nash I see? Nash to a 38-3. Can he pull this off with one to go? It's going to be a big ask from Nash Ferraro to go back to back here in Cadet 12s. I cannot believe my eyes. It's going to be a big move down to the bus stop. Ferraro tries to pull out for Stardi. Defends now. They're going to go bumper to bumper. So Ferraro side by side. Nash gets it done. Can you believe it? Nash Ferraro with five to go. Had no chance of getting it done. But around the final corner, the checker flag is out and waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Nash Ferraro makes it back to back. WA champion in Cadet 12, Nicholas Stardi. Drove his little heart out, but just not enough right at the end there. Comes home for second. Zane Rhodes picks up the third spot right at the end there. Sachin Smith way in four. And Connor Radford. Rounds out your top five. That is a hard charge. I'd be hard Let's get stuck into the replay for that as we just take a moment. This right here, what a drive. Nash Ferraro, I tip my hat to the youngster. Take nothing away from the efforts of Nicola Stardi. But to come back from a huge deficit like that, to make it a back-to-back -back WA title, Young Nash, the class of the field. This is where it all came undone for Young Nash. Hung out to dry at the start on the opening corner. And from that moment, I thought, even here, it was all over for young Nash to defend the title. Nicholas Stardy drove a flawless race as the action unfolded behind him. Nicholas continued to maintain that two-second advantage over the rest of the field as Nash worked his way through to put himself in prime position up the inside of Sachin Smith Way to claim second at about the halfway point here. And from then on, even I thought Nash was not going to be able to make up two seconds to the back of Nicholas Stardy, but it happens on the final lap and Nash Ferraro is your 2020 WA Cadet 12 state champion here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. We go straight out of the frying pan and into the fire. We are going racing. KA4 Junior Light presented by All Good Racing. Carts and Parts coming up next.
aka 4 Junior Light getting set to go here. Another thriller yet to come your way. 28 laps on the board for the KA4 Junior Lights. Brought to you by All Good Racing Carts and Parts. Noah Lyle from the pole spot. Going to lead the field into turn one. Thomas Lawton trying to tuck in there behind him at the moment. It's Deckers into third. Riley Watkins getting shuffled off out wide at turn two. Another shocking opening lap from young Riley. He's through the grass and somehow pulls it up for turn three. Now Deckers up the inside of Lawton was barely able to gather up the cart on the way into the bottom bus stop corner but he holds on to second Noah Lyle using the opening lap to get away from the rest of the field already as they go through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl Lyle leads him out on lap one Deckers into the two spot Thomas Lawton P3 Dylan Guest in the 4k Davey P5, Ethan Traeger in the six spot Noah Lyle has had everything going his way this weekend in KA4 Junior Light Fastest qualifier in the qualifying session yesterday morning. Made himself $50 richer thanks to Great Southern Fuels, our fastest qualifying sponsor. Took a trio of heat wins as well to cap that off. And underlines the point that he's probably the quickest KA4 Junior Light driver in WA at the moment as he leads away in the All Good Racing Carts and Parts final. Pilot in the number four. Arise Racing and Flat Out Carts entry ahead of Aiden Deckers in second. Thomas Lawton had a great start. And shot to third, Dylan Guest in the number 50. Birrell Art Chassis goes P4. K Davey in the five. Ethan Traeger in the six. James McCucci Allen having a great start here up to P7 from Jackson Mitchell Rosenauer in the eight spot. Ah, Lockie Adams, unfortunately, out of contention at turn two for the youngster. Little Lockie Adams will take no further part in this one. We follow along. This is a battle here. Dylan Guest, Kay Davey, and Ethan Traeger up the hill on the RGR main straightaway. They're fighting over fourth, fifth, and sixth on the road as your leaders, Lyle Deckers and Lawton out front. Thomas Lawton coming off the win in KA3 Junior just a short little while ago. Trying to see if he can make an impact on this race. But Deckers is just having a phenomenal weekend for the youngster on board the number 33 KF cart. He's been right there on the point all weekend long, pushing along Noah Lyle out front. At the moment, Lyle continuing to open up the taps. Half a second, the gap over Deckers. Another nine tenths back to Lawton in third. Guest another second further behind. Another two tenths back to Davey right behind Guest at the moment. And the second of the Guest brothers. Currently P13 on board the number 45, Ricardo Carter. He hasn't had a phenomenal weekend so far. He was up there in the lap speed and up there in the order at one stage, but a couple of bad races, and I believe a DNF in the previous race cost him an opportunity to start towards the pointy end of the field as Dylan Guest slides the cut all the way into the Great Southern Fields Bowl. We follow the field as they come up the RGR main straight. We follow Dylan Guest at the moment from K. Dave in the 75 Wheat Beaks and 79 Kart Sports entry. From Ethan Traeger on board the number three Corsa Kart. They're just ahead of Jackson Mitchell Rosenauer and Riley Watkins behind him. And seventh and eighth on the road, James McCucci Allen has been dropped down to P9. Jack Parham, P10. No defending champion for the KA4 Lights field is Luca Nietzsche, last year's champion in this class. Steps up to seniors for 2020. And himself and has, a, has had an up and down weekend as Noah Lyle leads the way. He's taking Aiden Deckers with him at the moment. But Lyle that time by a 37-1 hot lap. Deckers with a 37.3. Lawton only managing a 37-8 last lap has really dropped off the pace of the leaders. As Dylan Guess, there's a bit of a cork in the bottle at the moment. Guest with Davey and Traeger. Then Watkins and Mitchell Rosenau stacking up behind him here. Jack Parham now moving up into the 10th spot. James McCucci Allen moves into P9. They're all chasing Dylan Guest further back here as he holds P4 on the road. The next three up the street are in an absolute league of their own here in this class for KA4 Junior Light, brought to you by All Good Racing, Carts and Parts. Noah Lyle leading the way, 7.8 tenths of a second. Hot lap in the race to a 
Let me give you some perspective. That's a full two tenths quicker than Deckers, who last lap was four tenths quicker than Lawton and the rest of the field. Riley Watkins is able to put down a hot lap. He currently sits P7 on a 37.4 as Jackson Mitchell Rosenau pulls out and tries to find his way around Watkins on the main straight. We'll follow this battle here. Watkins and Mitchell Rosenau. Young Watkins making the trip down from Exmouth in the MG Kalis Seafood Arrow X5 chassis. Currently defending from Jackson Mitchell Rosenau on board the number 88. All good racing carts and parts and Kit Foster Racing entry. The 88 machine trying to put the pressure on at the moment. They're fighting it out for P6 and 7 on the road. But it's Lyle and Deckers out front. Thomas Lawton having a lonely drive here in P3. So watching the battle for P4 at the moment, Watkins has managed to dispatch Jackson Mitchell Rosenau. The 22 of Connor Payne, unfortunately, off in the dirt as Watkins found his way around K Davey. So Watkins now moves into P5. Young Riley and the MG Kayla Seafood entry now sets his sights forward on Dylan Guest. Young Watkins has really set the track alight. A 37-4 last time across. He's the quickest driver outside the top two carts right now. As Aiden Deckers manages to pull out the new fastest lap of the race of 37-1-8. Quicker than what Noah Lyle can put down. It's just those first 10 laps that Lyle has been able to open up a bit of a gap. It sits at 9.3 tenths of a second as we follow Mitchell Rosenauer now dispatching of Kate Davey down towards the Afri bus stop. Rosenauer moving up to P7 on the road. Now up to P6, I should say. Davey dropping another spot as Watkins starts to pour the pressure onto the back of Dylan Guest onto the RGR main straight. Watkins pulls out at turn one. Guest is going to hang it all the way around the outside, but Riley Watkins slots the number six machine up into the fourth spot here. Now looking at the lap speed, Watkins still lapping in the 37 fours, is chomping out four tenths of a second per lap on Thomas Lawton. Watkins is a chance of putting on a fight for third here. The number six, MG Kayla Seafood entry, putting on a show through the midfield at the moment. And trying to charge his way forward. Look at the gap he's pulled out over Guest over the last half a lap that he put the move on. Already opening up a couple of cart lengths as they go on past. We're going to follow along with Thomas Lawton at the moment. The number 30, Sarah Cart for young Thomas. Straight off the back of taking out the KA3 junior title. Just a few moments ago, has to resettle the nerves and jump back behind of a KA4 junior light. This is a man that's chasing him for third, Riley Watkins. Trying to close him down. As we just grabbed Noah Lyle for a brief moment. Lyle up the RGR main straightaway. Rocking the flat out carts and a rise racing number four entry. He leads out by 9.6 tenths over Aiden Deckers. Both of them in the 37 threes. Lawton in the 37 sixes and a 1.2 second advantage over Watkins. So as we follow along with Noah Lyle out front, Aiden Deckers trying to stay with him in second. He's shortened the gap just a little bit. Last time across, a 37-2 for Deckers. Pulled out seven hundredths of a second over Lyle. 8.9 tenths of a second the gap as Riley Watkins has settled back into a rhythm and is hovering about 1.1 seconds off the back of Thomas Lawton for third. We'll follow this battle here. Dylan Guest and Jackson Mitchell Rosenauer fighting over fifth on the road. Young Jackson's putting on a stellar drive in the final here today. He was in the wars yesterday afternoon in the heat races. Young Jackson getting beaten from pillar to post. Found himself a DNF in heat two yesterday afternoon. But now starting to come good and put some pressure on Dylan Guest, the number 50 Virilar chassis. Rosenau pulls out to the inside up the RGR main straightaway and Guest is going to hang it all out. He's going to try and go all the way around the outside. He's back on the inside into turn two. Great little scrap between these two. And the battle for fifth and them slowing each other down is going to bring Kay Davey back into the fight. Rosenau looks over his shoulder and spots Sweet Fix number 75, 79 Card Sports entry. 
starting to pull the pressure on as they come out of the map for auto parts dropper. This is a fight for fifth, sixth, and seventh on the road. Oh, Gas drops the wheel. Now Rosenau has to go all the way around the outside. He's going to get hung out to dry. Kate Davey goes on through as well. And Rosenau is losing out, almost dropping a wheel off under the main straight. So Kay Davey muscling his way through, says, I want to have a shot at Guesty here. Hanging the inside tire off the ground. Davey goes side by side with Guest. Through the cart center, switch back. Guesty gets it back though. Driving defensive down the back straight into the Afri bus stop. Davey and Mitchell Rosenau trying to put the pressure on. The fight's still well and truly alive for five, six, and seven on the road. Davey driving a defensive line to stop any challenge. The battle is on for third here. Riley Watkins gets it done over Thomas Lawton. They went side by side around the final corner. Got to have your head on a swivel here in KA4 Junior Light. Riley Watkins mounting a stellar drive after getting hung out to dry at the start yet again for about the 15th time this weekend. Amazing when you only run one class. Countering back to third over Thomas Lawton, but the battle behind them is happening. We pick this up as we watch on the battle here. Here's where it is. Guest, Davey, Mitchell Rosenauer and Traeger now in on the battle. This is the fight for P5 in the final for KA4 Junior Light. 18 laps down, 10 to go. Guess he still leads it. Mitchell Rosenau fires one up the inside of Kay Davey. Ethan Traeger sitting back there and just watching it happen at the moment. Kay Davey just licks across the rear bumper of Jackson Mitchell Rosenau aboard the number 88 machine. Who now sets his sights forward. I want to have one more crack at Dylan Guest, he says. For P5 on the road, your order at the front, Lyle Deckers and Watkins. Six seconds covers those three at the moment with an advantage of 1.3 for Noah Lyle. But this is the fight we watch for 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th on the road. Would you believe it? Dylan Guest up the RGR main straightaway with nine laps left to go. Being stalked at the moment by young Jackson Mitchell Rosenauer. 2016 Cadet 9 Western Australian State Champ. Took a step away from karting after 2017 for a little while. Reappeared and straight into KA4. Mitchell Rosenau up the inside, but Guest tries to go side by side, but he slots back in behind. Jackson Mitchell Rosenau claims P5. And we watch a bit of a battle further back here. Young Parham being stalked by the second of the Guesty brothers for 10th and 11th on the road. But Jackson Mitchell Rosenau now making his way into P5. As we grab your race leader, Noah Lyle, give him some love. Out front and stretching the legs. One and a half seconds. G-O-R-N gone for Noah Lyle. Looking to cap off the weekend in fine form. Young Noah in the number four, Arise Racing, flat out carts machine. So we just caught the back end of Dylan Guest losing another spot. As we grab Noah Lyle once again. Seven to go this time across the line. He's one and a half seconds clear of Aiden Deckers who's in this frustrating position at the moment. He's as fast as Noah on a single lap, but just can't quite catch him. Riley Watkins, though, has mounted a stellar effort in the final to go to P3 over Thomas Lawton, newly crowned KA3 junior West Australian champ, getting dropped down to P4. We follow along with Deckers, in the 33 Flora Plant KF cart. His dad, Rich, is spinning the spanners this weekend. But nobody's been able to get close to this young man. Noah Lyle leads it out with six to go. Lyle on his way down the back straight towards the Afri bus stop. In KA4 Junior Light, brought to you by All Good Racing, Carts and Parts. Following Noah Lyle onto the RGR main straightaway. Five to go for Lyle. He looks over his shoulder just to check on Deckers behind. 1.5 seconds the difference between them at the moment. This big gaggle of carts coming through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl at the moment. At the head of that pack, James McCucci Allen, Davey, Parham, and Guest. We follow along with Noah Lyle at the moment. Making his way out of the Napa Auto Parts Dropper. We pick up with Riley Watkins, who's mounted a stellar drive today. 
moving his way forward with just a little over four laps left to go as Noel Isle clicks off lap 24 complete for your race leader Riley Watkins moving himself up into P3 here's Noah on his way into the cart center switchbacks up to the back of Crystal McClurg to put a lap on Crystal in the number 5 KF cart as I head down the hill towards the bus stop corner. Aiden Deckers trying to make inroads and using this to his advantage as Noah just trying to seek a way around Crystal without getting caught up. And the flag being held out for Crystal McClurg there just to let the leaders go through. Well, this falls to the advantage of Aiden Deckers but it's not enough to make inroads on the gap. Down the line, two to go for Noah Lyle. Aiden Deckers, 1.2 seconds off the back of your race leader. Who's driven a dominant display all weekend. Riley Watkins back there in the third spot. Thomas Lawton P4, Jackson Mitchell and Rosenauer has driven himself to P5. From Ethan Traeger in 6K, Davey in 7. James Micucci, Allen, Dylan Guest and Jack Parham rounding out your top 10. But as Lyle brings it around onto the RGR main straightaway. Last lap board is out. One to go for Noah Lyle. And 700 metres away from putting his hands on the blue plate for the number four Arise Racing flat out carts machine. Lyle has not put a foot wrong all weekend here in KA4 Junior Light. In absolute storming display. As he wheels it around. Out of the Afri bus stop for the final time. Through the Napa Auto Parts dropper. Noah Lyle caps off and underlines a dominant display in KA4 Junior Light. Ladies and gentlemen, bring him home. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Noah Lyle is your West Australian state champion for KA4 Junior Light. Aiden Deck is home in second. And a great drive from Riley Watkins to make the podium in third. Thomas Lawton comes home in P4 and Jackson Mitchell Rosenauer storms through to P5. KA4 Junior Light brought to you by All Good Racing Cuts and Parts. Ethan Traeger home in P6 from K Davy in 7. James McCucci Allen in 8. Dylan Guest in 9 and Luke Fraser rounding out your top 10.
The Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're joining us, thanks to Four Style Media's broadcast of the 2020 WA Kart Championship. For those of you who are watching on Facebook, we are getting very close to our eight-hour limit imposed by Facebook's lives rule. So we ask you, if you're watching on Facebook, if you could please refresh your browser, you'll find the new stream up there in just a minute. If you're watching on YouTube, you don't need to do anything. Just sit, by, sit back and enjoy the action as we bring you the rest of the racing from the 2020 WA Kart Championship. Good. Wanna start?
Ready for their 28 lap final. We've got the big bangers of West Australian karting. Big power. Running up to twin 125s. You can run a combination of twin 100s. 125cc, six speed gearbox carts, which are mostly joined in KZ2 nowadays. Or if you're the likes of Corey Hayes, you can run the AAMI Super X30, the 175cc single piston water cooled engine, pushing out close to 40 to 50 horsepower through the rear tyres running at different weight brackets to even out the parity in the class. It's a great category to get going if you just love going hard out with the biggest, baddest and most evil go-kart you can drive. Corey Hayes starts from the pole spot here for this 28 lap feature from Nathan Phillips in second. Greg Campbell will start from grid three alongside Matthew Chambers in grid four. Caprice Hall will start out of grid five with Daniel Stewart in six. Alan Beard showing P7, Blake Preston from P8 and Gavin Kennedy is due to start from P9. And this is your WA Open Performance Final brought to you by Continental Tyres. This year we will crown a new champion as three times back-to-back -back West Australian champion Courtney Goff elects not to run in the class this weekend, choosing otherwise to focus her efforts on the West Australian KZ series and learning to develop the driving style necessary to be competitive in that class. She won in 2017, 18 and 19. So we all have a new champion in the class in 28 laps time as Nathan Phillips gets a great start from the outside front row. Corey Hayes dropping a second. Matt Chambers wants to hassle him here but chooses to slot back in behind down at turn two. And Blake Preston taking the cut through to rejoin on track, which will slot him in. He'll have to wait for the entire field, including Greg Campbell to go past, I believe. Though Campbell was the spun driver at the time. So Preston with his hand up, letting the drivers know that he's gonna move aside and let them go on by as Nathan Phillips leads the way. Corey Hayes into the second spot with the Ioni Suka X30. 175cc fire breathing monster on board the 11 Gillard chassis. He's had the wood over the field so far, but as WA Open performance goes, you always feel like there's no one ever really showing their hand until the last lap of the last race of the weekend. My understanding is there's still a fifth tyre rule in place for the WA Open Performance guys, that they're allowed to put a new rear tyre on the side that gets worked the hardest for that layout. I'm not sure whether that's still in play and whether they've all taken it for this one. So I've been, I've been given a nod that tells me yes, as Nathan Phillips leads the way. So a fresh left rear tyre for our competitors in the WA Open Performance field allows them to push the carts a little harder for the 28 lap feature, because these carts will melt the tires off the carcass. As Phillips leads from Hayes in second, Matthew Chambers in third, Daniel Stewart in P4, and Gavin Kennedy rounding out your top five. Caprice Hall and Blake Preston sit sixth and seventh. Alan Beard, I'm not sure if he went out on the track. And Greg Campbell back there in P8. So our second last event for the weekend, well underway by this point. WA Open Performance rocking and rolling their way through the first five laps, run and done here. Brought to you by Continental Tyres. Nathan Phillips leads the way, but Corey Hayes is putting in the effort to try and chase him down. The gap at six and a half tenths of a second last time across. The final event for the weekend will be the feature race. 
28 laps on board for the second round of the West Australian KZ Series presented by the Avalon Group, Transport Mining and Civil. That'll be a blockbuster race, you'll be sure not to miss that one to round out a stellar weekend of racing here at the RGR Haulage Raceway here at Midwest Car Club for the Patience Sandland 2020 WA Kart Championship. Nathan Phillips continues to lead as Corey Hayes sets a fast lap of the race now to a 33.494, closing the gap to within four tenths of a second. As Phillips comes up the RGR main straight. Hayes trying to chase him down. Between one, two, fives. Doing battle against a single 175. And a big difference in their weight bracket allows Hayes to be a little bit quicker through the slower corners. But when they get to the straights, Phillips has the extra horsepower to put, put the pedal to the metal and drive away from him. And they bring it around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl onto the back straight and climb in the hill on the RGR main straightaway here. Only two tenths of a second the gap. Hayes has had to put in the work to close the gap here. And down into the cart center switchbacks before they take their way onto the back straight down the hill towards the Afkri sweep. Afkri bus stop, I should say. They come on out over the Napa Auto Parts dropper, affectionately known as the Ski Jump, as they drop into the off camber and down with the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Eight laps down, 20 to go last time across. This will make it 19 for Nathan Phillips leading the way in your WA Open Performance Final. The battle happening for the race lead here between Phillips and Hayes. They've got to be careful just not to take each other out and let Matt Chambers sneak on through for the lead. 12 months ago, Chambers drove a valiantly defensive race that came down between himself, Blake Preston, and Scott Mackay, and Courtney Goff squeaking through to take the win in Esperance 12 months ago. The smaller field here in 2020. Sees Phillips and Hayes fighting it out for the race lead. Onto the back straight and down the hill towards the Afkri bus stop. Where Phillips just can use the horsepower to break away a couple of cart lengths before standing on the brakes a little bit earlier. And down through the bottom end of the racetrack around the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. What the gap open up as Phillips can put the power down. Opens it out. Hayes is a little bit quicker through the final corner, but Phillips carries it all the way up the hill into the patient Sandland sweeper. And the run down towards the car centre switchbacks. Corey Hayes just trying to bite his time and find a way around Phillips while letting Phillips use up his tyres and burn up the rear rubber. With 15, 15 and a half laps left to go.
Working our way down, 10 laps left to go. Corey Hayes finally makes his move happen. Up the inside of Nathan Phillips to claim the race lead here on board the IAM 175 Super X 30 powered Gillard chassis. As they went whipping past Blake Preston to put a lap on him here in our 28 lap WA Open Performance Final. So Hayes now able to open up the taps. He's been sitting back and just waiting in to pick his moment for the last few laps. You can see by the way he drives the cart, letting it bleed the speed through the corners. He's opening up a little bit of a gap over Phillips now. And the battle on behind them for third and fourth. Matt Chambers and Daniel Stewart fighting it out. With Corey Hayes. Leading the way with a new fast lap of the race of 33-3 from Hayes last time across. He opened up four tenths of a second over Nathan Phillips. As we grab the battle for third and fourth here, Matt Chambers and Daniel Stewart. Chambers, a very successful defensive driver. Able to swing it as he covers off the inside line. We focus on Corey Hayes continuing to lead the way from Nathan Phillips. We grab... Chambers and Stewart down the hill towards the bus stop. And Matt Chambers just being slow enough in the corners to maintain the tyre underneath him. But he lights him up on the straights and drives the defensive race. Stewart is going to have to find something big to force the 16 arrow machine up the inside. As we follow your race leaders here, Hayes maintaining the gap and expanding it slightly. Just a moment ago, Chambers and Stewart got into it at turn one here. Stewart gave it everything, became a cropper as Chambers now starts to drive on the defensive line. Blake Preston not involved in that fight, but just behind them watching him and get it all, get this battle happening. Follow the battle. Matt Chambers and Daniel Stewart still fighting it out for third and fourth at the moment. Chambers just makes it extra hard, no matter who it is, depending on trying to get it past him. That's the only thing Chambers cares about. And at the moment, Corey Hayes opening up to an eight-tenth of a second advantage. As we follow Chambers and Stewart again, Still trying it on at the end of the straight is Daniel Stewart. But Chambers 
drives it all the way up the inside of the hill again down to the bottom of the hill through the AFGRI bus stop and this is what brought the state championship race unstuck in the final 12 months ago at Esperance Car Club was Matt Chambers defensive driving but he's trying it on again here Daniel Stewart seems hungry enough Still going at it. We continue to follow on. We've just under four laps to go. It's three laps to go for your leaders now between Matt Chambers and Daniel Stewart. Corey Hayes leads the way by a solid margin, almost eight tenths of a second over Nathan Phillips. The Chambers and Stewart still going at it up the main straight here. Every lap, Stewart's been sideways, broadsiding under the brakes, trying to gather it up and find a way around Matt Chambers, the 78 CRG machine. With the twin I-80 100 power plants doing the job for Matt Chambers. But Preston still trying his best to find a way around to grab third today and be on the podium for WA Open Performance. Brought to you by Continental Tyres. Now Stewart's nice and close as they bring it around onto the front straight. The RGR straight has got to pull out early though. Chambers pulls out even earlier. Lick of the curb and Stewart a flick of the hand to vent his frustration. Two to go when they came across the line this time by. It's going to take something pretty special for Stewart to make that happen as Chambers manages to open up a gap over him once they give it a go. The last lap board is out for your race leaders. to grab your race leader, Corey Hayes, on the way to cleaning up the WA Championship for WA Open Performance. Second place here, Nathan Phillips. Couldn't do anything about it in the late stages as Corey Hayes caps off fastest qualifier in the morning session. A trio of heat wins, and Hayes brings it down the line. He's your 2020 West Australian State Champion in WA Open Performance. Nathan Phillips comes home for second as your leaders. Get it done. Third and fourth is still not done yet. Chambers and Stewart drag racing to the lines. Chambers gets him. Daniel Stewart has to settle for fourth out of that one. And Gavin Kennedy will roll around to take P5 from Caprice Hall in six and Blake Preston in seven. But Corey Hayes is your newly crowned WA Open Performance West Australian State Champion brought to you by Continental Tires. The Kart Centre is Perth's premier karting and function centre. If you're looking for a new and exciting venue for fully catered team building, birthday parties or corporate functions, this is the destination for you. The Kart Centre, only 10 minutes away from Carousel.
Well, it's time again for the final event of the weekend, the 28 lap final for KZ2. The first time we are going to fill the entire starting grid here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. This is the second round of the West Australian KZ Series brought to you by the Avalon Group, Transport Mining and Civil. And what a stellar race we are set to have. We haven't really seen Tommy Sparks and Blake Mills actually duking it out so far this weekend. But man, oh man, I'm excited to bring it to you. 28 laps on the board to decide who's going to be the round winner here at this weekend. Of course, the way the West Australian KZ Series format works, the final decides the winner of each round, but every heat race counts for points in the series. So being consistent over the course of the heat races throughout the year season pays dividends if you want to be the series champion. But everybody wants the glory. Everyone wants to stand on the top step of the podium. At the end of the weekend, at the moment, Blake Mills is going to start on the pole spot. The number two Ricardo Kart driver alongside Tommy Sparks in the 21 Charles Leclerc Kart on the front row. Bailey Mickler and Nicola Middick will start on the second row from Daniel Curry and Alex Rullo on row three. Damon Papa Sergio and Josh Merritt will start on row four. The Paul Pedrotti and Riley Traeger rounding out your first ten. Then Nathan Davis and Corey Minton, followed by Bailey Gretsch and Scott McKay. Daniel Sugar and Simon Gwilliam. Ryan Bender and Hayden Patrizzi, Courtney Goff and Connor Roth. Melinda Sully and Shannon Elliard. Jaden Pierce and Callum Williamson with JD Dack, Jessica Howe, Marty Dack and Mason Harvey. Your full starting order. And you're going to quickly rapid fire through them as our starting grid is set on the hill. Here at the RGR Road Haulage Raceway, we are set to go. It's a start and a good one from Millsy. A great start from Blake Millsy gets underway, but Thomas Sparks shuts the door in his face at turn one. Mills goes back to second. Nick Middick into third. Big melee attack down at turn one. How do we get through? Daniel Curry is caught in it as well. Hayden Patrizzi and a couple of the other guys going through the cut through. couple of guys who went through the cut through Hayden Patrizia and Melinda Sully rolling on by but your effective race leader is Tommy Sparks at the moment going to come on by and slot these back into where they fit Blake Mills in second Nick Middick, Bailey Mickler, Josh Merritt and it looks like Riley Traeger in the number 60 Ricardo cart slotting in there as well as Melinda, Melinda Sully does a great job of jumping out of the way and letting everyone through so does Hayden Patrizia so it's Thomas Sparks your leader, it looks like it's Ryan Bender off in the grass as well after that first lap incident. So big losers out of that one. Unfortunately, we lose Daniel Curry and Ryan Bender. Patrizzi and Sully getting caught up in the first lap incident as well. But it's Tommy Sparks leading the way here. Blake Mills in second, Nick Middick and the number 94 BRM chassis goes to P3. Bailey Mickler in P4, then Josh Merritt. Scott Mackay is the quickest on track out of P7, just behind Riley Traeger in the sixth spot. Oh, we've got an issue. Is that the 13 Ricardo card of Corey Minton stuck again? There's a big pile up up at turn one. Bailey Gretsch out in the dirt. One of the one of the Formula K carts and the cart center machines getting caught up. Daniel Sugar stuck there at turn one. So there's been another incident up at the patient Sandland sweeper. We've lost a couple of contenders out of that one. And it looks like Corey Minton was part of that as well. Another bent axle for Minton. We focus on your lead battle though. As a big move from Nikla up the inside of Nick Middick. Says, I want third, give it to me. And Tommy Sparks takes the race lead. Still at the moment from Blake Mills in second. Nikla and Middick slowing each other down now. As they come onto the RGR straight away. Tommy Sparks leading the way. Mills is the fastest on track though. Down to a 33-3. It's gonna be a hard task to pass Tommy Sparks though. Down the hill, into the Afgri bus stop. It's a 28 lap feature race. Tire life are gonna play a major part in this one. Big battles going through the field, but Tommy Sparks leads the way from Blake Mills, rocking a new helmet design this weekend. The number two Ricardo Kart driver onto the RGR front straight. Sparks, he's sideways as he grabs the gears and pulls the KZ machine. The number 21 Charles Leclerc Kart onto the front straight for OJG Engineering. Millsy tucking right behind him here. Now Bailey Mickler. Down his own. Mills into the inside. Mills, he gets Sparksy. He's going to try and drag him down the, down the hill into the bus stop. Sparksy up the inside. Here's Millsy. Now here's Bailey Mikla. Mikla tries to go up over the curb with a ski jump over Millsy and slots back into third. 
Now, what did we say? Thomas Sparks is going to make life ever difficult for Blake Mills here. Looks like trouble for Damon Baba Sergio as he's coming to a roaring halt onto the front straight. And now, Bailey Mickler fancies a chance at having a crack at Thomas Sparks as they come through the car center switchbacks and onto the back straight. The run down towards the Afri hairpin. At the bus up, Millsy with a late move. It's a big one. Here comes Mickler up the inside. Two for one deal. Mickler goes around the outside of Mills. Sparksy up over the curb. It's all on like Donkey Kong. Millsy opened the door. Mickler came rushing on through the Amani Bar Birrell chassis. Goes to the race lead. Bailey Mickler, your fastest qualifier in Friday afternoon session. The 60 Ricardo cart of Riley Traeger trying to get involved in that fight, just defending and battling with Nick Middick. The man, oh man, Bailey Mickler made his presence felt in that one. Mickler leading the way at the moment. Mills into two. Tommy Sparks getting dropped off to P3 as they come climbing the RGR front straight. Mickler, Mills and Sparks are coming up to put a lap on Jessica Howe in the 19 Swiss Huntless machine who's being shown the blue and red flag. Just to let her know that they're coming up at a great rate of knots as well. Young Jessica gonna do her best to try and stay out of the way of the race leaders. Mickler sees her coming and just arrives on the scene of the crime right on the inside at the bottom of the hill. The blue and red being shown to Jessica and luckily our top five sneaking through unopposed really as Mickler charges on here. Millsy trying to chase him down. Tommy Sparks back to three, wants to turn up the heat and put something on here. Then it's Middick and Traeger. We follow on, Middick and Traeger at the moment. Middick looks over his shoulder, Riley trying to shape up away up the inside, slide in the cart, under brakes, the 94 BRM chassis. For Nick Middick for discount leasing services, charging his way into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl. Simon Grillam just further behind as well. With Josh Merritt tucking in. Grillam with a comfortable run in six at the moment. Merritt in seven, Patrizzi in eight. And the battle for the race lead though, Mickler and Millsy trying to get it on and have a crack at it here. They want to be careful because Thomas Sparks isn't afraid to send one up the inside with a big speculator to boot. Mickler leading the way into the bottom end of the racetrack. We are 10 laps down, 18 to go. We're a full heat race away from a checkered flag yet, and Bailey Mickler is going to drive the race of his life to survive this one. Reaches down, does a little bit of tuning to his Vortex powered Birrell Art chassis. Oh, he's got a hand up. Something went wrong there at turn one, and Mickler threw the hand up in the air as Millsy trying to have a crack. He's on the defensive in the switchbacks. Now Millsy is a cork in the bottle. Here comes Tommy Sparks. Middick's in there as well. Millsy's going to lose two spots. Mickler has an issue. Nicola has a problem, the 97 Birrell Art cart for the Amani Bar. Having problems here, Tommy Sparks sneaks on through. Sparksy back to the lead. The something is going wrong for Bailey Mickler. He's got his hand up and he almost gets completely rear-ended for Nick Middick. And Bailey Mickler peels it off to the in-grid. Heartbreaking stuff for the Amani Bar Birrell Art chassis of Mickler. Out of contention in the final. So, unpacking it. Millsy has been shuffled back another couple of spots as a result of that and Riley Traeger driving a defensive race down into the Afgri bus stop covering off a move from Millsy here so Tommy Sparks has been able to build a gap out to eight and a half tenths of a second over Nick Minnick. Minnick is the only one who can do anything about him at the moment. Second in the West Australian KZ series coming into round two. Riley Traeger holding on to the three spot in the final at the moment. Millsy back there in fourth. A couple of heat wins for Millsy yesterday, putting him in fine form coming into today. But this is the one that everybody wants to win. The stand on the podium, in your suit, and get the cheers of the crowd for the West Australian KZ Series, presented by the Avalon Group. Tommy Sparks leading out Nick Minnick at the moment. Now Sparks, he puts it a 32-9. Quick lap from Tommy Sparks. Not too far off qualifying lap speeds that we're setting on Friday afternoon and I think Sparksy's done quite a few laps on these tyres as they're all on the same set of MG SM yellow green yellow primes they started the weekend with so we follow along with Nick Minnick at the moment holding on in a second nicely as Riley Traeger on the defensive from an assaulting Blake Mills behind him 
in the fourth spot. Simon Grillen further back in P5. He's starting to drive his way up onto the back of this battle as Josh Merritt has dispatched Alex Rollo for P6 on the road. Rollo looks like he's gotten around Hayden Patrizzi for the sixth spot. Patrizzi now down to P7. We'll follow along. Millsy still sitting in the back of this battle pack for third, fourth and... Sorry, second, third and fourth on the road. Middick, Traeger and Mills under the brakes into the after bus stop. Mills here be starting to get very frustrated with the defensive driving of Riley Traeger. But he's free to choose the line he picks as Tommy Sparks continues to assault the field with the hot lap. So 1.3 second advantage he's built now. As it looks like the next lapper in line is going to be the 24 BRM chassis of Shannon Elliard. They're bunching up here. Middick starting to really back into Traeger and Mills. The opening portion of the lap really sees them close up and it's through, through the top section that they start to close down on him. But Simon Gwilliam is making inroads here. He won the final at the Gold Star round up here a couple of months ago that saw Tommy Sparks and Corey Minton come unstuck in the final there. Gwilliam sailed on through to claim the win. Tommy Sparks up the hill, stretching out. 1.2 seconds now. It's still on for second. Following Middick, Traeger and Mills. William slowly catching up to this three at the moment, but no one can do anything about the lap speed of Tommy Sparks. Although a second ago, Middick and Trago were both faster than Sparks out front. A 33.09 for Sparks, an 06 for Middick, an 08 for Trago. But they're going to have to pull out more than that as the gap sits at 1.2 seconds. And Tommy Sparks coming up the hill now, leading the way. The number 21 OJG Engineering Charles Leclerc cart out front here. Working our way down. It was 10 to go for Tommy Sparks last time across the line. Middick, Traeger and Mills are starting to open up between them as they come out of the bus stop corner. Over the Napa Auto Parts dropper. Blue and red flag being shown to Shannon Elliard, I believe. The 24 BRM chassis about to go a lap down to your race leaders in some time soon as they follow Middick, Traeger and Mills still second, third and fourth on the road at the moment. Mills, he just can't do anything about the driving of Riley Traeger. Gained some experience up in Europe a little over 12 months ago, racing KZs in a Kart Republic chassis up there. Shannon Elliard doing his best to jump out of the way. Oh, Traeger tags the back of Middick. Here's Millsy sensing his opportunity. He's going to get the over and under. William helped him. They tagged the bumper on the back of Traeger. Watch if they've done any, da any damage to the rear bumper on Traeger's cart because it pulled it pretty hard on Millsy's nose cone. But it looks like it's still hanging on at the moment for the number 60 Ricardo cart. As we grab a hold and watch on, Josh Merritt and Alex Rollo battling it out at the moment down the hill towards the Ashbury bus stop. This is a fight at the moment for 6th and 7th. Patrizzi back there in the 8th, then Pearson Mackay running out 9 and 10. Nick Middick now being released by a couple of cart lengths over the guys behind him, but he's got no chance of catching Tommy Sparks at the current pace. Sparks, he's 33.08. Middick with a 33.10, 2.7 seconds to gap. They got really caught up with that lap traffic. So follow along, just a handful of laps left to go here. And Traeger still making life a misery for Blake Mills back there. Third and fourth at the moment. Simon Gwillem sitting back and waiting for his opportunity as we follow Nick Middick through the Great Southern Fuels Bowl once again. This is absolutely chaos in KZ2 for the final. We absolutely love it for the West Australian KZ Series. Tommy Sparks leads the way. And the OJG presented Charles Leclerc Clark, the 21 machine from Nick Middick in the direct leasing services, discount leasing services, 94 BRM chassis. Rocking the Autostrada on the suit as well. This is your race leader though, Tommy Sparks into the Great Southern Fuels Bowl once again. He's going to make it five laps to go this time out. The old race leader still lapping in the very low 33s. Matching pace with Middick could be ruining the opportunity that he didn't get up onto Sparksy quick enough in the early stages of the race. Behind him, Traeger and Mills rounds out your top four. Simon Grillam rounding out your top five. So they head up through the car center, switch backs onto the back straight, down towards the Afkri hairpin once again. Traeger and Mills still fighting it out for third. Gwilym can't do anything to close the gap to them at the moment. 
He's gonna have to wait for them to fight each other and slow each other down. And Sparksy brings it around onto the RGR main straight again, charging up the hill. Dropping in a sub 33 second this late in the race. Sparksy has been playing the game a smart way this weekend. And a massive turnaround compared to the weekend he had at the opening round of the West Australian KZ Series where he set the fastest qualifying time and was subsequently disqualified for the back end of the cart being too wide. Spent the rest of the weekend on the back foot and driving hard to try and charge his way through the field. But it's Sparksy up the hill leading things out in much better form on his way towards winning the round here in the second round of the West Australian KZ Series. Middick in the second. Traeger in third, Mills in four. William in P5 as they come out of the car centre, switchbacks they go. Down the hill towards the Afri bus stop. Just a couple of laps left in it here for the KZ2 final. Brought to you by the Avalon Group for the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. Rounding out a stellar weekend here at the Patience Sandland 2020 WA Car Championship. Tommy Sparks leading the way. Millsy still trying to put the pressure on Traeger. He's driving a very defensive race there. Sparks goes on through. Two laps to go as he came across the line. This is a battle for third. Nick Minnick released and clear in second. As we follow them down the hill. He grabs Sparksy for his last lap and a bit. A little over 700 metres from home as he brings it out of the bowl for the second to final time. The last lap board will be out to collect him as he comes up the RGR main straight. Tommy Sparks, one to go, he says. One more time for Thomas Sparks leading the way in your KZ final. Nick Middick consolidating second. It's going to take something big and special from Blake Mills to catch Riley Traeger back there for third. But Tommy Sparks bringing it out of the bus stop for the final time. Over the Napa Auto Parts dropper. Further back, they're fighting for third and fourth. Traeger has been released into third. Grill him into four, but ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for your round two winner of the KZ Series. Tommy Sparks claims the win in the final. Nick Middick home in second. Riley Traeger holds on to third. Simon Grillam in fourth. And Blake Mills rounds out the weekend with a P5 finish in the final. Tommy Sparks, tip your hat, young fella. Taking the win here in the 28 lap feature race for the WAKZ Series, brought to you by the Avalon Group. And ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up a stellar weekend of racing here at the Patient Sandland 2020 WA Car Championship for the RGR Road Haulage Raceway for Midwest Car Club. It's been my pleasure to host you all and for everyone watching live online to the live stream brought to you by Four Style Media. A big thanks to everyone who's been involved, all the volunteers and officials who've dedicated their time, effort, and sometimes their money and their health into putting on this event and getting this fantastic venue ready to host us this weekend. Also, a secondary big thanks to all of our sponsors. Big thanks to Patience, Sandland, and thank you to Great Southern Fuels, The Cart Center, Napa Auto Parts, Africa Equipment, Digital Quarter, Vulcan Panel and Paint, Super Cool Air Conditioning, Mechanical Piping Services, Central Earth Moving, and once again, on behalf of everyone involved in hosting this championship and the Midwest Car Club, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Enjoy.